Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I know it's been uh, a little wait, but uh, finally we can uh, can start off. Uh, had the little technical issues at the beginning. It's better to have it at the beginning than in between. So we had to solve that to start. So apologies for uh, taking a little of your time. I uh, would like to start this program, which is the fifth edition of season five of Shalina Young Talent Award. Can the young folks in the house just give a round of applause? Of course, I'm, trying, I'm saying that so that we can start with a very high positive energy. So we're going to start the program this morning with a word of prayer. And I know that in Nigeria, we have so many uh, belief systems. So usually what we do is we start with the second stanza of the national anthem, which is actually a word of prayer. And if you, you'll agree with me, that if Nigeria ever needed prayer, we need it right now. So can we just be upstanding as we take the se second stanza of our national anthem? So after the count of three, one, two, three, go. Oh, God. Thank you very much. You can have your seat. Amayo? All right. Thank you very much. And once again, I welcome everyone on behalf of the management of Shalina Healthcare to CITA 5, the fifth edition, the fifth season five of CITA. In the course of the program, we will get to know the journey so far, where we started, how we started, and where we are today. Right. Some few slides will be shared with you in the course of the program. Without wasting much time, I would want to call on the, uh, the finalists uh, as we showcase, we pr uh, project their, their names. I'll read out their names. Uh, they already have their seat numbers. They will come forward, identify their seat numbers, and get seated. So we'll start off with uh, the finalists now. <clears throat> Oh. All right. First on the list as um, equal son Olawale James from Obafemi Awolowo University. He tells us that he likes music, hair styling, and volunteering. And uh, one of his uh, life goals is to become a world-class healthcare professional who will make global impact. And today, in the next three years, he wants to see himself on the pathway of achieving our life goals with more clarity. So please join me as I welcome equal son. <laughs> Hola, vale. Please identify your seat. And, uh, all, right. all right, so it's occupying seat 13. All right, next. Next is Unjoku uh, Favor, Enyinaya, from University of Benin. He, write, he likes uh, reading spiritual books, seeing movies, and playing games. He wants to be a renowned pharmacist. And uh, his lifelong, uh, he wants to see himself in the next three years working in a big pharmaceutical firm. We'll see how that goes at the end of this uh, uh, contest. So please join me as we welcome in Eyinaya Favor, Njoku, University of Benin. 
Please identify your seat. Thank you. Next is Musa Afsa Abdullah from Udut, who's Madame Fodio University, Sokoto. She loves movies. She a life goal, one of her life goals is to be a successful community pharmacist. And she wants to see in the next three years her plan is to open a small pharmacy premise. That is our plan in the next three years. So please welcome Musa Absat Abdullah. Thank you. Next is Equazo Chuku Dibeyi Michael from University of Jaws. He loves playing football, table tennis, and community service activities. Uh, he wants to be the best he can and also be a successful pharmacist. In the next three years, he wants to be a service. He wants to be of service to Shalina and outside the country. So we'll see how that goes after this program. Please welcome. Michael, thank you. Next is Benita Chinedu Dimpa. Dimpa is from Niger Delta University. She extracurricular volunteering for public health activities and crocheting. And uh, she also loves a targeted drug delivery uh, device problem. And uh, she also wants to write a book. And uh, in the next three years, she wants to be in the pharmaceutical industry or the academia, dispensing value and solving problems relating to life and pharmacy profession. Right, you are a good aunt. I'm sure you, you will get good tutors here today. So please join me as well, Benita Dimpa. Right. Benita? Oh, okay. ah, Benita is 24. Thank you. Next is Namani, Pamela Ebube. She's from Enugu State University of Science and Technology. She loves playing football, reading novels, and also make croquet wheels. Life goal is to be successful, stable woman with groundbreaking achievements who would also be happy and see the world. In the next three years, she wants to see herself either NYC or out of country for her masters in the next three years. That's her plan. Please join me as I welcome Pamela Ebube. Thank you. Right. Next is Ola Amuda Ibukolua from Abe Afe Abarola University Adwekiti Award. Uh, she's a member of the editorial committee, Pans Public Health Team, Welfare Unit in the Church. She's also a renowned researcher and God's Kingdom financier. She wants to see herself in the next three years on the way to being a researcher with masters backed, fully tucked in her bags. So join me as I welcome Ola Amuda Ibukolua from Abuad. Thank you. Next is Muogara Oluchi Mary Precious. She's from University of Nigeria, Usuka. Likes watching movies, reading, traveling, playing board games. Also, she wants to contribute to research and innovation, develop leadership skills, and expand networking opportunities. In the next three years, she wants to see herself in further, further education, gaining valuable clinical experience, and continuing professional development. Join me as I welcome Muogara Precious Oluchi. Thank you. All right. Next is Edu Uche Chizoba Vivian from Chukwe Meka Odumegu University, Anambra State. She loves playing, praying, and studying of the world. Being a pastry, pastry chef at Urban Frost, whatever that means. Sewing, volunteering for health outreaches. Uh, life goes to own a global company, advance in career, donate to charity, and be a philanthropy. In the next three years, she wants to be in the lecture theater, the lecture hall, lecturing pharmacy students, or probably in the hospital setting. So, I'm sure she will be in good hands today, from the array of tutors we have here. So, please welcome uh, Vivian Chizoba. Thank you. Next, Obona, Princess Chinwe from Adona University, Elele, in River State. She loves doing sports, basketball, and football. Also belongs to the Bay Club in her school, and also a lector in church. To be a clinical pharmacist and specialize in oncologist, pharmacist, drug consultant, therapist, or psychologist. That's her life goal. And in the next three years, she wants to see herself doing a her master's in either Oxford University or University of Bolton, UK, in the Department of Clinical Pharmacy or in Psychology. Please join me as we welcome Princess Chiwe Ogbuna. Next. Abdul Muiz Muhammad Adam is from Bayero University, Kano, and uh, extracurricular activities include learning new skills, knowledge, teaching, watching films, and recreational activities. He wants to become a consultant, clinical, or industrial pharmacist. And in the next three years, he wants to be abroad studying and working. He wants to jaguar in the next three years. Thank you. All right. Next. All right. Prevail Yaere 
is from University of Port Harcourt. Uniport. <laughs> Currently, yes. Currently, is the Uniport SUG Knight Senate uh, Constitutional Review member. He's also an active pan site and uh, also one of the life goals to constantly challenge itself to learn and grow professionally and personally, uh, making a positive global impact and contributing to the society in a meaningful way. In the next three years, he wants to see himself in a leadership role where he can leverage skills and experiences to contribute significantly to growth and productivity. Please welcome Prevail uh, from Uniport. Thank you. Next. Etim Yangdara Joseph from University of Uyo. She loves pageantry and sports, and also to make dual impact on the world and the realm of healthcare. In the next three years, she wants to see herself as a health data analyst in the pharmaceutical sector. Please join me as we welcome Yangdara Etim Joseph. Thank you. Yes. Next. I know Oluwa Tosin Deborah from the University of Illinois, Kwara State, volunteering and advocacy, public speaking, speaking and writing. Uh, uh, extracurricular activities. And in the next three years, she wants to see herself as an excelling pharmacist in clinical pharmacy and public health, making impact in the society. Please join me as we welcome I know Oluwatosi from University of Illinois. Next. Oche Ada Paulina is from Amadubelo University's area, traveling, reading, and volunteering. Uh, extracurricular activities, and uh, also in the next three years, she will see herself as mid excellent world class oncology researchers, giving in by, uh, best and sharing insights with others to bring forth an innovative, long lasting solution to oncology. Please join me as we welcome Oche Olina. Next, Obode Israel Blessing from Delta State University, Abraka, gaming. Music rehearsals and playing football are uh, his uh, extracurricular activities. And in the next three years, he wants to see himself Japa to United Kingdom studying for masters. Please welcome Obode Israel. Next. OKK Prince Kamsi is from the University of Lagos. <laughs> the cover show. <laughs> right. Uh, extra, extracurricular activities, student leadership and representation and in the next three years she wants to build on her career in the next three years she wants to be on her career please join me as we welcome okk princess kamsi from university of lagos next edith obong okon from kaduna state university catering and pastries are extracurricular activities and in the next three years she wants to see herself well oriented and established in logistics and supply chain it and actively working towards our goals please join as we welcome ubon okon edit next aminu muhammad belo from gombe state university is a member of various personal and professional career development clubs volunteer at community health outreach program participation in student unionism and in the next three years as well he wants to pursue a master's in public health engaging in research projects so please join me as we welcome aminu belo from uh Gumbe State university thank you i'm also theophilus oluatola from olabisi on Obanjo university i go away uh, extracurricular data analysis, research writing, music, and politics. And in the next three years, he wants to see himself owning a company that is preferring solutions to the challenges of the supply chain in Nigeria. Please join me as we welcome the uh, class monitor of this set, Mos Amosu Theophilus Oluwatola. Welcome. Alima Oluwayemisi Olaiwola is from University of Ibadan, and she's a uh, she's a uh, Extra, extra curricular activities include communications team lead at OV, editor in chief at Junior Chambers National University of Ibadan. And in the next three years, she wants to see herself in multi, having multiple interests. And right now, there are a lot of parts in front of her. So the picture is not clear yet. But one thing that's sure of is that she'll be trying her best to live the best of life and contributing her quota to impact the world. That's our life goals. Thank you very much. Next. Arafat Usara Abubakar from University of Meduguri. He loves learning foreign languages, French, and also football games. And in the next three years, he wants to see himself as an expert project manager who has a reputation of delivering projects on time and within budget. 
God willing, he says, I will have a track record of several successful and innovative projects that will bring significant profit. Join me to welcome Arafat Usaira Abubakar from University of Meduguri. Right. Next. Akishola Deborah Olubumi from Igbinedio University of Kada. She loves sports and content catering, and uh, life goes to fulfill her professional dreams. Next three years, she wants, to, she wants to continue to grow in her career to gain experience in different aspects of pharmacy. Please join me as I welcome my namesake, Akishola Devora Olubumi. Next. Eugene Chisholm Glory from Unamdi Azukwe University, Oka, Anambra State. She loves volunteering and reading. And in the next three years, she wants to achieve full certification as a pharmacist and still actively pursue education to broaden her knowledge on various pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic therapy and their interactions. Please join me again to welcome Eugene Chisholm Glory. Thank you. That's all. All right, so that's all for the finalists. So I'll be introducing the panel of judges, uh, the gurus in the house. And uh, please, at this time, I would crave your indulgences. Please, it has to be, the, the, the clap offering has to be louder. Right. Zege. Please, Zege, you lead, you are the sergeant at arms. The clap offering has to be louder. Please, what we call our teachers' teachers. Those who have brought us to where we are today. Please, starting with the first one. Shuba. Right. Permit me on assisting protocol with due respect and regards and to reverently introduce Associate Professor Abaka Muhammad Amali. He is the professor of pharmacology. Thank you. He's a professor of pharmacology and current dean for faculty of pharmacy, Usman Udam for the University of Sokoto. Uh, his area of interest includes ethno ethnopharmacology, cell structure, proteinomics, proteomics, genomics, application in drug discovery, and public health. He has over 40 academic publications and currently is current chairman, Franska Society of Nigeria Sokoto chapter, is the chairman of 36 states plus Abuja PSN Chairman's Forum, is a member of Pharmaska, uh, West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacies, a member of Federation of International Pharmacies, and also Association of Academic Pharmacies. He loves learning new ideas and also traveling. Please chime your hands again as we welcome <laughs> Professor Abubakar Muhammad Amali. Welcome, sir. Thank you. All right, next is Professor Igodaro Igwe. With due respect, sir, he's a professor of pharmacology and toxicology. He's the current dean, College of Pharmacy, Igbinedio University, Okada. Right, he's a, he's, he's a visiting research scholar, Center for Cardiovascular Disease, Texas Southern University in USA. Postdoctoral fellow, Chengdu University of Biology, Chinese Academy of Science in China. He's going to speak some Chinese language to us today. Right, areas of interest include cardiovascular renal pharmacology, Mechanism of drug and alcohol addiction and uh, others. Publication over 70 academic publications is a member of so many associations, including American Society of Pharmacology, British Pharmaco Pharmacological Society, and also member of Society of Pharmacological Sciences and Experimental Therapeutics, amongst others. Loves music, traveling, and watching music. Please again join me as we welcome our most revered Professor Igodaro Igwe. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Yes. Professor Teofin Chinwuba Akune is a professor of pharmacology and toxicology, a current dean for Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Chukwemeka Odumego University, an aquarium in Anambra State. Uh, he has a postdoctoral Guangzi. Ah, we we'll learn lots of uh, Chinese today. Postdoctoral from Guangzi Institute of Botany, Guangzi Zhuang. Autonomous Region and Chinese of Sciences, Guilin in China. Hebrew Scholar, University of KwaZulu-Natal, 
Westville campus in Durban, South Africa. Area of interest includes natural products, pharmacology, medicinal plants in the treatment of inflammatory related disorders such as epilepsy and cancer. And uh, over 75 publications till date in peer reviewed national and international journals is a member of many societies which include but not limited to uh, member of West African Society of Pharmacology, member of Nigeria Association of Pharmacists in Academia, Nigeria Society of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics. He loves football. I don't know if he plays. He loves tennis and reading spiritual books. Please join me as well, Professor Akune. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Professor Nuwako Insola Adiola Salau, Professor of Pharmacology and Toxicology, and Dean of Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Gombe State University in Gombe. Professor Yewo, I hope you are noticing something. Professor Yewo, I hope you are noticing pharmacology and toxicology. Right. Qualifications, all right. As she's into the John T. Maxwell Team Leadership course on high performance leaders, mistakes, and success of leadership held in USA. She has attended. Areas of interest include drug discovery, pharmacology, and toxicology, neuropharmacology, public health pharmacy. She has to date over 90 papers and some book chapters. She's a member of many societies, which include, but not limited, to American Society of Toxicology. The American Society of Pharmacology and Therapeutics, and a member of NAPA, and also National Health Research Ethics Committee. She loves reading, writing, and traveling. Little wonder she had to connect from Gombe to Abuja, and uh, we had to keep changing her flight to Suta. And to get, thank God, safely she's here today. Please join me as we welcome Professor Salau. You're welcome. Thank you. Next. Ah, my man here. Uh, please permit me. <laughs> permit me permit me to, 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 to make a little description of my teacher she taught me pharmaceutics in Ife right and uh, we remember, remember those days when you hear students classmates say ah mama here mama timbo mama here you know and trust uh, trust uh, Professor Yuma with her swagger with her swag she has never lost that she has a swagger, a swagger. Please join me as we welcome our revered Professor Umbang, a young Femi Oyewo, member of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, she's a professor of pharmaceutics and pharmaceutical technology and currently the Provost College of Pharmacy at Federal University at Dwekiti. She was the former Deputy Vice Chancellor of Labisi Onobanjo and Pioneer Dean for Faculty of Pharmacy of Labisi Onobanjo University. She's a former Secretary General of West Africa Postgraduate College of Pharmacies, immediate past chairman of Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, and the Education uh, Leadership Training, Certificate from University of Washington in Leadership and Management Health, International Atomic Energy, International Network on Rational Use of Drugs you, uh, in Kampala, Uganda. That was after the death of Idi Amin Gaga. Areas of interest include pharmaceutical technology, drug development and delivery, ethnomedicines, public health pharmacy, and social pharmacy. She has over 100 uh, journal articles and chapters. She's a member of many associations, which include but not limited to the fellow of, uh, she's a fellow, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, FPSN. She's a fellow, West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacies, fellow Nigerian Academy of Pharmacy, Fellow Institute of Management Consultant. She's a member of Nigeria Association of Pharmacy in Academia, member of Commonwealth Pharmaceutical Association, member of FIP, and member of Association of Lady Pharmacists, member of Clinical Pharmacy Association of Nigeria, and currently, proudly, a recipient of many awards, including the National Award of Member of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, MFR. Please, with a standing ovation, standing ovation, please let us, let us. Let us applaud our teacher's teacher. She's our teacher's teacher. I know many of us must have passed through her, and we are proud of her. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. She loves reading, music, cooking. She's from the South South. If she doesn't love cooking, what else would she do? All right. So she also loves traveling and aerobics. Maybe at the interlude, she will show us some aerobic skills. From our side. So thank you and join me as we recognize and thank Professor Mbang Femi Oyewo for finding time to join us today. Thank you, ma. Next. Dr. Anthony Idoko, with due respect, sir, 
I want to introduce to us Dr. Anthony Doko, who holds a Bachelor of Pharmacy from the University of Jaws. He also obtained a Graduate Diploma in Management from the University of Calabar and Doctor of Pharmacy from D, degree from the University of Benin. He holds the Fellowship of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacies. He joined Pharmacy Council as a Senior Pharmacist in the year 2000 and is currently the Director and Head of Education and Training Department of PCN. He's a member of Nigeria Institute of Management, Fellow, Chartered and Status Institute, Fellow, West African College of Pharmacists, Fellow, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. He loves traveling and farming. He's happily married with uh, bouncing elderly children. You're welcome, Dr. Idoku. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Last but not the least, for those of us that are pharmacists, we won't deny knowing this man. He is the Secretary General of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. Please, with the club offering, please join me as we appreciate Farm Gafar Olalewaju Madein, fellow Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, FPSN. He obtained his pharmaceutical degree from Great Ife in 1987. He must have passed through Professor Yewa and the Master's in Business Administration from the University of Meduguri in 1997. That was uh, uh, after the onslaught of Boko Haram. A pharmacist over 30 years and some experience in community pharmacy, and he had the audacity, he had the courage to set up a pharmacy in Meduguri then. Right. So he's the co founder of Nam Pharmacy in Bornu State in 1989 and founder of Epsilon Pharmacy and Stores Limited in Lagos, which he founded in 2008. He's a professional cooperator, a certified cooperative account manager in Lagos since 2011. He's currently the president, Community Pharmacy Development Cooperative Multipurpose Society Limited. He served the pharmacy profession in different capacities. Secretary for the Society of Nigeria, Lagos State Branch, National Treasury Association of Community Pharmacies, National Secretary, Healthcare Providers Association of Nigeria, Deputy National President, Healthcare Providers Association of Nigeria, National Treasurer, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, National Secretary, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, till date. Awards include many Merit Award winner of PSN Legal State, Pfizer Award of Excellence on Contributions to Community Pharmacy, Award of Excellence in Ethical Community Pharmacy Practices, Fellow of Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Fellow of Institute of Cooperative Professionals of Nigeria and also certifications, several certifications from institutes and agencies across the globe. Please join me as I welcome Fam Gafar Olanrewaju Madein, FPSN. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, lastly, once again, I'll crave your indulgences for the, for the set of finalists and also our panelists. Please let us again give them a round of applause, round of applause for our panelists and the finalists. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Famayo. Um, standing on existing protocol, I'll quickly like to introduce uh, some of the management team of Shalina Healthcare that are here present. Of course, we all know that uh, Saita is uh, the brainchild of Shalina Healthcare, inspired by Shalina Healthcare, one of its kind in our, our industry. And uh, present on this occasion is uh, our members of the management team whom I'd like to introduce to us right now, starting from the managing director and the person of Madam Okoyemi Akinyele. She's right here with us. She's the MD, Shalina Healthcare Nigeria. Also present with us is the head of brand marketing, although that designation is changing very shortly, in the presence of pharmacist Sandeep Sahu, head of brand marketing, Nigeria, Shalina Healthcare Nigeria. Then we also have the head of corporate marketing, who also happens to be the chief host of this event in the presence of pharmacist Faloru Shaw Alaron, is the chief host of this event. Uh, also present is the head of re the research team, Shalina Healthcare Nigeria. We do internal research here in Nigeria, and heading that team is Mr. Sanjay Dupe. Then we also have here present members of the brand marketing team. Uh, apologies, time will fail me to go through all their names one by one, but I just want you to stand up for recognition. They are the individuals who are 
championing the brand activities, marketing activities of Shalina Healthcare. Guys, can you just at least wave, show a wave of hand? They are here present. Then we have the sales team also, um, managers, regional managers of our sales team. Uh, of course, they are all around ensuring that our guests are well welcomed. Now, I do not fail to recognize the fact that we have some very important people uh, in our midst, and we'll be doing the proper introductions as we uh, go along. Right. So, having said that, I would just like to invite to the mic uh, Madam Okpeyemi Akinyele for our opening remarks. Welcome. A round of applause for her, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> uh, thanks for being here. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the faculty, it's really great to meet you, uh, and uh, especially to have you at our event. And uh, members of the academic community, and esteemed leaders and colleagues in the pharma industry. With great pleasure, I bring you greetings from the global leadership of Shalina Healthcare. Shalina Clifford, the CEO, and Abbas Vaji, the co-CEO. Also, I bring you greetings from the Chief Commercial Officer for West Africa, Arun Raj, who uh, is absent today because he had to be at another important event. With great pleasure, I welcome you to the Shalina Young uh, Talent Awards Season 5 Grand Finale. This event, uh, which identifies and projects young pharmacy talents across uh, the different pharmacy schools in Nigeria, is a true testament of the talents and potential that we have within our country's uh, healthcare industry. Uh, over the past couple of months, there has been an exhaustive process across. Okay. Over the past couple of months, there has been an exhaustive process across the 24 pharmacy schools to identify the brain, uh, the pharmacy brains. And uh, after this exhaustive process, we have this remarkable young men and women with us today. And to you contestants, I really want to congratulate you for your efforts, your talents, which has brought you to this point, and you really should be proud of what you have achieved, because it's truly laudable, and this is not... Uh, a way of undermining the efforts of other participants. But for you to be here, it means you have really displayed some outstanding efforts. And because of that, you're here with us today. <clears throat> I want to wish you all the very best as you contest today. I'm sure, uh, I mean, without any doubt that we're in for uh, a display of uh, creative skills and talent which, of course, uh, will, in the near future, bring some advancement, very much required advancement to uh, the Nigerian pharma industry. And especially one of the critical purpose of this event, one of the visions of having this event, is to identify and establish a talent pipeline and to showcase to you the available opportunities within the industry as a means of growing and advancing the healthcare system within Nigeria. Some of you, according to Pharma Kishola, wants to jackpot. <laughs> we hope that you would want, you would find some value and some reasons to stay behind in the country and together we will develop our country to achieve the level of, uh, the level of healthcare that we want to see, healthcare system that we want to see in our country. It is Shalina's core mission to provide quality, 
and affordable, quality, affordable, and available healthcare to Africans. And as part of providing quality is in identifying the best talents in the pharmaceutical industry, which you, of course, will be playing a critical role. To this extent, I want to officially welcome you once again, and I declare Shalina Young Talent Awards Season 5 Grand Finale open. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, madam. All right, so we'll take uh, the corporate video immediately. Thereafter, we'll continue with the program. Every, Every person, person on earth, earth deserves, deserves to live a healthy, healthy life. life. Yet, Yet in, in many, many parts, parts of Africa, Africa people, people lack basic, basic access, access to quality, quality medicines, medicines they, they trust and, and afford. afford. Inspired, Inspired to change, change this, Shalina Healthcare, Healthcare was established over 30, 30 years, years ago. ago. With a, with a mission, mission to provide, to provide quality, quality pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals that are, that are readily, readily available at affordable, at affordable prices, prices to those, to those who, who need them the most across, across the African, African continent. continent. Our, Our mission, mission is to provide, provide quality, quality medicines, medicines that are affordable, affordable and available, available guides guide every, every decision, decision you make, you make here, here at Shalina Healthcare. Healthcare. From, from which, which new products, products to, launch, to launch, to the investments in our manufacturing, manufacturing plant, plant on, and to where to open a new distribution depot in Africa. In Africa. We, do we do this because, because real lives, lives are at stake, stake and we are, we are passionate, passionate about, about making meaningful, meaningful contribution in Africa. In Africa. With, With Africa's, Africa's projected increase in population over the next, next few years, years more and more people, people are requiring greater access to affordable quality medicines. As a, As a result, result its, its pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical is, is one of the, the fastest, fastest growing grow in the world. world. Shalina Shal Healthcare, Healthcare has participated, has participated in, in this growth, growth over, over the years, the years to, become to become one of the most trusted organizations in sub-Saharan Africa. Africa. With, a With a diverse portfolio, portfolio of market-leading market brands, 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 of more than 350 products, products across, across 12, 12 therapeutic, therapeutic categories, categories, categories trusted, trusted by patients and doctors. As quality is a core pillar at Shalina, we source all our products strictly from WHO approved factories and operate state-of-the-art quality control testing laboratories in both India and China to ensure the highest quality standards are met. Our facility in India has been accredited by the governing institution for every country we operate in and has the monthly capacity to manufacture 110 million tablets, 90 million capsules, 11 million tubes and 4 million lotion bottles. Shalina medicines are registered in more than 15 countries across sub-Saharan Africa. Unlike most pharmaceutical companies, we operate an end-to-end -end supply chain with an expanding network of more than 30 Shalina distribution depots across Africa that supply directly to hospitals, clinics, pharmacies and NGOs. We are able to deliver quality medicines at affordable prices because we have full control of the supply chain from our own manufacturing facilities to our 30 distribution centers across Africa. Therefore, we cut out the middlemen and pass on these savings to our customers who are in effect buying directly from WHO quality approved facilities. At Shalina Healthcare, it's not just about supplying a product. We strongly believe in the importance of getting involved with the community and providing support in every way possible to ensure a better quality of life. A team of more than 300 professionals organizes medical seminars, pharmacy meets, product presentations, 
and patient outreach initiatives. All in support of a better future. In addition, Shalina Healthcare provides education scholarships and donates to important initiatives such as building water wells, schools and churches. With the growing demand for Shalina medicines, we are continually expanding our reach across Africa. But none of this would be possible without the passion of more than a thousand dedicated employees who strive for excellence every day and believe in everyone's right to quality yet affordable medicines. At Shalina, we are committed to finding sustainable solutions for the long-term health of Africa while always remaining true to our mission of providing quality, affordability and availability. We are proud to contribute to making a better future for those in need. Every person on earth deserves to live a healthy life. We got feedback that uh, some of the people behind cannot hear what is being said up front. Actually reminded me of uh, a little story I heard about uh, this individual that went to a pharmacist for consultation and uh, a, a little old woman, she walks up to the pharmacist and says, uh, Sir, I have a problem with gas. It's not really a big problem because it doesn't smell and it doesn't sound. However, it makes me uncomfortable. Can you please be of help? The pharmacist take, takes a look at her, scribbles down some things uh, to give to the pharmacist attendant, take this medication one, three times a day. Come back in five days for review. So she goes on with the medication and comes back after five days. And she says, uh, sir, that medication you gave me, I don't know whether it actually helped because though the gas problem is still there, though it doesn't um, sound, it doesn't still sound, but it now smells really bad. The pharmacy says, okay, now that we have taken care of your nasal problem, let us move on to take care of your hearing problem. You didn't get that. <laughs> so the problem was all the time with our nose and with our ears. The gas problem was real, and a lot of people had suffered for, for it. Okay, so we move on. Uh, and next we are going to take, uh, introduce him earlier as the chief host of uh, this event, CITA Season 5. And he's going to take us through the little journey of CITA so far. Uh, we started with 3,000, over 3,000 contestants through 24 schools, pharmacy schools around the country, right? And we've narrowed down to these 24 finalists. Can you just give a round of applause? Out of over 3,000 contestants, 24 of you are sitting here. It means you are one of the best brains uh, in pharmacy school in Nigeria, according to... Shalina Healthcare. Will you join me to welcome Farm Alaro? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Farm Biga. Good morning, um, my deans and all doing business here. Um, let me allow me to stand on the existing protocol. My name is Farm Alaro. Am I am I audible? Right, this Biga. Very well. Okay, good. Ah, it's quite relieving standing in front of you to just make this. And um, my task is simple to let you know what we do in Shalina Healthcare and the way the road to CITA 5 so far 
And uh, like my MD said earlier, when she was presenting, it's been some months of um, tedious work. And I actually want to stand here thanking my team and my colleagues for all the good work they've done, going through all the pharmacy schools in the country to get us to where we are today and to also celebrate these 24 finalists that are here with us. Yeah, like Dinga said, you are the best brain from the different qualifiers that we've had, which we call the day of the young talents. So we had 24 days of the young talents across 24 schools that have produced these finalists down here. And of course, um, we can also start without thanking our deans, who actually are panel members that have represented the deans from across all the schools. And because we have to actually decide who will be here, because normally from the ones we've done before now, we will allow the deans to come. But 24 deans cannot be here to judge. So they agreed, and we took a draw, and they were selected to represent the deans across the six geopolitical zones of the country to be on this panel to give the final you know, stamp of authority to whoever the winning result is here today. You know, but before I go to the details, eh, Shaina Healthcare is, um, uh, can I? The presentation. All right. All right. Is that moving? Okay, okay. Okay, um, basically, um, we are an Afro-focused pharmaceutical company, and um, our, our mission statement is very simple. Quality, affordability, and availability. But we also believe in one corporate purpose that we drive by every one of us, and that is that every single African has the right to quality healthcare delivery. But you know, beyond just producing medications that we do, which is quality, well, we have to do a lot, a lot more to be able to, you know, ensure those Africans actually have those quality um, healthcare delivery. Reason why we develop a lot of initiatives like that. And in order for us to do that, currently the China healthcare you see in Nigeria, we have gone beyond the pharma. And um, sir, you're welcome. We are more, we're not into consumer health and into diagnostics as well. And that is towards making us a one-stop pharmacy in a way to provide those holistic approach to healthcare delivery and achieve us. Of course, this is being done by an by experienced team of global leadership team, um, many of which we have uh, amongst us here in the country. Going straight to, from very humble beginning, I'm proud to be part of this team that from very humble beginning, 40 years ago, we are where we are today. Um, being who we are and who we are very soon you get to know and maybe I should let the cat out of the bag we want to use the opportunity of having our honorable things and our very important dignities that we have many of whom are still going to be recognized as the program continues and our panelists here we want you to celebrate with us as we mark our 40 year celebration today so there will be a little cake cutting later in the day before the final declaration of the winner please will you be our guest and uh, of course we have many of our national chairmen that are able Okay, um, in the, from very humble beginning in DRC Congo, we are proud to inform that we are in 21 countries. And many of the 21 countries, we are market leaders in many of them, from Angola to DRC Congo, and of course in Nigeria, where currently, by the grace of God, we are number five in the industry. You know, um, one of the major secrets behind our quality, affordable product is the fact that we have very strong control over our value chain of logistics. We control from the point of manufacturer which belongs to us to the last end user. So we cut off all the middlemen and making our product very affordable. And I also want to share that even as we are producing the, uh, the quality product, our very first factory in Africa, you know, WHO approved product uh, factories, we had the very first one in Nigeria that we have in Africa, and they are just here. And, um, well, one of the many uh, important dignities we are waiting here today, actually having an inspection of the factory today. So we have a factory also in Nigeria, many of the products coming from Nigeria, and that's to show you how focused we have, particularly in Nigeria, to grow the business and actually have it from the local content. We, into many of the diagnostic uh, uh, therapeutic category, we are striving to keep on, you know, meeting the yearnings of the patient as a leadership um, company 
and as a company that is there to provide solutions. And for us to do this, we believe in very important and um, resultful health outcomes. And for us to do that, we have the health professionals engagement, we have the partnership researches, and we have the patient-first approach to many of our operations. That's why you see one of the reasons why we are here today is because of CITA, China Young Talents Award. I'm very happy to inform that CITA is just one of the many initiatives we take. We have the China Rising Stars Award, we have the China Academy, we have the China you know, Health Camps that we do, amongst many other activities. So as a company, we have taken selling to learning and we try to impact, particularly on our stakeholders, by way of knowledge sharing, capacity building, towards ensuring that really that healthcare delivery is given to the African and we're able to achieve our corporate um, purpose. You know, we are very employee centric as well, um, with 2,500 employees in Africa alone. You know, we are not resting on our horse to really fully establish ourselves. Out of these, more than 200 are here in Nigeria. And our, our, our homes are still open to taking more locals into our fold, particularly my young colleagues that are coming up that want to be working in the thing. So basically, that is what we do in Shalina Healthcare. Now, let me take you into the story of CITA. Uh, it's a very passionate story. We started like five years ago. We didn't know what to do, and many of the things there were part of those who we met that time to know how do we impact with on um, pharmacy practice and all that. So a journey has been very, you know, we started like a national level competition for pharmacy um, for professionals and um, trying to create a stage where they can actually, you know, interact and we get the best pharmacy brains in Nigeria from them. And we have been on this journey from um, 2019. And to God be having it, we are in CITA 5 today. And um, it's a very simple procedure. You know, um, if you appreciate where we started, we started with the very maiden edition in 2019 with three schools, University of Lagos, uh, from the World University, and um, University of Ibadan. Season two had five schools. Season three had five schools. We couldn't expand because of the COVID. And last year, we were able to only do seven schools. But we told ourselves that one day, we will cover all the schools across the country. That will be some five, six years' time. But I'll tell you, with the zeal and determination and the belief in delivering for Africans, and of course, the push from our management, we are glad to let you know that we have been to all the pharmacy schools in the country in season five. Thank you. And if you ask me, this, today's gathering is a fresh experience for me. Forget the fact that we have done season one to five. It's a new experience for me, new experience for my team. And um, how it's going to go, we don't know, but we know that we've done before. I know with your support, we're going to have a very interesting day today, and particularly under the tutelage and the uh, supervision of our uh, honorable um, panelists there. And, you know, what we do across, we've been to all the schools to declare a day of the young talent, and we had that, and it wasn't pre-planned, and I want to say also, it started, I will, uh, first of all, Mrs. Olubumi Elizabeth from OAU gave me that list that time. I remember I went to meet the deans in, in, in Abuja to first tell them that I want to take CITA to them. The way they received us to, there has never been a school that we mentioned CITA to, they openly with open arm accept for us to come. So it was so easy to do. And even in doing that, what we do in Shalina is just to facilitate the moderation, the execution is just done by the faculty. So what you see today, the finalists that we have in our front are the result of the good work done by different management staff and teachers from across the schools. We are just on the side. And to keep on the fairness on the approach towards selecting that number one pharmacist that we want to see for season five, we have also, you know, through a, a draw, it's gotten our, you know, our deans here to actually manage and supervise the execution of today's ex um, this thing. So we would, I'm also having a third for I go to show you the story and the, the trip, the road to this championship that we're having today. But why now, let me just share with you some previous pictures that we have. That is our CITA 1. The winner in CITA 2, that was in 2020. Then we have CITA 3 winner also in the picture there. I remember very well from um, um, ABU Zaria, and um, I think I'm seeing some of our lecturers that are here. Then, of course, we are the Saturday champion 
and um, we have the current champions here. Who, so we have um, Peace Abiona of UI, second position went to Lagos, and the top position went to UI as well. In fact, um, Peace is here with us. Are you here, Peace? Can you stand up for him? That's our reigning champion from University of Ibadan. He had to come all the way from Mundo State to grace this occasion, and I hope um, it will be, of course, to the hand to know who amongst these people is going to hand over the crown to, you know. So it's been a long road for us, and um, I would say we started asking who the best brain is. And I've been asking all this question all this while, and these people are proving that in their various schools that they are the best brains, they are the one, but we are looking for the only one today. And of course, we will get there in our quest for the best pharmacy brain in the country. Thank you. The next presentation will be the road to this final. Thank you. All right. You can, you can, I can continue. All right. That's the journey to the final. Um, it's very passionate, very emotional for me. And I will say again, thank you to my team. Thank you to the schools to have made this possible, particularly to University of Port Harcourt, where we want to get started at all. You know, it was like just one call. We have to save time. These are all the schools and the days that we've been to. We started in exactly in 26th of October, University of Port Harcourt. And now we've got the first winner here. The guy from Port Harcourt is there? Good. Preview, yes. So all the way down to the very last one in March, in February, in Del Sur. So it's been a long journey, interesting, but quite you know, exhaustive journey by our team in Shalina with the collaboration of the schools to take us to where we are today. OK, so just pictorial, 30,000, 3,000 contestants, 25 schools, 24 schools, 24 finalists that leads to today. So I will just share those story quietly. In Port Harcourt, 26th October, we have Prevail qualifying as the best brain in Uniport. We moved on on the 8th of November to University of Ibadan, where we have Olaiwola having been the best brain as well. The journey took us the following day to Olabisi Lombardo University, where we have Amosun Theophilus winning. And you see all the, you know, the fanfare thing. We tried to crop all those pictures for you to just have a feel of how the day is from the university. We took it to Obafema Olowo some weeks later, two days afterwards. Um, we were hosted there, and by equation became the champion from that school. They went to Niger Delta University, you know, all the way in the Weberforce Island, and we, on the 22nd of November, and we have Dimka Benito Chinedu as the winner from that place, the local champion. We have our day of the rising star, the rising star there from University of Rio, Etim Yandra, that was on 23rd of November. Our train moved also to Afebaola University. Of course, with the support of our teacher and mother, we were able to produce the best brain from there in the person of Ibukwala Mayawa, who is amongst us here today. The train, on the, the train also went to University of Lagos. The same day it was happening in Afebaola. Home support. <laughs> so where we have uh, Princess Kamsi, and one other thing I will say to our dean, thank you very much for your flexibility. You will just imagine having to coordinate the calendars of all the schools to be one. Of course, people were having exams. Some are preparing for their exams. So we have some deans actually having to bend the rules. Number one is the NDU, where we had to change the calendar because of us twice. Um, University of Benin had to change twice. Like the same thing, just to be able to accommodate everybody here today. You know, if you look at the different calendars of the school, it's not easy to actually harmonize it for this occasion. I say thank you very much on behalf of China Management. So we went to Lagos, and we also, from Lagos, we took the case to um, Cardinal State University to in the day of the qualifier. These are the lovely faces, and um, the whole team there, happy to have um, the, uh, the qualifier. We went to Investor Benin as well, where favor emerged on the 29th of November. We moved the train to Investor of Nigeria, Insuka, where Oluchi emerged on the 20, on 1st of December. 13th December, close to the end of our, uh, the Christmas, we still had it in Jaws, yeah, with the support of the, uh, the dean there. We had, and uh, we have Equazor coming, emerging as the best brain 
in the school. Then we moved the train also to the following day, actually, to uh, Maiduguri, no, before that time. We have Arafat, Abu Bakr, imagine. Um, this was a very tortuous journey for us because there is no flight to Maiduguri, and our, our RM had to go almost 10 hours on the road to actually get to Maiduguri from the north there. It was moving, so I'm happy that we were able to do it. It was one-man soldier, and that's Suraj. Thank you very much for the dedication, Suraj, if you are hearing me. Um, for the information of everybody here, uh, we know that not many schools can get their supporters in here, and not all the classes can be here in here at the same time. You know, so we are transmitting this program to other members of your classes in your different school. I hope the handles share to you, you share to them, they can log in and they will see you perform. So I'm sure I'm sure they are hailing you, but you cannot hear their voices. <laughs> all right. So we moved on to uh, University of Illinois also the same day on the 14th, you know, our virus team. They went to Gombe State University. And of course, we have our mommy and our mother here, you know, for Salau. Imagine also as you being chosen to represent the northeast of their school in the panel today to give us a, um, a good judgment today. I mean, Mohammed actually emerged. Then we took it to Inamdi Azikwe University as well on the 17th of January. You can imagine we just started the school, the new year, and it went there. And um, we have the um, Chukwemeka Odumegu Ojuku University at Igbariam. Now, I remember I had to be there for the first time to know, wow, Igbariam. Of course, my very good friend and brother, Professor Teofin Akuna, is here on the panel. He emerged as a dean representing Southeast on the panel. So you're welcome, sir. And the very, uh, my team gave us a very good report that the way it was, they were hosted, by Dean and his team, it was wonderful. And thank you very much, you know, producing um, Chizoba and the and in all events. Um, Isman Danfodio University Shokoto was also held. It held on a Saturday, 23rd of December, just to get it done before the year could run out. And we have Amino, you know, imagine as a winner. I mean, I could only get one of the speeches at that time, you know. Then we took the case to um, Amadi Bedo University on the 24th. In 24, Pauline came up. We have Adobayero on the 24th of January. We have um, Enugu State University on the 29th of January that produced um, Pamela. We have um, Maduna University back to the South South on the 30th of January that brought Princess Chiwe, you know, you got lovely pictures there in the school. And uh, we have the Day of the Rising Star in Igbinedon University. And of course, we have our Dean here representing South South. You're welcome, sir for being here with us. Princess came as the best brain in the school in a very, you know, keen contest that they had in the university. And we almost thought that because of proximity and the timing and uh, insecurity and many things, we'll probably end up doing only 23 schools. But we were able to get a date for Delta State University, and we held it on the 24th of February, and that closed the call for us on the you know, covering all the school. So you could see the proof that we did. all the schools in Nigeria on pharmacy school have been touched and they were all competing, you know, in the, ah, without, we also went to Bina Johnson, so sorry, I think I missed Bina Half. Oh, this is the reputation. Oh, I'm going backwards. My apologies. All right. Um, So while we were looking for the search, the quest for the best pharmacy brain, we are here now asking who among these 24 finalists is the one. And the grand prize today, which has never been the case before, is a million naira. And that's a big jump from what it used to be. You can clap for him, but uh, sorry for Shalina. The first edition was 200,000. Second was 250. The last was 300,000. From 300,000, seven schools jumped to 24 schools. From 300,000, um, 300,000 jumped, jumped to 1 million naira. And that's the best, I mean, and it can only get better. Please give a shout to Shalina Healthcare, please. So that's a whole lot for stake. Beyond the monetary value, I understand the prestige. No, but even participating in your school and being the second, the third, or the first place winners in your various schools is an achievement that nobody can take away from you. But today, beyond the prize money, you are going to go home with the plug and you're going to go with a certificate that belongs to you for life. So I will say, you know, I was asking you guys in the group yesterday, I'm looking for the best massive brain. Are you the one? But none of you responded. 
Are you doubting? I don't understand. Okay, so we are very seriously looking for who the person is. And we don't know who it is, but it's amongst um, these people in the seal oats. So I wish you all the very best as the, uh, as the conversation goes on. Thank you very much, our invited guests and our um, panel of Dean. We thank you very much for all this. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, and thank you, everyone. Now, without much ado, we'll go straight to the first stage. First stage is the MCQ, uh, which will be taken through Google. All right, so is everyone connected? All right? Is everyone connected to the MTN source? You're not connected? You're not connected? Sorry? You couldn't. Is there a WhatsApp page? I sent to the WhatsApp page. No, 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 no. Well, we are still just twenty-four, so it's not, there's no the limit is six more. You are not saying it. Who else is not saying it? Please oh, just hold on for the Google. Let's ensure that everyone is connected. Peter, please just let me check, please. Please come, come. Uh, see, let me check. Let me check. So you are connected. Both of you are connected. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Um, three O A. That is four G. Not five G. Please hold on to the Google. Don't start anything. I give instruction. Don't click on any Google form, please. Let's ensure everyone is connected. You're also It's supposed to be 5G. 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 5G 3089. Do you, do you, do you have... Huh? 4G. 4G and Okay, that's why... That's why it's connected. It's connected. It's connected. It's connected. It's connected. connected. Yeah. But can you use your own this and then? Check, check. Yeah, it's, open it's just 10 minutes uh, Google form. Google check. test. Open it. Let's see. Can you use... Level playing field. That's why we wanted to provide that. We don't know why you can't connect now. Don't know. So you can't connect to that 4G. No, you can't. You can't open the Google form. No, it's not. It has to connect first before we send that. 
I've deleted this. Okay, that's why it's slow. Yeah, it's very slow. It's very slow. What's going on? Let's see, if you have... Let if me you use have, my data and see. You think you have a uh, fast, uh, fast data? You have a data there. Let's search something. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a time. It's a time. Ten minutes for everyone. Let me compare on my phone. It's all wrong. Ten minutes for everyone. If you're connected, please put your phone on the table. For those that are connected. Yeah, if you are connected, please put it on the table. So please, if you're connected, just um, wait to be instructed to start. Remember, as men of honor... We join hands. So we're men of honor. We won't start before we're told to. Yes. So that it will be fast. Yeah. Somebody share that. Yes, someone should support me. Then to Somebody who is connected to it can share that also with you. Okay. He can it pick won't. it up. Yes. Don't yes. Like no, it won't. It won't. It won't. It won't. It won't. It won't. Can they use your personal internet? That's what I'm saying. Somebody is using it. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's slow. I'm going to Somebody can borrow him a phone. It's just to. Yeah? My phone can share Wi Fi. With him? Like, I can share my. Okay, share. 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 Did not see. Mm -hmm. um, apologies. We're just trying to make sure that uh, all the contestants are on the same page. They're actually going to use uh, a Google form to answer the MCQs. So. That's what they are trying to get their connections right. Of course, we all know what happened. Was it last week on the ground where the Mami Water and the <laughs> decided they would no longer wanted the, the optic fiber, or what, what do they call it now? Underwater. So there was a major uh, incident with uh, internet connection. We actually have provided the 5G connection for this occasion, but. Uh, I think MTN is still having the issues with their connectivity. Mm, it's not working. If, if I can get the phone, that's be better. Yes, okay, please. So all contestants, please drop your phones. I'm, I'm Remember, we are from the same. We are from the same community, right? We are men of honor. I'm getting feedback, but I don't want to. I don't want to accept that feedback. So please, can we drop our phones? If you have connected, drop your phones on your on your table. Just as a show of uh, of sportsmanship and fairness. I think everyone else is connected, right? So you use your right. Please, if you are not connected, can you show your hand? Everyone. Okay, someone said they don't have these kind of problems overseas because they don't have uh, they don't have uh, witches and wizards. <laughs> Okay, how are you? So, she said, she said, so I can send you this thing again. Is it there? Yeah? Are we all set? Are we all set? Okay, I'm dropping the Google link now. Please, the Google link is there. Can we all see? Don't start. Oh. Can we all view the Google link? Site 5 MCQ. Can we view the Google link? 
right? Can we all see from the WhatsApp page? Can we all see? Please, who has not seen? From the WhatsApp page, I've dropped the Google link. Right? Have we all seen it? You've all seen it. So are we good to go? Hold on, hold on. Please don't click, oh, because I have the back end here. If you go ahead of your time, please, you are disqualified. Please, you must wait for... What's happening? What's happening? No more. No what's happening? So just wait. See, okay. Hold on like that. Hello. Click. Click on it. Just click on the board, don't start. Yes. Zangi. Uh -huh. okay. Just click on the page. The page is open. Page is open, right? Page is open. Hmm? The first time we told us to open it. Yeah. 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 Hands on your laps. See our headmaster. Hands on your laps. <laughs> okay, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we are starting the first stage of this competition is the MCQ. And uh, there are 20 questions. 20 questions will be answered in 10 minutes. 30 seconds for a question. But I'll give you two minutes extra. Two minutes extra so that you can enter your details. Please, you notice if you open the first compulsory, you must state your seat number, type in your seat number, type in your name, and the third one is to type in your school. That is two extra minutes. Right. So in all, 12 minutes, you should be true. 12 minutes, you should be true. That's after the count of three. Right. Uh, Chuba, 12 minutes. Right. Time in. Okay. One, two, Three, please start.
two minutes more. Two minutes more. Get you ready. Please click submit. Click submit. Click submit. One, two, three, four, five. Please drop your uh, phones on your table, your hands on your laps. Your hands on your laps. Drop your phones on your table. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please don't forget the results are cumulative. So whatever you score from the first stage to the second stage, that is to the third stage, before we begin to excise those that uh, have to go home from there. Thank you. All right. All right, a, a round of applause for our contestants, please. So the battle, the final battle has begun. All the best to you guys. Uh, like I said earlier, there are some very important uh, personalities in our midst, and in no particular order, I uh, would like to acknowledge their presence with us today. Uh, so we have with us Farm Mrs. Okewole, the DPS of Lagos State, DPS LSMS, Lagos State. Please, Ma, can you stand up for recognition? Welcome, Ma. We also have from IRUC, the HOD GH Badagri. Farm Ayara, you're welcome, sir. And we have pharmacist Dr. Mrs. Dokas Omeire. I hope I did justice to that name, Omeire, HOD Pharmacy, Unilag Medical Center. Welcome, Ma. We also have Farm Mrs. Farin Louis, uh, GH Isolo. Welcome, Ma. We have um, no, uh, Pharmacist Ezige Joseph. Is this Davis or Darius? I can't see that name. Da Is it Davis or Darius? Darius. Darius. Okay. You're welcome. Please stand up for recognition. Is here representing the young pharmacist group of the PSN. You're welcome. Uh, we also have Dr. Mrs. Dr. Mrs. Oyawale, Director of Pharmacy, Lasso Tikeja. Okay, that's not all. We have some other important people here with us. 
I mean, we have the who's who in the in pharmacy in Lagos here. Can we just give them a round of applause as I continue to introduce them? Okay, uh, we have um, pharmacist Obikaya Oladele. Did I get that name? No, Obik. This is K A Y A. It's actually okay. K O Y A. Obikoya Oladele Ahapen National. Please, okay. Then we have pharmacist Baba Yemi Oyekunle, PSN Lagos Chairman. Welcome, sir. Uh, we have pharmacist. I can't see this writing well. She is the MD of Funket Pharmacy. MD of Funket Pharmacy. This looks like Onokpegba, but I, <laughs> okay, Awokpegba. You're welcome, ma. <laughs> Apologies for that. This is handwritten, so I have to decipher the writing. Then we have Farm Oyewusi Omolola representing the HOD GH Igondo. Farm Oyewusi, you're welcome, ma'am. We have Farm. For Lashade, Kale Jaye, Pharmacy Department, Lassos. We have pharmacies Olabode, FMC, Owo. How was the trip down? Okay. Uh, it's also a happen national. Chairman. You're welcome, sir. Then we have Farm Adio Monsurat, representing Farm Mrs. Faboyo of, Faboyo of uh, um, National Orthopedic Hospital, Igbobi. Now, those are names that I have. Those are the names I have. We'll continue to acknowledge uh, everybody as we go along. Now, this is a surprise to me. Uh, host, why is the cake there? Okay, so we have um, a table before us, but I don't think it's time for this yet. Who were the people that moved that to the center? Please, can you help so that we don't distract our guests? Can you help move it to the side a bit? At the appropriate time, we'll be unveiling the reason for, for the parcel in front of us. Okay. All right, we'll move on. So we'll move on to the next stage of the competition, which is uh, the presentations. A round of applause again for our contestants. So right now we're going to take presentations. And um, the way the presentation works is that we have 24 contestants. We have 12 topics. And... Uh, a pair of the contestants will be more or less debating on each of the 12 topics. So, of course, the topics were picked at random. It was um, a double blind. Sorry, my, play, my, <laughs> my papers are flying everywhere. It was a double blind um, process. We didn't know who the contestants were who were going to pick a particular topic. So, it was done randomly. And so the topics that came to you were not uh, determined or predetermined by anybody. 
It was just by happenstance. Right? But you all know your topics. You know whether you are standing for the topic or against the topic. Now, each of you have five minutes to present your position on the topic. Four minutes for your introduction, the content of your presentation, and then one minute to round up. We'll help you by indicating to you when you're on the fourth minute, right, so that you know you have just one minute left for your presentation. Uh, so we'll be taking the topics in no particular order, but like I said, you all know your topics, so we'll call you uh, based on the topic you're supposed to uh, debate on in peers. We'll call you in peers so that you can make your presentation. Of course, our able panel of judges are there to score according to predetermined criteria for each of the presentations. So, uh, IT. Shall we begin? Sorry, can we have control here? Technical, can we have control here? Okay, so the first topic before us is counterfeit and fake drugs in Nigeria. How can we combat it? Counterfeit and fake drugs in Nigeria, how can we combat it? And we have two of our contestants who are going to do justice to this topic on the screen. And they are Olaiwala Alimat. So, Olai Wala Alima, can you stand up for recognition? All right, so you'll be going first. Olai Wala Alima, can you come forward? Please, a round of applause for her. Encourage her as she comes forward. She'll be speaking on the topic on the screen. Uh, of course, your slides are already with us, so we'll be presenting the slides. Uh, she'll be taking us through our slides in four minutes. She'll have one minute to round off before we call uh, the contestant who will be presenting the counter motion. Sorry, one minute. All right, so we're on the same page now. So you have four minutes for your presentation, one minute to round off. Uh, I'll, uh, going forward, I will not be, well, I'll have to call their names to know their numbers, but once I recognize their numbers, I'll be ad addressing them by their respective numbers. So contestant number eight, so she's, Speaking on counterfeit and fake drugs in Nigeria, how can we combat it? Con counterfeit and fake drugs in Nigeria, how can we combat it? Stronger regulation or mass awareness. We must know that counterfeit, counterfeit drugs are defined as drugs that have been deliberately or fraudulently mislabeled concerning identity and source. This is according to the World Health Organization in 2009. As such, counterfeiting is a highly deliberate criminal action against human life and requires stringent punishment to reflect the gravity of the offense. Judges, ladies and gentlemen, imagine lying in an emergency ward, dying from septicemia. Doctors administer some counterfeit ceftriaxone, which according to the Food and Drug Association in 2018, can mean two things. One, incorrect ingredients. Two, containing harmful chemicals. 
you see, this can predispose you to dying from the infection, destroy your kidney, or even take your life. Now tell me, what could awareness have done for you on that bed? Is it, what could have saved you on that bed? Is it awareness about counterfeit drugs or availability of only genuine drugs in the market? Before you answer, Professor Dora Quinley in 2000, in an interview, sorry. Sorry. Before you answer, Professor Dora Quinley in an interview mentioned that counterfeiters, counterfeiters have superior technologies, making identification of counterfeit drugs difficult for even a body as big as NAVDAC to, excuse me, to identify how much more consumers. The logic is simple. Either make counterfeit drugs in, unavailable in the market or make it very difficult to get. That is a fight and that is regulation. The reason people kill is not the lack of awareness that people they kill may die. It is because they have easy access to the weapon of crime or they are likely to go scot-free. Similarly, the counterfeit drug industry tries to use the same reasons. These hired killers try trade profits for human lives because it is easy to do and they will go scot-free. Hmm. Even the World Health Organization mentioned that there are counterfeit drugs in the market, not due to lack of awareness, but due to inadequate penalties and regulation. Okay. Apart from that, in the battle against counterfeiting, the consumers have the least stake in the control. Stakeholders like pharmacists and regulatory body have the biggest respons responsibility. A 2023 study by Obe Adebowale Richard in the University of Patmouth says stricter regulation and punishment should follow, emphasizing that mass awareness is not the solution. Come to think of it, in 2024, today's debate is not about the importance of awareness, its advantages or its disadvantages. It is about whether or not it is the solution. During COVID, there was awareness did not stop people from going to, from going about their daily activities. Government policies did. Similarly, clearly written on the cigarette pack is the Federal Ministry of Health warns that smokers are liable to die young. Despite this, smokers' rates is increasing every day in Africa. Is it not obvious? Is it, does it not make it obvious that awareness is not enough? Taking action is ensuring stricter regulation is. Judges, ladies and gentlemen, would you rather choose fixing CCTV cameras, giving security personnel good ammunition, and punishing criminals to solve insecurity issues, or simply write, cars are packed at owner's risk? Strong regulation means ensuring only competent and fit bodies produce drugs. It means ensuring that technology is adopted for detection and identification of fake drugs. It means punishing counterfeit drug producers. It means creating enabling environments for only genuine drugs to be easily available and affordable. It means a comprehensive war against counterfeit drug production. Is my opponent saying awareness is a replacement for all this in 2024? I'm Oli Maolu YMC Olaiola from the University of Ibadan, speaking for stronger regulations in combating counterfeit medication. Yeah, thank you very much. A round of applause for her once again. Uh, please, you may take your seat. So, to do the counter presentation, please. We have Akinshola de Boraulu Bumi. Contestant number 20. So please step forward. Contestant number 20.
Good day, sir. Good day, ma. Good day, my fellow colleagues. I'll be talking on counterfeit and fake drugs in Nigeria, how we can combat it using mass awareness in the society. Can we, can, looking at the picture, most of these counterfeit drugs are made in such a way that they look like the original, that you cannot even differentiate it. Some even have fake approval number, some contain active pharmaceutical ingredients, even, most of it contain active pharmaceutical ingredients, but not in the same quantity, and this has led to ineffective treatments and has been a public threat in health system. In many industrialized nations, the rate of counterfeit medication, medicine confiscation increased by 57% within the period of 2007 and 2008, indicating a significant rise of its penetration into the global pharmaceutical supply chain. However, why, why Nigeria has made tremendous progress in reducing the circulation of this counterfeit and fake drug from 40% in 2001 to 70% in 2005? According to WHO, fake medicine have contributed to not less than 200,000 malaria deaths that could have been prevented annually. I'm very sure that in one way or the other, we that are here as one as actually taking fake and counterfeit drug that we, we are not even aware of because this drug are actually made like it looks like the original. And though a rules and regulation can help combat fake and counterfeit drug. But most people actually go to the pharmacy, go to the patent medicine store to get their drugs. And, and so they, are, they do not really know much about this drug. They just go there. They are not aware whether they are fake drugs or they are counterfeit drugs. So there are several regulatory agencies that has helped to um, and has been working to combat the counterfeit drugs in Nigeria. We have the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration. We have the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, and we have the Standard Organization of Nigeria. The incident of fake, fake drug has led to increased microbial resistance. Why? Because you take drugs, it does not, uh, it's a fake drug, it does not contain ask pharmaceutical ingredients or contain ask pharmaceutical ingredients, but not in the entire quantity. And then you take it, your body is already adapted, uh, your, your body has already adapted to the, to the drug, and then another time that you want to take the drug, but you want to take the correct, the original drug, but there is now resistance. The body has created resistance, or the organism has created resistance to this drug. There are several factors that encourage fake and counterfeit drug in Nigeria. We have demand of drug exceeding supply. We have only few pharmaceutical industry that are functioning or that produce much drug in Nigeria. And so many of these pharmaceutical industry, they are not empowered enough to produce drug. We have much more demand than supply. We have quick enforcement and penal sanction. We have high price of medicine and we have online pharmacy, ignorance and so on. What are the reasons for counterfeit and fake drugs in Nigeria? Number one, to prevent further spread of disease, improve the quality of life, build trust in the healthcare system, and also maintain economic stability. While regulation and punishment are important, they may not be enough to curb the problem of fake and counterfeit drugs in Nigeria. Because of lack of enforcement, corruption, and limited resources can make it too difficult to effectively enforce regulation. However, mass awareness can help reach a wider population, such as using public campaign, telling people, sensitizing them about fake and counterfeit drugs, because most people in this country actually go to the pharmacy store to get their drugs, or even go to the patent medicine store, who do not even have, uh, who have only few knowledge about drugs, to get their drugs, so they do not really have knowledge, or they do not really know whether they are taking original drug, or they are taking counterfeit drug. So, the government should look for a way to create mass awareness, improve the mass awareness, so that people are actually sensitized, they know how to identify fake drug from original drug, and they can and actually know whether they are getting the fake drug or original drug. And also, as education program for people that are in the um, uh, rural areas, because some of them are not educated. They do not really know. They only know that they have a disease, go to the markets and get this drug. They are not really educated about, um, about whether we have fake, and, fake drug or counterfeit drug. And also, including the mass awareness, the government should... The government should include into the curriculum of the primary school education and also that the should that the children will already be aware of fake and counterfeit drugs before, before they can even become consumer. However, strong regulation can help combat fake and counterfeit drugs, but it cannot do enough than mass awareness because mass awareness can actually help reach a wider audience. And also, if the government finally, I'll be concluding, though mass awareness can help combat fake and counterfeit drug, public um, rules and regulation has also been used to combat fake and counterfeit drug. But if the government actually mean well for the for their people, they should actually close down all the um, all the local um, poor um, poor marketing 
poor uh, marketing supply of drugs that we have across the nation so that uh, fake, uh, the uh, risk of fake, fake and cannabis drug in Nigeria can actually decrease. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. You may, you may take your seat. A round of applause for her again. So moving on, we are going to take the next, uh, the next topic, which is, should HPV vaccination for a female at adolescent age be encouraged to speak on this, we have Unjoku Favor, Ainaya. That's contestant number four. Contestant number four. Uh, we want to encourage you to move towards the left of, uh, of the hall so that you'll be more audible to our panelists. All right, remember you have four minutes uh, for your presentation, one minute to round off your presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, panel of judges, distinguished guests, representatives of Shalina Healthcare, and my fellow debaters. Today we gather to discuss a critical health issue facing adolescent females. The topic, should HPV vaccination for a female adolescent age be encouraged? My name is Njoku Favor, representing University of Benin, and I'm here to support this motion. HPV stands for Human Papilloma Virus. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, it is the most common sexually transmitted infection, affecting both male and female. Male and female, with about 3 million HPV With about 43 million. Okay, I'll continue. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, it is the most common sexually transmitted infection affecting both men and women with about 43 million cases in the year 2018. Some types of HPV can cause health-related health problems, including genital warts and cancers. However, the burden of HPV-related diseases is falls disproportionately on women. For instance, it can cause cervical, vulva, and vaginal cancers, among others. Through a, through a systematic Exposition of pertinent points. I intend to underscore both the necessity and manifold benefits of vaccinating adolescent females. Point one, it prevents cervical cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, cervical cancer is a formidable adversary that claims countless lives each year. And HPV is the primary cause of cervical cancer. Early vaccination during adolescence ensures long-term protection protection against cervical cancer. Point two. Point two, head immunity. 
Encouraging HPV vaccination among adolescent females not only protects them individually, but contributes to herd immunity. What this means is that when a large portion of the population is vaccinated against the virus, it has protected those who are not vaccinated or cannot be vaccinated due to various reasons such as misinformation about the virus, about the vaccine, um, misinformation about the vaccine, allergic reaction to the first dose of the vaccine, and personal beliefs, thus reducing the overall transmission of the virus in the community. Point three, it reduces healthcare costs. As the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. Preventing HPV infections through vaccination will lead to significant cost savings in healthcare. By reducing the incidence of cervical cancer and other HPV-related diseases, this will reduce the financial burden on healthcare systems and individuals. I conclude with this. Though there are concerns about this vaccination of adolescent females encouraging early sexual activity, this should not be prioritized over protection and immunity against this epidemic that has claimed lives. That has claimed lives. Moreover, moreover, with the rise of crimes such as the rise of crimes such as child abuse and rape, it is important that adolescent females are protected. This is what will be prevented by the vaccination of adolescent females. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause for him once again. All right, to give a counter presentation is Musa Afsat Abdullahi. That's contestant number two. You're welcome. Okay, so you stand here. The panel of judges. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am Musa Hafsad Abdullahi. I'm here to I'm here to against the claim should HPV vaccination. I'm here to present against the claim should HPV vaccination be for female for, for female at adolescent age be encouraged? Of course, no. HPV vaccination for female at adolescent age should not be encouraged. Here are the outline of the presentation. Here are the outline of the presentation. Adolescent, who is an adolescent? The World Health Organization defines adolescent as a person between the age of 10 and 19. It refers to the transitional phase between childhood and adulthood. HPV stands for human papilloma virus. It's a group of virus that infects the skin and moist tissues like the cervix, the vagina, the anus, the throat, and the mouth. Oh. Thank you, sir. I would like to start again. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
All right, pardon us uh, for the technical glitch. We'll be back on air in a jiffy. While we're waiting for them to sort out that uh, little problem, okay, I think they have resolved it. So, okay, let's allow the contestant finish her presentation and then we'll acknowledge some of the other uh, VIPs in our midst. So, please. Where's Chuba? Chuba, are you ready? I'm here to counter the claim should HPV vaccination be encouraged? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm here to counter the claim HPV vaccination for a female at adolescent age should not be encouraged. Here are the outline of the presentation. Who is an adolescent? The World Health Organization defines an adolescent as any person between the age of 10 and 19. Therefore, adolescence is a transitional phase between is a transitional phase between childhood and adulthood. HPV stands for human papilloma virus. It is a group of viruses that infect the skin and moist tissue, such as the cervix, the vagina, the mouth, and the trough. Types of HPV, they are classified into two. The loric types, which are the what's called sin types. Most common example are HPVs 11 and 6. Then the high risk types, which are the oncogenic types. The most common ones are HPV 16 and 18. HPV vaccination has been recommended for adolescents and young adults as a primary prevention for cancer over a decade. Then why should HPV vaccination not be encouraged among adolescents? One of the reasons is promotion of early sexual activity. Adolescents may tend to refrain from sexual activity for fear of contacting HPV. But once vaccinated, the vaccination may serve as a potential gateway to encourage sexual activity at earlier age. Then long-term efficacy concern. Studies have shown that the protective effect of the vaccine may wane over time. Thereby necessitating booster shots. Another reason why it should not be encouraged is potential risks and side effects. One of the potential risks of HPV vaccination is that it could lead to infertility by inducing primary ovarian insufficiency. Another reason is that overemphasis on HPV. HPV vaccination requires a lot of emphasis. By focusing only on HPV vaccination, other important aspects of adolescent health care may be neglected. Another reason is ethical consideration. To encourage HPV vaccination, it needs to be mandated. Mandating the vaccine may impinge on individual autonomy and parental rights. Another reason is cost and resource allocation. The vaccination program requires a significant amount of resources. And as such, allocating resources to HPV vaccination may divert funds from other important health care needs. Another reason is lack of comprehensive protection. HPV vaccination protects against certain strains of the virus, but not all. There are about 150 strains of HPV, vac HPV virus, but the vaccine only protects against certain strain of the virus, not all the viruses. Conclusion, encouraging HPV vaccination for adolescent female raises valid concern about the risks efficacy, ethical consideration, cost, and comprehensive protection. I hope with the few points being mentioned, I'm able to convince you that HPV vaccination for adolescents should not be encouraged. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> no, so please hold on, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, just a minute. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, before we continue, I'd uh, like to acknowledge some, uh, like I said earlier, some of the VIPs that are here seated with us. Uh, so we have here with us uh, pharmacist Tunde uh, Oyeniro, is the President of Society of Pharmaceuticals Sales and Marketing of Nigeria. You're welcome, sir. We have pharmacist Wale Oladigbolu. I hope I got that right. ACPN National Chairman. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Uh, we also have Dr. Akikumi Ezekiel Olua Bemiga, National Chairman, Napa. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. We have Dr. Dupe Oyawole, State Chairman Ahapen. I think I've called that name before. Okay, I think I've acknowledged before. You're welcome, Ma. Uh, we have Dr. Stephanie Oluide, ARC ESM. Dr. Stephanie Oluide, welcome. Uh, we have Emanuela Shama, representing the CEO of ARC ESM. Emmanuel Shama, representing the CEO of ARC ESM. You're welcome. Okay. And we have pharmacist Adeni Olufun Layo, representing Lagos State Primary Healthcare Board Director. Uh, that's of, in the person of Mrs. Ade Oshu. Abeni, okay, apologies. The transcriptor wrote Adeni. <laughs> You're welcome. I understand there's a, um, a remark from the director. We will take that uh, later on in the program. Thank you very much for coming. So, um, so we'll continue with our debate. It's getting interesting so far, isn't it? All right. So, the next topic. Some of us have had sneak peek into that. The next topic. Okay, I wonder why 5G is acting like 2G today. Next topic is lecturers deserve the bulk of blame for any out of inefficiency or poor performance of pharmacy students in pharmacy schools in Nigeria. To speak on this topic, first we have Namani Pamela Ebube. I can hear some people say, be careful what you say. <laughs> so you have four minutes for your presentation. After which, uh, you will be given one minute to round off your presentation. Uh, your time starts about now. Is number nine. Sorry, contestant number nine. Move forward, press down. Go back, up, forward, down. Move, press down. Forward. No, go ahead. There's a famous Japanese quote that says, the, um, sorry, there's a famous Japanese quote that says, better than a million days of studying is one day with a great teacher. 
my distinguished judges, my fellow audience, uh, my audience, and then my fellow, my co-debaters. My name is Namani Pamela, and I'm here to support the motion that says, lecturers deserve the bulk of blame for any iota of inefficient or poor performance of pharmacy students in pharmacy schools in Nigeria. And here are my reasons. We, have, we all know that we have very knowledgeable lecturers in pharmacy school. But however, if we're telling ourselves the truth, majority of them, or some rather, do not deliver lectures in a very exciting way. This leads to a reduction in, um, a reduction in, um, sorry, this leads to a reduction in concentration of the students and ability of those students to retain information being passed down to them from the lecturers. Some lecturers are too busy for their students, and most especially, I talk of adjunct lecturers who take up lecturing jobs, knowing fully well that they will not be present to um, attend to the um, academic needs of their students. It creates a rift between the students and the lecturers where they can ask questions, needing for them to understand a particular material probably given to them properly. This, in the long run, would lead to it can lead to, it can impede their performance academically. Some lecturers are very apathetic towards the poor performance of their students. And I know most of us here have heard of the saying, A is for God, B is for me, and C is for you. It is so sad that any lecturer should glorify the suffering of his students. And as teaching as I know it to be, should be something, should serve as a feedback mechanism where you Cross, where you check yourself to know if there are holes or any problems in your teaching techniques that need correction. So I do not see why any lecturer should glorify in their students' suffering because it is, it is really uncalled for. I'm not done, sorry. Lastly, or rather furthermore, I want to talk about the fact that lecturers, some pharmacy lecturers in Nigeria do not actually sharpen our critical thinking skills. Rather, we are made to cram. For instance, when we are giving open-ended 30 questions, all we do is go back to our hostels, look at the materials, and try to um, assume wherever they put the hyphen, German questions, yeah, 30 questions, I'm sure most of you here can relate to it. And you come back and then you find out that you have no in-depth understanding of the material. But you just know that this lecturer might ask questions from here. This leads to the production of half-baked pharmacists who, of course, past exams will have poor knowledge retained or the knowledge required for them to actually be standard pharmacists. Last, in conclusion, I'd like to say that according to John Scracken, there is a um, famous quote that he said that for every school, like for every school, to the end of this, in, for every school, um, the greatest asset is actually the personality of a lecturer. And also, I'll tell you a quick story because I still, I think I have enough time. Um, the first pharmacist, the first clinical pharmacist in Nigeria, Professor Nzebo Agowa, taught one of my favorite lecturers in Esut. His name is Pam Gerald Goldwater. He always said, I would never be, I would be ashamed of many things, but being a pharmacist would never be one of them. I was moved by this very small quote because I felt, oh, I was motivated and I felt, what would make this man be so interested in the honor of becoming a pharmacist? And that small quote, as, as small or as little or as, um, uh, or as um, unreasonable as it sounds, really changed my life. So that's the importance of having great teachers. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, there's, there's this thing they say on the streets. They say, don't, don't blame, is it don't blame the game? Or don't blame the play, don't blame the player. Blame the game, right? <laughs> that was quite uh, bold. But you didn't have much choice, right? It was the topic that I was giving to you. So let me put that disclaimer out for you. <laughs> All right, so to counter present, we have... Contestant number 17, Obede Israel. You're welcome. A round of applause for him, please.
All right. Good day, esteemed judges, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and my co-debaters. Standing here is Obode Israel from Delta State University, and I'm opposing the notion that says lecturers deserve the bulk of the blame or responsible for any iota of inefficient or poor academic performance of pharmacy students in Nigeria. Now, first and foremost, according to the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, according to the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, there are over 23 accredited pharmacy schools. And also, according to World Health Organization, based on the eight-star pharmacist model, every qualified pharmacist is a communicator, is a teacher, is a long-life learner, and is a researcher. This implies that majority of our pharmacy lecturers are pharmacists, and therefore these four um, qualities that, um, that are highlighted here are actually the good qualities of a, of a good lecturer. So this implies that pharmacy lecturers are actually good lecturers. So why putting the blame of um, poor academic performance on pharmacy lecturers. Now, also, research, research has found out that research has found out that pharmacy students um, factors affecting the poor academic performance of pharmacy students are related to one um, are related to students in such in a way that pharmacy students that were less anxious during examination had poor performance. Also, pharmacy students who could not manage their time well also had poor performance. Also, pharmacy students. Um, perception about the pharmacy course and course materials also add what um, also were implicated in the academic performance. Now, here are some of my facts to support my claim. Now, one is first of all lack of effective time management. Now, as a popular saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Now, pharmacy students all have all what it takes to plan effectively. Now, every pharmacy student during your first year of entry into the pharmacy school, you all have your handbook, which contains all the course contents that you have to do throughout the um, um, pharmacy school. So you have a lot of online resources, um, Google, YouTube, to, to actually um, um, to prepare ahead of your examinations. So you don't have to, you, you, cannot, you cannot actually blame the lecturers for your poor academic performance. Now, also, um, the law of five P says, Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Now, pharmacy students fail to prepare on time. Now, you see, majority of pharmacy students in today's era, you see pharmacy students in today's era engaging themselves with content creation, online um, social media. Now, this in overall will actually affect the academic performance of pharmacy students. Please, now, let's maintain some decorum, please, so that we don't... Also, the um, lack of motivation and focus. Now, pharmacy students... Um, they tend to lose focus. Um, and research has also found out that um, from these studies, it will show that 37.7% of the respondents picked pharmacy school as their first choice. And out of this 37%, only 20% actually chose pharmacy based on self-motivation. And just as the popular saying goes, motivation is what gets you started. Now, this simply means it is motiv motivation that will drive you to you reading um, appropriately and studying better. Okay? And also, we have here that school has come. Now, it's actually a common notion in Nigerian students and also among pharmacy students, that school is calm, which, which, which actually subconsciously affects the student's um, motivation and drive towards academic success. Okay. Um, also, um, other factors are also implicated in the poor academic performance of pharmacy students. Now, you have your poor academic background of pharmacy students. I've actually met a pharmacy student, 200 level pharmacy student, asking me why is carbon atom tetravalent? How come? Um, so, this um, poor academic performance will actually eventually lead out to. Um, Poor, poor academic background eventually leads to poor academic performance of pharmacy students. Also, the economic status of the nation. Now, you can see in Nigeria as a whole, where there, whereby there is hardship, financial hardship, the ease of transportation, and also the learning aids that are not available for us to learn. This will um, overall have um, implicated in what? In um, the, the academic oh performance God. of pharmacy students. Now, I will leave you in the bottom line is actually that um, it's actually a common human behavior to blame, to blame others for their own lack. But in my own opinion, I feel that students should have the power to take ownership of their education and also work towards their academic success. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I saw a lot of um, people protesting when he mentioned use of social media and all that. You see, I mean, it took these guys almost like 15 minutes to log on to, so they don't know the, the, the first thing about <laughs> social media. That was just a joke. <laughs> All right, so we move on. The next topic before us is the use of marijuana in, and its products should be legalized 
in Nigeria. Now speaking for this motion is Oche Ada Paulina. Paulina, you're welcome. A round of applause for her, please. Number 19. Standing on existing protocol, I'm by name Ochada Polina, a student of Amadou Bello University, Zaria, and I'm here to support the motion on the legalization of the use of marijuana and its products in Nigeria. Oh. Before I do so, I would love to begin with the words of Liban Bray. He said, as I quote, things aren't good or bad in themselves. It is what you do with them that makes them so. One of the mistakes people make, one of the mistakes people make whenever the legalization of marijuana and its products is mentioned is that they tend to focus more on the recreational use of marijuana and its high tendency for abuse. But they fail to forget that when marijuana and its products are used in the right dose, the right amount, and for the right purpose, it has many effects in life of men and their environment. I wouldn't want to go forward without giving a brief introduction of cannabis. That has marijuana, also referred to as, my, of, also referred to as um, Indian hemp. It's gotten from the plant cannabis sativa, which has over 120 active constituents, of which the two most important ones are cannabinoid and nine delta and nine delta tetrahydra cannabinoid. Now to my main topic of discussion and debate, which is why legalization of cannabis. Why legalization of cannabis? There are so many reasons of which I'll be mentioning a few. One is that evidence-based evidence practice has shown the effectiveness of marijuana and its products in managing several conditions such as alcohol, such as alcohol and drug addiction. We have the management of epilepsy, chronic pain, cancer, and even HIV in the management of the weight lost in HIV patients. And in, 19, in June 2018, the Food and Drug Administration approved the use of medication, which is known as Epidiolex, which is a marijuana product for the management of two rare, severe, specific types of epilepsy. And it has shown that there have been an improvement and that by leading to a decrease in the mobility and mortality as a result of this epilepsy. Now, research opportunities. You all agree with me that it's known that marijuana is a Schedule One controlled substance. Therefore, there are very strict conditions on research work in this area. But once it's legalized, researchers and lecturers tend to have more access to it because there will be a decrease in there will be a decrease in the protocols. Therefore, there will be increase in research work, and more will be known about marijuana and its use. Um, my next point is the economic and industrial benefits. Now, it's known that due to the fact that marijuana is not legalized, there is a, it has no controlled cultivation, processing, and sales. But when it is legalized, we tend to have so many people who have license, who are licensed, they'll be able to take part in this, leading to the increase in revenue, job employment, and then the increase in standard of living, and also to be an, a chance for the increase in the gross domestic products of Nigeria. Now, what else to take a look at this? We are all aware of the Sustainable Development Goal, which the United Nations tends to be achieved before 2013. I strongly believe that once marijuana and its product is legalized in Nigeria, we will play our own quarter to make sure that this is achieved. Strongly, the SDG Goal 3, which is Good Health and Wellbeing, Industrial Innovation and Infrastructure, which is SDG Goal number 3, and so many other of the 17 SDG Goals, Nigeria will play its part to ensure that as a nation, we are going to be able to achieve this. Now, I wouldn't want to leave here without making you know that upon legalization, we all have our role to play to ensure that there's controlled 
and monitor use of marijuana, and then the supply chain and drug distribution of marijuana is really controlled to ensure that the aim of legalization is achieved and maintained. I would love to conclude by saying legalization of cannabis, that's marijuana and its products, would help to lead to increasing research opportunities in various aspects, spanning from medicine, agriculture, public health, and also leading to more understanding on the disease. And then uh, the former governor of Ondo State, in person of Rotimi, could see the potency and the importance that we can achieve by legalization of marijuana. I believe we all can do this if we ensure that it's being legalized. Thank you very much. Thank you. So to speak against the motion, we have Aminu Moham. Sorry. What is the name? Number 15. His name is not on the board. Number 15. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges, humbly I appear before you for the purpose of a debate topic which says that they use humbly I appear before you for the purpose of a debate topic which says that the use of marijuana and its products should be legalized in Nigeria, which is actually no. Prior to that, in every gathering, there must be a group of individuals which were used to be given a good gesture. The panel of judges, my fellow co-debaters, distinguished and ever attentive audience, a very good afternoon to you. My name is Amin Muhammad Bello from Faculty from School Sciences, Gombe State University, and I will be opposing the topic. Here is the outline of my presentation. As a way of introduction, marijuana has been defined as the dried leaves, power, power stems, and seed from the cannabis sativa or cannabis indica plant. And then according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary of English, it has defined legalization as a process of permitting something that was previously prohibited by the law. So marijuana has widespread name, but commonly as a context of Nigeria, here in the southern part of the country, it is called Igbo. In some places, Ojo or Ijo. And then in the house island is called Wiwi and Kaya. And it has so many bioactive compounds of over 100, 400 bioactive compounds of which they include plavonoids, terpenoids, and some other pet uh, petrochemicals. And then it also interacts with the indigenous tetra uh, cannabinoid system in the body, that is cannabinoid 1 and cannabinoid 2 receptors, thereby producing the psychotic and the effect of the drug. And then also a study conducted in the South has shown that these uh, 6,000 states have the highest number, according to United Office of Drug and Crime. And then also, Uruguay and Canada are the only ones that pro uh, provided the non medical use of this drug. Despite the search from 2019, 2010 to 2019, we still have uh, about 9.4% in South Africa and Central Africa for the use of this drug. And then what are the negative effects that has been associated? While my uh, proponent have said that it has medical benefit and other things, treatment of lung cancer and respiration, please remember that it can impair respiratory issues, cognitive impairment, psychotic disorders, and then excavate these risks can also affect this. A study conducted between 1999 to 2002 produces this, that most of the first visit line uh, psychiatric hospital visit in Edo State were caused by this cannabis abuse. And the what are the societal impact? So many studies have been conducted. That is why even from the end, we have United Office of Drug and Crime. This is to tell you that crime has been associated with drug use. And we can see that we have about 44% of drug-related cases made each year in the U.S. as a result of this cannabis use. And then it can have so much increased crime rate and then influence use. What if today our youth have so much access to this? That is to say, on the access, uh, on the edge access to this marijuana. So it can increase, uh, so it can reduce social cohesion and their social availability. 
Then we can have the economic concentra- uh, considerations. When our proponent is talking about taxation and revenue generation, let me remind you that the cost associated with regulating this taxation, the economic policy, can outweigh the potential benefit of legalizing it, as we can see by so many studies. And the individuals who use cannabis, they are four times likely to experience accident while driving, and they also are being fired at their job because of the associated use. So it could stray resources and it can hinder overall development of our nation. And then Nigeria is also a signatory to so many treaty obligations. Example, we have the single drug convention of 1961. We have Indian hemp degree and other things. So by avoiding this, Nigeria can be able to uh, get out of the treaty obligation. And this can affect Nigeria relationship with other diplomatic countries who have strict anti-marijuana use. And this will affect development and then it will affect Nigeria in order to control the trafficking and then the use of this drug. Regulatory challenges can be very difficult in this case, so therefore we should not talk about it. Um, legalization in Nigeria, we have so many, like example, NDA, General Bubo Maro, who is the DG of the NDA, uh, CEO, have won against narcotic economy, against Nigerian security and challenges. We have also National Assembly, which bill was sponsored by Honorable Benjamin Kalu, and then later the bill was stepped down for further consultations. We have now as a way of conclusion that rather than legalizing, we should focus on harm reduction strategies, educational, and we have support more for more research of this bioactive compound. These are some of my major references. Legalizing Adrijuana? No. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Okay. So we move on to the next topic. But before we do that, uh, I'd like to crave your indulgence to acknowledge the following individuals who have taken out time from their busy schedule to be here with us this morning. Uh, Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Farm Kotun Oluwadeda of uh, the HOD of Orile Agege General Hospital. (laughs) You're welcome, Ma. Thank you. Uh, then we have uh, pharmacist Dr. Ugo Chinyere Ofudu, who is representing the Chairman Association of Lady Pharmacists of Lagos State, Dr. Afsat Adeshino. Pharmacist Ofudu, you're welcome. Okay, you're welcome, ma. Uh, then we also have Dr. Sorry, pharmacist Chika Sunday, representing pharmacies. Uh, Zimedia Martins of DH Ikorodu, all the way from Ikorodu. You're welcome. And then last on my list at the moment is Professor Virgil Onyishi is the Dean of Pharmacy, or Dean of Pharmaceutical Services, UNN. And I'm told that he actually came for this event on his own bill. So please, a, a resounding round of applause, please. Thank you very much, sir, for the support. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so we move on with um, the presentations. And next, the topic before us is, should chemotherapy and radiation be used in the treatment of cancer? Does it do more harm than good in terminal stage? To support this motion is Princess Chinwe Obona, contestant number 11 is one of the contestants out of there there's somebody there's a vacant seat there okay went out okay all right contestant number 11 please Considering how common cancer is, most of us may have had family members who have dealt with cancer at one type or the other. Do you think chemotherapy and radiotherapy 
We do more harm than good in the terminal stage. Good day, distinguished professors, doctors, pharmacists, my, in, my impartial panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, co-debaters, and everyone present here. Standing before this August assembly is Ogbona Princess Chinwe from the Faculty of Pharmacy, Madonna University. I would like to support the motion on the topic which says, should chemotherapy and radiotherapy be used as treatment on cancer? Do, does it do more harm than good in the terminal stage? Now, according to World Health Organization, According to World Health Organization, cancer can be defined as a generic term for a large group of diseases that affects many parts of the body, whose defining characteristics is the, is the rapid creation of abnormal cells that spread to different organs of the body, which is termed as metastasis. Now, any intervention that is used in the management, prevention, and treatment of such um, diseases are called anti-cancer therapy and can be in front and can be in form of Radiotherapy, immunotherapy, surgery, hormonal therapy, and the rest. Now, based on my topic, I would like to focus more on chemotherapy and radiotherapy. But it is important to note that surgery from researchers have been used as the primary intervention for most cases of cancer. And this is also noted by Mayo Clinic researchers. Now, chemotherapy, what is it? It involves the use of a wide variety of drugs to stop the growth of these cancer cells and to also kill them. Red sorry, radiotherapy is the use of high, use of high doses of radiation, either the X-ray or the gamma rays, which are mostly used to kill these cancer cells or to stop their proliferation of these cells. Now, most of the drugs that can be used as chemotherapeutic agents are cisplatin, pasi, taxel, doxorubicin. Most of these drugs are, are of high importance in the society. Now, let's look at terminal stage cancer. What do you think terminal stage cancer is? According to the National Cancer Institute, terminal stage cancer has been defined as a cancer that cannot be cured nor controlled. Now, if a cancer cannot be cured or controlled, what do you do? What is your next option? You place them on palliative care, which involves the use of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. If, I'm so sorry, most of the slides I'm, I'm trying to eliminate are based on the staging of cancer, based on the risk factors, which I would not mostly want to depend on because that's not where my topic is lying on. But uh, looking at staging of cancer now, staging of cancer, like the, um, terminal stage cancer, um, if there is no cure, the best thing for you to do is to place your patient on palliative care because at, at terminal stage cancer, there is a lot of pain associated with this. There's a lot of discomfort that your patient will go through. So rather than allowing them because they think that chemotherapy has a lot of side effects or they feel that um, because of my hair loss, I cannot, um, I cannot continue with chemotherapy. Let me just go home and die. That is very, that is medically not right. And no doctor or no pharmacist will encourage you to go home knowing that you have terminal stage cancer without trying to prefer solution. That is what we as pharmacists are. We prefer solution even if we know that this cannot be cured. Now, what are the benefits of using chemotherapy? Now, from researchers, they have said that after weighing the risk to benefit ratio of using chemotherapy and not using this chemotherapy, we see that there has been alleviation of the excruciating pain that is, re that is related to this um, terminal stage and also the Alleviation of the distressing symptoms that is associated with it, improving quality of life, increasing the length at which the patients might survive. Now, will you tell me that if you had a loved one that is in, has terminal stage cancer, you would prefer to allow the patient to die faster than to take that 5% chance of increasing the time you spend with this patient? So I feel like, or in my opinion, based on my research, chemotherapy would not do more harm than good based on the fact that it will increase the quality of life of that patient and increase the chances that you have to spend with that patient. I believe we all love our, I believe we all love our family members. No one wants to see our family members die in a very excruciating, in excruciating pain. So I believe chemotherapy and radiotherapy does more good than harm in um, terminal stage. Thank you. All right, moving on to speak against this motion is, uh, this reminds me of uh, pharmacognosy. 
the surname. Chizoba Vivian. Let me skip that. <laughs> Contestant number 14. Contestant number 14. A round of applause for her. Please. When you come out here, you tell me how to pronounce your name, please. I didn't want to. So let me pronounce the name. H-U-C-H-E. Oh. E-H-U-C-H-E. -E okay. <laughs> God didn't create cancer. He created cells. And just as he created humans, few humans became evil. Same thing with cancer cells. Some normal body cells became evil and multiplied on their own. But in the case of terminal cancer, we have very large numbers of cells undergoing uncontrolled growth and replication. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Please, for the want of time, permit me to stand on the already existing protocol. My name is Iheji Chichizaba Vivian, a pharmacy student at Chukwe Mekao Domeko Chukwe University, Anambra State, and I'm presenting a very interesting topic. Chemotherapy and radiation should not be considered as a method of dealing with terminal cancer. According to WHO, cancer accounts for approximately 10 million deaths in 2020, and there are four stages of cancer. Stage one, we present the stage where the cancer cells begin to grow. Stage two and stage three, we present the stage where the cancer cells begin to spread into lymph nodes and surrounding tissues. Why stage four? It's my major interest. Stage four is the advanced stage of cancer or the terminal stage of cancer. In this stage, you have cancer cells that spread to the organs and the systems of the body. There are various treatment strategies for cancer of which chemotherapy, radiation therapy, is important in this topic. What's chemotherapy? Chemotherapy is the use of specialized chemical, emphasis on specialized chemical, to kill fast-growing cells in the body. While radiation is the use of high doses of radiation to kill or shrink cancerous cells. So the side effect of the, uh, radiotherapy depends on the particular area of the body you use them. If you use um, radiotherapy on the brain, you're going to experience issues with memory and experience confusion. Why the side effect of chemothera um, chemotherapy? We all know that chemotherapy is a systemic treatment and because it affects fast-growing cells. Cancer cells are not the only fast-growing cells in the body. We have other fast-growing cells of the body like the hair follicular cells, the epithelium of the skin and the epithelium of the GIT. Even the bone marrow cells, all these are fast dividing cells. So you have cancer patients experiencing hair loss, anemia, nausea and vomiting, skin problem, among others. According to the International Association of, for Hospice and Palliative Care, what is terminal disease? Terminal diseases are diseases that have no cure. Emphasis on no cure. Meaning the clinical focus for terminal cancer has shifted from curing cancer to improving the patient's quality of life and extending their survival rates. Now, the main aim in terminal cancer is to be to improve the patient's quality of life. Please, I want us to have this at the back of our mind. We are not looking at curing the patient's cancer anymore. We are looking at how to improve this patient's quality of life because obviously the patient is going to die. So since chemotherapy and radiation are not specific for cancer cells, they kill, other, they kill other normal cells of the body. And terminal cancer patients are in stage four of cancer. They've gone through stage one, they were strong. They've gone through stage, stage two, they were strong. They've gone through stage three, they were strong. And now they're in stage four. Why help them? Why help them to die faster? Why give them chemotherapy that would destroy the normal cells of their body? Which is why research has shown that halting chemotherapy in terminal cancer patients can improve the patient's care quality and minimize health care costs. Further research has shown that patients who have spiritual leaders pray for them or pray by themselves, or patients who even have family visits or have maybe for a few bucket lists. We, we all watch movies where they tell terminal cancer patients, oh, you have a list, make a list. What do you want to do at the end of life? 
or patients who have strong therapeutic alliance with their healthcare team, they have better quality of life at their end of life compared to patients that are hospitalized in the hospital receiving chemotherapy or radiotherapy or patients who even worry more. In comparison with these two, you see that patients who have all this they are former experience better quality of life at their end of life. Oh, we're Africans. Yes, we're Africans. We love natural things. So God has helped us to, God has given us so many natural things like the sour soap. It has, research has shown that consuming five grams of sour soap leaf can help in the healing of colon cancer. We also have natural alternatives like the turmeric. They named the dogoyaro. Yes, dogoyaro is very good. I'm not saying, I'll, I'm not saying take this patient home and allow them to die. I'm saying place them on natural alternative. Leave chemotherapy alone. These patients have just less than 30 days to live. So why allow them go through the pain, through the whole pain of, oh, chemotherapy, this, it's weakening, it's tiring. Nobody wants to see their loved one on the sick bed. Allow them go home to their families to stay. They can take carica papaya, papaw leaves. You can make it for them as tea to be drinking every morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So where are we? Okay, so the next topic up for debate is industrial pharmacy practice projects the image of pharmacy practice more than community pharmacy. So, uh, presenting for this motion is contestant number seven. Yeah, yeah. I should just. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is OKK Princess Kamsi. Permit me to stand under the existing order of protocols. My name is OKK Princess Kamsi from the University of Lagos, here to support the motion that states industrial pharmacy practice projects the image of pharmacy practice more than community pharmacy practice. Honestly, I do not believe that this should be an issue that is up for debate because we know what the recent exit of GSK and Sanofi has done in terms of medicine availability and medicine security in Nigeria of today. So this is the outline of my presentation. Then, pharmacy practice relates to everything about drugs. According to Scarhill, Active, and Baba in 2017, is the science of everything that involves the producing, the discovering, the dispensing, reviewing, and, uh, and of anything involving medications to improve patient health outcomes at individual and population levels. This is a brief timeline of pharmacy practice in Nigeria with the first industrial pharmacy, May and Baker, coming to Nigeria in 1944. Some specialties in pharmacy practice include, aside from hospital pharmacy, aside from industrial pharmacy and community pharmacy, there's also hospital pharmacy, there's the administrative pharmacy, there's pharmacy research and academia, whom I hope to be a part of one day. And industrial pharmacy practice entails, is a part of pharmacy practice that entails the research, the development, the production, the packaging, the quality assurance, the marketing, and the sales and distribution of pharmaceutical goods. So it's not only drugs we're talking about here. Meanwhile, community pharmacy practice provides the public with access to these medications as they need. And note that these medications are even the medications that are provided by the industrial pharmacy. So why industrial pharmacy over community pharmacy? Why am I taking this stand today? One, Industrial pharmacy practice strongly influences drug innovation by sponsoring, by providing resources, both human resources, time, money, to provide cutting-edge research treatment to improve the lives of individuals. You don't see the community pharmacies providing research in that aspect by going to the lab and doing all of that. Number two, industrial pharmacy practice ensures drug availability and medicine security. Because if the industry does not provide drugs for sales and procurement to the community pharmacy, there's not going to be anything on the shelves of the community pharmacy. Take, for instance, during the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a lot of drug scarcity. And you notice that when you go to community pharmacies, everything was increased in price because of scarcity. That's economic demand and supply. And also, the drugs were not available. And there were, there were, there were instances of fake drugs because of this drug availability, which ties into my point of medicine security. 
Next, industrial pharmacy practice ensures drug safety. Due to the presence of the quality assurance and quality control departments, the industrial pharmacy ensures safety of medications. The community pharmacy does not have this department in their, in their establishment. So even if there's a lapse in the industrial pharmacy, take for example, the my picking case of 2009, the community pharmacy does not have any way of seeing these contaminants because they don't have the quality assurance mechanisms available. So any lapse in the industrial pharmacy is going to have a ripple effect in the community pharmacy practice, which shows you that industrial pharmacy practice is more important. Is it has a better image. It provides the image for pharmacy practice essentially. Number four, local manufacturers ensure the av availability of medicines. Take, for instance, the difference in price between Emzoparastamol Emzo and GSK Panadol. You would see that cost of therapy is a very, very important part. It cannot be overemphasized in pharmaceutical care. Because no matter how useful a drug is, no matter how beneficial it is to the body, if the patient cannot afford it, the patient cannot derive any use from that medication. Then lastly, Industrial pharmacy ensures diversity in its practice. Industrial pharmacies are, have a wide range of skills. They practice in a wide range of departments, such as regulatory and compliance, the drug research and the development, production, quality assurance, and compliance, and even the common ones that we see, the medical sales rep and detailing reps. This shows that there's a lot of versatility. The industrial pharmacist has a wide, like, can pivot his career in any direction that he wants to. Compared to the community pharmacist, who mainly interacts with patients and the public. And in conclusion, I would just like to state that no matter how good the image of a house is, no matter how good the front of a house is, if the foundation it is built on is shaking, then it's, it's, not, it's really of no use. So drugs are the heart of patient care, and without industrial pharmacy, there will be no drugs. And if there are no drugs, there is no community pharmacy. There's not, there's not going to be anything on the shelves of pharmacy. Thank you very much. These are my references. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> feels, it feels like we're in Camp Lou. <laughs> Home advantage. <laughs> All right, to speak against this motion, we have Aino Oluwatosin, Deborah. Aino Oluwatosin, Deborah. Contestant number 21. Contestant 21. Good day, prestigious deans of different faculties of pharmacy here. Ladies and gentlemen, every member of the Shalina Healthcare, I am here to speak against the clip. My name is Anon Luatosin Deborah from the prestigious University of Illori, and I'm here to speak against the claim industrial pharmacy practice projects the image of pharmacy practice than, communi than community practice. So yes, what is pharmacy? Do you care to know? I guess you should. Pharmacy was derived from the Greek word pharmacon, which means medicine. And pharmacy is a profession, is a science. Of course, you will agree with me that pharmacy is a noble profession, right? Okay, an act of preparing, standardizing, dispensing, and proper utilization of drugs and other related product information for the benefit of the community, of the, of the society. Of course, we have different aspects of pharmacy practice. We have industrial community, we have academics, we have regulatory, we have administrative, and we have research. Community pharmacy, what is community pharmacy? According to the Pharmacy Council, of Nigeria. Community pharmacy practice deals with supply of medicine according to prescription, patient counseling, dispensing, and promotion of health related programs. Why industrial pharmacy deals with development, production, quality control of drugs, and other drug related, another drug -related products. So, yes, community is the heartbeat of the pharmacy profession. A recent study that was conducted shows that of, we have 72% of pharmacies that work in community pharmacy compared to the 3.04% that work in industrial pharmacy in Nigeria in a population of over 200 million. And it has also shown that there are over 3,800 registered community pharmacy in this country. And, 
and we have over 130 pharmaceutical industry. So yes, here is a case study I present to you. Mrs. AJ, a 56-year-old woman, has just visited this pharmacy, and she requested for tab diclofenac 100 milligram and tab bibucap. Upon interaction with her, she said she take this Duke drug to resolve a stomach pain that she experienced occasionally. Tell me, is there any for the use of these two drugs in Mrs. AJ? Is there a drug therapy problem? Is there any for pharmaceutical care? Yes, there are so many roles that have been played by community pharmacy. Of course, you will agree with me that what makes it a community pharmacy is the presence of the pharmacist. So yes, community pharmacies, according to Walid et al. in 2016, it was recorded that community pharmacies are the first point of care staff for many people globally. Of course, you will tell me, even Shalila Healthcare can tell me that do they depend only on hospital to get their drug to the community? Of course not. You can ask them. They have a lot of community pharmacy that they have links to in order to ensure that their drugs are available and are accessible to the people in the community. And this accessibility has also ensured uh, ensure that patients have the power to manage some minor illnesses. For example, somebody who is diabetic, such um, a kind of person like that, we have access to his drug. We have access to basic things that he can use to check his blood pressure. And such person will have power over his or her health. Talking about the essential role, of course, there's patient-specific medication services. As we all know, we are different. Our genetic makeup are different. The, our, this, our skin color is different. Even our eyes are different. Everything about us is different. So yes, dispensing special, um, patient-specific medication in the presence of patient counseling, it helps to resolve drug-drug interaction, drug-food interaction. Also, community pharmacy is an integral part of public health. What is about public health? It has to do with prevention of disease. And yes, there is a global trend of pharmacies now being certified to, to give vaccination. And this has also helped to protect and promote community health. Of course, we know we belong to one community or the other. Yes, talking about pharmacovigilance, just like my other contestant says that there is no drug safety monitoring in, in community pharmacy. I will not accept that. Because even in pharmacovigilance here in Nigeria, we have what we call the med safety app, whereby you can report any form of drug adverse effects. My conclusion, why the drugs and medicine are being produced by the various pharmaceutical industry that we have in Nigeria? We know that the pharmaceutical care offered in community pharmacy, we help to reduce costs. We help to improve patient community engagement, provide drugs and other related services, and also to ensure research. You might, my other contestant said that there is no research that is being done. Of course, no. In a particular community, Thank you very much. Wow, a round of applause for all our contestants who have spoken so far. You'll agree with me that they've spoken very well. <laughs> well, we leave that to our panelists to, to decide at the end of the day. So we move on to the next topic, which says the presentation, a presentation to support the claim that government and not healthcare professionals promote interprofessional rivalry in Nigeria. To speak for this motion is Equezo Tuku Dubanya. Tuku Dubai. Sorry, Michael. You're welcome. A round of applause for him, please. Contestant 12, please. Good afternoon, my judges, my fellow students, and my audience. My name is Michael Okwazo from University of Jaws, and I'm here to make a presentation to support the claim that government and not healthcare professionals promote interprofessional rivalry in Nigeria. And to start with, what is interprofessional collaboration? It exists when multiple healthcare workers from different professional backgrounds work together with the patient, family, and community to deliver the highest form of care. 
why our inter, interprofessional rivalry is where we have competition and tension between these different healthcare workers, and this could be detrimental to both the patients and the healthcare system in entirety. Number one point of my of which governments have seen to promote this rivalry within the healthcare system, wage disparity and or equal, on, on equal salary scales. The government in its mode of payment have seen to highly favor a particular health professional than others, as highlighted by a work by Ms. Nora et al. This disparity has created a sense of undervaluement and resentment by other healthcare professionals. As you can be seen that in the mode of salary payment, the medical doctors are being used for e-commerce and while for cone health for other healthcare professionals. Number two, disparity in the mode of entry. In terms of entry, we know that the government has placed the healthcare workers for particularly for the medical doctors on an entry point of sal salary grade 11, salary grade level 12 as against 10 for other healthcare professionals. And this was not in existence about 30 years ago. Number three, the lack of class corporate practice. So government regulations with regards to this, with regard practices in the healthcare is a little bit vague and this has and this has um, created a, a, an avenue for overlapping of function and a sense of 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 of, of these workers feeling that another another healthcare professional is about to take their their own jobs in this whole in this um, in the healthcare system. Number uh, number four, limited investment in interprofessional education. So the government has put little resource with regard program that that uh, that encourages collaboration within the healthcare education, and we know that the healthcare education. Is where these young people who want to be professionals in the healthcare are being brewed for in terms of um, rivalry, in terms of um, above uh, the, the other healthcare um, worker. And at the end of the day, they end up in the same place carrying that kind of resentment with them. Number five, the lack of effective dispute resolution. We know that certain problems that have been arising in this healthcare in the healthcare in Nigeria has not been effectively managed by the by the government and this has continued to come up over and over and again showing that the lack of government in creating the right mechanisms in order to solve these problems once and for all number 6 favoritism in leadership positions as it can be seen that governments in terms of appointments to in leadership positions with regard to health in Nigeria has been skewed to favor a particular health professional as it can be seen even in a recent appointment by the Abia state governor the 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 the, the 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 individuals that are meant to man the health in the in, in the states are all favored to a particular um, healthcare professional, and this will continue to create this sense of resentment, this sense of inability of the government to give other people the feel to to showcase they have the ability to also rule and um and 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 also carry out health for um, health functions, and in conclusion we can. And in conclusion, government needs to carry, go, there's a need for government to carry out its role in ensuring that we don't have these problems in the healthcare system as it is seen as the big sponsor, the big funder of uh, the Nigerian health, um, the Nigerian health aspect and health sector. So therefore, government needs to do more in order to solve this problem within the healthcare system. Thank you. Thank you. To speak against this motion, well, apologies. Help me. Okay. All right. To speak against this motion is um, equal son, Olawale, Olawale James. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Esteemed organizers of this program, deans of various faculties, fellow contestants, Ladies and gentlemen, standing boldly before you today is the question of James from the Premier Faculty of Pharmacy or Bafemi Awolowo University in for State. I'll be here to speak against the topic. The government and not healthcare professionals are responsible for interprofessional rivalry in Nigeria. This is my table of contents. 
On the very first premise, what is interprofessional rivalry? Interprofessional rivalry is a locus that has eaten deep into the fabric of our nation, Nigeria. And this is the conflict or competition among healthcare professionals, whereby the doctors, the pharmacists, and everyone within the healthcare system do not come together to achieve that one goal of achieving patient-centered go um, care. How it all started? I want to crave your indulgence as we ride down the me memory lane, the story of Professor Oliko Eransom Kuti. He was a pediatrician. I believe it was again, a pediatrician. And also um, the professor at the College of Medicine, Unilag. Yes, he was appointed as health minister in 1985 under General Ibrahim Babagnida regime. He revolutionized the healthcare in Nigeria. But then that was the genesis of interprofessional rivalry in Nigeria because it boosted the reward system of, of the doctors and also enforced that the role of chief medical director has to be that of, of, of the doctors alone. I put it to us today that yes, he was appointed as health ministers. But yes, I said again that he's a doctor and he only went there to outplay what he has conceived in mind before he achieved that position as a medical doctor. The managerial nature of the same role, before this time in 1985, healthcare, um, healthcare administrators were trained to direct their fears of hospital. A research also says that 70.4% of participants of a particular study disagree that leadership roles in hospitals should be restricted to just one profession. Some doctors do agree with me that they do not even have the requisite knowledge to adequately di uh, um, direct all the affairs in the hospital. Hence, the increasing crisis among healthcare professionals in the hospital. Furthermore, lack of collaboration among healthcare professionals. WHO specifies that collaborative practice happens when healthcare workers from different professional backgrounds work together to deliver the highest quality of care to patients. It pained me without my feelings when my opponent came up the other time and I was speaking about collaboration. Collaboration in the healthcare sector has to do with everybody within the healthcare system coming together to achieve one goal. That is the role of healthcare professionals ourselves and not the government. We are not here to say that what is the genesis of interprofessional library in Nigeria. We are saying who are those promoting it? And I put it to us that today that yes, oh yes, healthcare professionals are, are the ones um, promoting interprofessional library in Nigeria. Unionism as a, as a cause of interprofessional library. Professional associations often prioritize the interest of their members over that of the broader healthcare sector. They use their power to influence government policies and to ensure that the interests of their members are put right before everybody in the healthcare sector. So tell me, this is actually the fault of the government. My opponent also came out the other time I was speaking about the salary structure. Let me remind us that at a particular time, everyone was based on the same payroll until the, um, the, the, the Nigerian Medical Association came out and pulled out from that structure and said that they want a different uh, um, scheme for their payment because of their um, expertise or because of, of the years they spent in university. This is so sad. And we should not be here to say that the government are the ones responsible for this. When the healthcare professionals themselves are the ones promoting this interprofessional rivalry. On divine roles among healthcare professionals, the expanding roles in the healthcare system has, is often viewed as threat among professionals, where one party feels that the other party is encroaching into their traditional roles. All of these are, all of these are never and can never be the fault of, of the government because we are supposed to come together as healthcare professionals, the doctors, the pharmacists, and everybody to achieve that one goal. Furthermore, rivalry between physicians and pharmacists, the emergence of family doctors. When this program came, people believed that pharmacists should focus on drug dispensing while the doctors should focus on assault patient centered care in the hospital. In conclusion, it is time for us to acknowledge the unsettling truth. Healthcare professionals and not the government is responsible for interprofessional life in Nigeria. These are my references. Thank you very much. Okay, so if 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 Unilag was Camp Nou, yeah, if uh, Real Madrid, <laughs> they also came with supporters here. <laughs> that was contestant number thirteen, and contestant thirteen. Okay, all right. So I've been I've been instructed. Uh, we'll take a five-minute biological break before we continue with the rest of the topics. So thank you very much for your audience. We'll be back. We'll reconvene in five minutes.
having been an entrepreneur for the better part of my adult life, having been to do with merchants and customers has been my daily routine for the better part of five years now. A day, there are days I do want to give up, but my passion keeps me going. I do have my days where body pain attempts to weigh me down, but Ibu kept always with me to shrug off the pain on a regular. My name is Zether and this is my Ibukep story. <laughs> My people, no allow sore throat and cough kill your voice and dabaru your deo. Finish them with chateau lozenges with the gidigba to pafuka cough and sore throat with better fresh breads. Chateau lozenges contain five natural active ingredients like ginger, turmeric, beleric, liquorice, and mint. Think natural. Think chateau. Natural sore throat reliever. If symptoms no grigo after three days, consult your doctor. Chateau lozenges. Chale, committing to work in Accra on a daily basis is no mean feat. I get to spend a bulk of time in traffic on a weekday and still get to join my dance team for our regular daily dance rehearsals. Yes, dance is an aspect I love to keep alive. I need to be at the 100% all the time. So whenever the back pain hits as a result of sitting for too long or busting various dance moves, Ibukep is always with me and my go-to back pain body combatant. My name is Akonjo and this is my Ibukep story. Having to wake up as early as 5 a.m. to start my day in preparedness for the marathon lectures that sometimes last till 6 p.m. takes a huge toll on my body. I then have to mix it up with studying. And honestly, if it wasn't for Ibuka that is always with me, handling all these constant headaches caused by all of this wahala, I don't know how I'll be able to cope on this. My name is Chisum and this is my Ibuka story. Driving Uber in the city of Lagos is an extreme sport. There are days where I have to drive 20 out of 24 hours, and this takes a huge toll on the body. You know, easy. I also do this much to ensure that I am able to survive in this city and provide for my family. I often take my rest, and Ibu Cap is always with me when the inevitable body pain strikes. My name is Dari, and this is my Ibu Cap story. One night hiking is very hard for me. Every day I need to call someone to come for my shop to buy anything when you want. My evil can always there with me. One night evil can I ain't a new koi or she. If they help me, one body fail me. My name is Hassan. Now my evil can story be this. Good morning, my people. It's another day to get out there. Go after your dreams. Head out for sustenance. Work for the future. Life can be good, bad, or painful. For those painful periods, you always have a partner to count on. Hippocap is your go-to partner that keeps pain away. Ibucap is always with you, giving you the desired relief from pain.
Ibucap Capsule, always with you to beat pain. Marketed by Shalina Healthcare Limited. <coughs> <coughs> when you need it most. Shall two lozenges. How do you respond to a burning sensation in the chest that usually occurs after eating your favorite meal? I respond fast with polygel. Well, I'm not selfish. I pass it up. I experience art bumps and I respond fast with polygel. I am not selfish, so I pass it on. I often experience indigestion with growling stomach and I respond fast with holy job. I am not selfish either, so I pass it on. I experience heartburn because my baby bump gets bigger, pushing stomach acid upwards, but I respond fast with holy gel. When heartburn robs you of the comfort of eating your favorite meal, respond fast with Polygel, which has the highest acid neutralizing capacity. Polygel antacid, soothing relief from heartburn. Ah, uh, what is that? 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 I will mean, just give me that malaria drug while I take the last time. Oh, you mean Salate! Na correct anti malaria drug begins. In fact, Salatem, na the real deal. No let malaria come out action for your body. Nakam Shalatem, a brand of anti-malaria that contains Atemita and Lumefantrin. Shalatem, na medicine from Shalina Healthcare Nigeria. Shalatem, them get them for every age group them. Make you remember to always take Shalatem with food. If symptoms no change after three days, go see your doctor. <laughs> I The world of boxing is in shock. The highly acclaimed champion, Mr. Three Blows, has fallen ill. Mr. Three Blows has experienced malaria symptoms. Will he be able to deliver the knockout performance we've come to expect? Will he be forced to withdraw? Mr. Three Blows, you know how much I don't bet for it? I can't stand up with you. I'm going to go today. Oh, yeah, kid. Make you use a sharp, sharp. Salate, be too sure. Mr. Three Blows. And Lazo. Mr. Three Blows and his fans celebrate victory. Thanks to Charlotte M. Anti-Malarial Drug. Salate, Salate, yo. Charlotte M. Knocks out malaria in three days. Neck pain and being a mechanic is like five and six because the work requires a lot of energy. I have to always be ready for any problems that a customer can bring because my family has to feed from engine to exhaust, tire to battery. It costs neck pain for me, well, that's now why my ebook app they always deal with me. In fact, it's in my pocket right now. My name is Natunde. And this is my ebook app store. Having been an entrepreneur for the better part of my adult life, having been to deal with merchants and customers has been my daily routine for the better part of five years now. Ah oh dang, there are days I do want to give up, but my passion keeps me going. I do have my days where body pain attempts to weigh me down, but Ibu kept always with me to shrug off the pain on a regular. My name is Zether and this is my Ibu Cap story.
years old when I saw this friend of ours just punching and kicking and I'm in the uniform okay wow that guy does karate you know so we approached him and he became our first teacher so he has long stopped karate but I still continue because I mean I'm very passionate about it I'm fifth degree in black belt the deeper you go into the training the more self-control you have in fact, there is a saying that says that to win a thousand battles without a single fight is a true way of karate. Sometimes though, you get hit and you get pain, and a lot of times you have to take some medication to ease up those pain. I use Shalin as a book up. It's extremely effective. And a lot of my colleagues use it as well. It works, and that's why we use it. So I can say with help from Shalina, I'm able to do what I love, pain-free. I think I was probably about 15 years old when I saw this friend of ours just punching and kicking and I'm in the uniform, okay, wow, that guy does karate. You know, so we approached him and he became our first teacher. So he has long stopped karate. But I still continue because I mean, I'm very passionate about it. I'm fifth degree in black belt. The deeper you go into the training, the more self-control you have. In fact, there is a saying that says that to win a thousand battles without a single fight is a true way of karate. Sometimes though, you get hit and you get pain, and a lot of time you have to take some medication to ease up those pain. I use Shalina as a book up. It's extremely effective. And a lot of my colleagues use it as well. It works. And that's why we use it. So I can say with help from Shalina, I'm able to do what I love, pain free. How do you respond to a burning sensation in the chest that usually occurs after eating your favorite meal? I respond fast with polygel. Well, I'm not selfish. I pass it up. I experience art bombs, so, and I respond fast with the I am not selfish, so I pass it on. I often experience indigestion with growling stomach, and I respond fast with whole job. I am not selfish either, so I pass it on. I experience heartburn because my baby bump gets bigger, pushing stomach acid upwards, but I respond fast with holy gel. When heartburn robs you of the comfort of eating your favorite meal, respond fast with holy gel, which has the highest acid neutralizing capacity. Holy gel antacid, soothing relief from heartburn. <laughs> My people, no allow sore throat and cough kill your voice and dabaru your day. -oh. Finish them with chateau lozenges where they gidigba to pafuka cough and sore throat with better fresh breads. Chateau lozenges contain five natural active ingredients like ginger, turmeric, beleric, liquorice, and mint. Think natural. Think chateau. Natural sore throat reliever. If symptoms no grigo after three days, consult your doctor. -oh. Chateau lozenges. Tale, committing to work in Accra on a daily basis is no mean feat. I get to spend a bulk of time in traffic on a weekday and still get to join my dance team 
for our regular daily dance rehearsals. Yes, dance is an aspect I love to keep alive. I need to be at the 100% all the time. So whenever the back pain hits as a result of sitting for too long or busting various dance moves, Ibukep is always with me and my go-to back pain body camber dance. My name is Akonjo and this is my Ibukep story. Having to wake up as early as 5 a.m. to start my day in preparedness for the marathon lectures that sometimes last till 6 p.m. takes a huge toll on my body. I then have to mix it up with studying. And honestly, if it wasn't for Ibuka that is always with me, handling all these constant headaches caused by all of this wahala, I don't know how I'll be able to cope honestly. My name is Chiso and this is my Ibuka story. Driving over in the city of Lagos is an extreme sport. There are days where I have to drive 20 out of 24 hours, and this takes a huge toll on the body. You know, easy. I also do this much to ensure that I am able to survive in this city and provide for my family. I often take my rest, and Ibu Cap is always with me when the inevitable body pain strikes. My name is Dari, and this is my Ibu Cap story. One night hiking is very hard for me. Every day I need to go someone to come for my shop to buy anything when you want. My ebook is always there with me. One day ebook is now in a tad and you call she. If they help me, one body fame me. My name is Hassan. Now my ebook story begins. Good morning, my people. It's another day to get out there. Go after your dreams. Head out for sustenance. Work for the future. Life can be good, bad, or painful. For those painful periods, you always have a partner to count on. Hippocap is your go-to partner that keeps pain away. Ibucap is always with you, giving you the desired relief from pain. Ibucap Capsule, always with you to beat pain. Marketed by Shalina Healthcare Limited. <coughs> <coughs> when you need it most. Shall two lozenges. How do you respond to a burning sensation in the chest that usually occurs after eating your favorite meal? I respond fast with polygel. Well, I'm not selfish. I pass it up. I experience heart bumps and I respond fast with polygel. I am not selfish, so I pass it on. I often experience indigestion with growling stomach and I respond fast with whole job. I am not selfish either, so I pass it on. I experience heartburn because my baby bump gets bigger, pushing stomach acid upwards, but I respond fast with holy gel. When heartburn robs you of the comfort of eating your favorite meal, respond fast with Polygel, which has the highest acid neutralizing capacity. Polygel antacid, soothing relief from heartburn. Ah, bro, I shaggy the action, man. Hey, action, no day to do. Now, my little What can I help you? Sister, 
this malaria I won't kill action for my body. I mean, just give me that malaria drug while I take the last time. Oh, you mean? Salate! Ah, na correct anti malaria drug with this. In fact, Shalatem, not the real deal. No let malaria come out action for your body. Nakam Shalatem, a brand of anti-malaria that contains Atemita and Lumefantrain. Shalatem, na medicine from Shalina Healthcare Nigeria. Shalatem, them cater for every age group them. Make you remember to always take Shalatem with food. If symptoms not change after three days, go see your doctor. <laughs> I The world of boxing is in shock. The highly acclaimed champion, Mr. Three Blows, has fallen ill. Mr. Three Blows has fallen ill. Will he be able to deliver the knockout performance we've come to expect? Will he be forced to withdraw? Mr. Three Blows, you know how much I don't bet for it? I can't stand up with you. I'm going to DJ. Oh, yeah, Tim. Make you use that sharp, sharp. You too sure. Mr. Mr. Three Blows and his fans celebrate victory. Thanks to Charlatan, anti malarial drug. Charlatan knocks out malaria in three days. Neck pain and being a mechanic is like five and six because the work requires a lot of energy. I have to always be ready for any problems that a customer can bring. Because my family has to feed from engine to exhaust, tire to battery. It costs neck pain for me when well, that now why my ebook app they always deal with me. In fact, you get my pocket right now. My name is Natunde. And this is my ebook app store. Having been an entrepreneur for the better part of my adult's life, having been to deal with merchants and customers has been my daily routine for the better part of five years now. Ah dang, there are days I do want to give up, but my passion keeps me going. I do have my days where body pain attempts to weigh me down, but Ibu kept always with me to shrug off the pain on a regular. My name is Zether, and this is my Ibu Cap story.
I met the new MD and a few other persons there. We also, I can see chairman of um, Ahab there. I may not be able to see everybody. But I saw my, I saw my teacher somewhere, a former teacher, in the chairman of Napa. I saw Professor Mrs. Uh, Femi Oyewo. Oh, quite unique. But I'm, I'm happy. She's strict, but you can see what the strictness has produced in me. I really want to appreciate the young men and young women who are here. You know, I especially went to where my students are, University of Benin, and uh, to identify with them. But before I got them, I saw Abwa. They had a, a lash around them so you could identify them. And um, the future belongs to us. The future belongs to you and me. Let nobody ever despise your youth or say you can't make it. Wherever you find yourself, whether here or outside, make a difference. I had a job in Chicago in 1983. That's in 19, 1993 when I finished my PhD. But I chose to come back. I'm not saying you should behave like me, but wherever you find yourself, make a difference. Don't complain. If you keep complaining, you will never grow. And I'm confident that what Shalina is doing at their 48 uh, years of existence in Nigeria, they will continue to encourage the young people here. And at the end of the day, we are confident we can build the pharmacy prefecture, the pharma environment, where you and I will be relevant. Nobody should ever relegate us to the background. I told us some people some things, and I will still mention it here. Wherever you find yourself, be at the table to discuss about the lunch. Don't be the lunch. If you are not part of decision making, they will take decision on you, and you will have nothing to benefit. And for you to be part of decision makers, you have to distinguish yourself. And I believe you can. God bless us. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, as I was saying earlier, um, I want to introduce some of the management team in Chalina Healthcare who will be joining Prof uh, in cutting this uh, 40th anniversary cake. All right, so um, I've already introduced, although in this no introduction, pharmacist uh, Kolonjo Alaro, and next to him is the head of demand generation for institution and the cardiovascular team, and the person of Dr. Kiran Prakash, and next to him is uh, the HR, Human Resources, uh, Madam Amina Akisumbo, and uh, of course, the man in the middle there, he needs no introduction. He's an accurate timekeeper. <laughs> and the person of uh, Mr. Chuba also. So all these individuals will be joining Prof. As he invites some of our very um, important personalities who are also in the audience right now to join him in this occasion. Please, could all the chairmen of various technical group jump, come and join me, please? All the all the chairmen and the chairman of Lagos, please. I will want my secretary to join me, and of course, one special person to join me, Professor Mrs. Femi Oyewo.
guys are the as we spell Shalina. I hope you know how to spell Shalina. There's her too. So let's go. One, two, go. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and thanks to, to everyone. So we'll continue with uh, the second stage of the competition, rapid, um, sorry, presentations. That's the big fight, we call it. And um, we have eight presentations to go out of 24. Can we take the next topic? Technical control, please. All right. So the next, the next topic reads: political involvement of pharmacy students is a distraction to professionalism. To support this motion is contestant number 18. Contestant number 18. Good day, panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, uh, my fellow contestants, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I am Amos Sutiofilo Soluratola, representing the prestigious Faculty of Pharmacy, Olabisi Onobanjo University. And I am here to support the motion that states that political involvement of pharmacy students is a distraction to professionalism. Before I proceed, I would like to tell you the story of a friend of mine. His name is Tolu. Tolu is a final year pharmacy student of Olabisi and Obanjo University. And he was just summoned by the Alliance Progressive Party to fuel students' participation in the upcoming election, as well as peer campaign efforts in the faculty and its campus. Tolu is in a dilemma, politics or professionalism. This is the overview of my presentation. Now, what is political involvement? Political involvement is the voluntary participation of an individual, a mass public, or groups in activities that will influence, poli I mean, um, in activities that will influence public policy. Professionalism, according to the uh, Merriam Webster's Dictionary, defines professionalism as a conduct aim or qualities that characterizes or marks a profession or a professional person. What distractions as things that divert your attention away from what you are doing or your line of thought, thereby causing you to lose focus and concentration. Now, political involvement entails the following, but are not restricted to this. We have participation in political campaigns, voting in elections, 
participating in protests, serving and holding political offices, signing petitions, participation in town hall meetings and political strategic plannings, and going for political functions. The tenets of pharmacy includes the following, but are not restricted to this. We have dedication and commitment to excellence, altruism, professional stewardship, honesty and integrity, and respect for others. Now, political involvement and time commitment to excellence. We will all agree with me that excellence is an intentional thing that requires a high level of commitment and time. And politics also requires a high level of commitment and time. For you to achieve excellence, it is difficult to involve in politics alongside. For my friend Olu, he opted to, um, to get involved in politics and he did not have enough time to attend extensive um, sessions, he skipped classes, missed assignments. A study that was carried out by Babalola et al. in 2017 in the University, I mean, Ekiti State University, discovered that students had, most students involved in politics had a, um, a drop in CGPA from an average of about 4.2 to an average of about 3.3 after getting involved in politics, which goes to say no further that political involvement has a negative implication in not just the academic performance of students, but also professionalism. Political involvement and altruism. Everybody knows, or we all know as healthcare professional, that the center of our profession is patient care. And once you get involved in politics, you are now trapped in the um, you are now trapped in the mix of prioritizing whether your patients care over civic responsibilities. And involvement in professional, I mean involvement in politics make professional I mean healthcare professionals prioritize strikes over the care of patients. That is why you would have to lock the pharmacies and lock the hospitals because of strike and who suffers it? The patients. Political involvement breeds dishonesty, lack of integrity, of conflicting priorities and interests. According to a study carried out, study carried out in 2020, it was discovered that transparency, honesty, and integrity are missing in most political settings, which goes no further to say that involvement in politics breeds lack of transparency, lack of integrity, and lack of honesty. And the motto of our profession is nobility, dedication, and honesty. This further goes to show that involvement in politics shows that pharmacy students' involvement in politics would cause them to lack integrity, cause them to lack honesty, and cause them to actually lack dedication. One minute more. Political involvement also brings about emotional strain in individuals and professionals generally because getting involved in politically charged issues causes a whole lot of emotional strain, causes burnout, interpersonal conflict, and loss of respect for others. Also, it goes further to divide and dust professional reputation. Imagine going into the pharmacy and the same person with a rolled up trouser carrying placard yesterday is the same one that wants to dispense medications for your child. Would you let him dispense it? Um, to conclude my story, Tolu failed his final year, but thank God now he has graduated and is seeking internship. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of supporters in the house. To speak against this motion is Abdul Muiz Mohammed Ad Adam. Is it Adam or Adamu? Adam. Great. So you're welcome. Thank you, sir. The panel of the panel of judges, um, Shalina Healthcare officials, the invited guests and co-debaters. Good afternoon. My name is Abdul Is Muhammad Adam from Bara University, Kano. I will be presenting against a topic which says political involvement of pharmacy students is a distraction to professionalism.
Now, by way of introduction, when people think of politics, they think of a dirty game involving corruption and crimes. You see the negative thoughts. For most pharmacy students, they negatively perceive it as a distraction to their academic performance. You see the negative perception of even most of the pharmacy students. And that's why they don't engage in, uh, in, uh, in politics, both during their studentship and after graduation, most of them or some of them. In actual sense, when we say politics, it's anything associated with the governance of a country, area, organization, or even a profession. Therefore, the foundation of every profession and its means of succession is their politics. Let me quickly support this by telling you the reason why medical doctors dominated the healthcare system. It's basically because of their active participation in the healthcare politics of the country, thereby emerging as policy makers. And that's the reality. Since from studentship, you have the neg negative perception that this politics actually is going to distract my, 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 my academic performance. And after graduation, you think that it will actually distract your professionalism. And that's why you are not engaging. And that's why these people will actually make policies that will suit them. Now, let's look at some roles of politics in pharmacy profession. Various policies have been made to tackle drug abuse and misuse. A good example is the control of the major drug market in Kano states. The, the major drug market in Kano states was Sabongari market. That was, not, that, that was now relocated to a facility that was built by the government, and what, which was actually facilitated by PSN. You can see the, the current uh, various regulatory bodies have been created to superhead the profession and professionals, thereby making policies like PCN and so on. Advancement of practice from product-oriented to patient-oriented was only possible with policies, and that's why the advent of HAMD program you can see the benefits and value this PharmD program has brought to pharmacy profession. Let me link it up between policies and politics. When we say politics, these are the rules and regulations that are made by the government or the profession, or the profession which is actually made through politics. You can see the relationship. Now let's look at some of the benefits of politics to pharmacy students. Number one, it gives opportunity to join regulatory bodies of the profession and of the country and states. Of course, when you, are, when you are actually engaged in politics, you actually get to know people so that after finishing, you're actually going to be engaged in this. It presents so many networking opportunities, as I said, and job opportunities also. Opportunity to learn and participate in pharmacy legislations. Opportunity to meet with and offer advice on current uh, professional regulations. It provides so many mentorship or leadership skills. As we know, pharmacy students are, the potential, are actually potential leaders of tomorrow. Whether you like it or not, as long as you practice pharmacy pr profession, you are going to be leader. It improves pharmacy education by meeting with school authority. Maybe as PANS or SCG official, you are going to meet with the of school authorities offering advice that is, going to, that is going to actually improve the pharmacy education and the school at large. And I, I want to also cite you an interesting example is one of the person, one of the participants here that I personally know is actually the PANS, current PANS president of his local chapter. And he's now becoming the best coming from his school. And I'm sure so many of you have actually participated in various roles and positions in PANS, SUG, and so on. And you are becoming the past, the actually best out of you. So I would like to conclude my argument by saying that pharmacy students need to understand they are the future of the profession. And they need to be aware of the policies and issues regarding the profession. 
By ignoring politics, keeping oneself aloof from reality, and turning a blind eye to the prevailing situation in the profession, we are just doing injustice to the future of the profession and the county at large. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That was uh, contestant three. Okay. Contestant two, thank you. Okay, so we move on to the next topic, which states that the society, rather than healthcare professionals, especially pharmacists, is responsible for the proliferation of fake, adulterated, and counterfeit pharmaceutical products in Nigeria. To speak for this motion is Etim Joseph. As contestant 16. It was Margaret Chan, a public health expert and former director general of the World Health Organization, who asserted, counterfeit drugs are not just fake medicines. They are weapons of mass destruction, threatening the health and safety of millions. Good afternoon, panel of judges, my fellow contestants, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to support the motion which states that the society, rather than the healthcare providers, especially pharmacists, is responsible for the proliferation of fake, adulterated, and counterfeit pharmaceutical products in Nigeria. Counterfeit, counterfeit products include products with insufficient or no active ingredients. It also includes products with misleading labeling or packaging. And it is the society, in this case, the general public of Nigeria, that is responsible for its proliferation. Here's why. Number one, demand and consumer behavior. In Nigeria, a significant portion of the population struggle to afford essential medicines due to their low income levels. As a result of this, they tend to prioritize cost over quality when purchasing their medications, thereby turning to cheaper alternatives obtained from unregulated and unlicensed sources. The societal demand for these cheaper alternatives is what drives the market for counterfeit products. So it is safe to say that when the demand decreases, the reverse will happen. After all, it is as Katie Island said, a business exists solely to serve its customers. In summary, no customers, no business. Number two, technological advancements. The society's access advances in technology have made it easier for these scammers to produce and distribute fake drugs. These days, all kinds of, drug, all kinds of products can be sold online, can be purchased online, including pharmaceutical products. But yes, despite the ease and benefits of being able to purchase these products online, there is a significant problem due to the high, the high rate of fake products sold online. And this was confirmed by the World Health Organization in a study when they say that up to 50% of pharmaceutical products in the online market are fake. Number three is what I like to call the get rich quick syndrome. Counterfeiting life-saving medications is a lucrative criminal enterprise, part of a $431 billion worldwide fraud, according to an estimate by the World Health Organization. Turning like these life-saving medicines into life-taking poisons is very lucrative because of the high potential, the huge profit you can make within the space of a few months. And the society, in their desire to get rich quick, will venture into this business, thereby further driving the proliferation of this product. To get a sense of public opinion, I surveyed over 1,000 Nigerians from across all walks of life, asking if they agreed with the claim that the society is responsible for its proliferation, for the proliferation of fake drugs. Here are the results. From this, you can see that over 70% of the respondents agreed with this claim. Also, another poll I conducted shows that 60% of the respondents believe that pharmacists are actively tackling this issue. And this aligns with a recent case that happened in 2022, when NAVDAC, led by a dedicated pharmacist, Professor Moji Sola Adeyeye, arranged a culprit involved in the proliferation of fake drugs. Here is the story. I want you all to see with me that it was this man who, because he had customers willing to buy his cheaper alternatives, 
It was this man who, because he had, uh, he had access to advanced printing technology, helping him to replicate Maldox packaging. It was this man who, because he wanted to get rich quick, repackaged Emzo paracetamol tablets as sulfur dogs in pyrimethamine. It was the society, not healthcare providers, and definitely not a pharmacist who swore an oath to save lives that was responsible for these devilish acts. I know my opponents want to say pharmacists are supposed to regulate this product. But I put it to you that even the strictest regulations cannot, cannot solve this issue because the demand oh of this God. product, if the demand of this, if the demand for cheaper alternatives is not reduced. Dear brethren, I believe the evidence is glaring enough that the society, the society, not the healthcare providers, and definitely not pharmacists, is responsible for the proliferation of fake, adulterated, and counterfeit pharmaceutical products in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Violence. <laughs> All right. Chuba. <laughs> Next slide. So to speak. To speak against the motion is Ola Amuda Amuda Ola Amuda Ibukunlua. Distinguished judges, ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues, good day. I am Ola Amuda Ibukun, and I'll be answering the question, is the society the problem or the pharmacist? So this picture, I tell you playing the ostrich, representing the pharmacists who know that there is a problem. They know what the problem is, but they pretend that the problem is non-existent. So this second picture, you see two people sitting in abject poverty with a soul filled with precious gems, gold, and they have a means, the shovel, to dig through and find a solution to their misery, but they are waiting for some sort of miracle to happen. This is how I view the Nigerian pharmacy profession, waiting for an improvement of practice without actually doing anything to it. According to Isaac Newton, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, meaning nothing happens without a cause or a context. The, the society's actions do not happen in a vacuum. The pharmacists must be blamed. Let me take you on the right to see how the pharmacists are responsible for this substandard drug syndrome. Nigeria is currently burdened. Nigeria is currently bodied with the issue of Jackpot syndrome. Over 70% of registered pharmacists have been reported to practice out of, out of Nigeria. There is a lack of professional pride and patriotism. Everyone is on the case to seek greener pastures and on the pursuit of wealth. Over 70% of the drugs used in Nigeria have been reported as fake, although the DG of NAVDA gave a counter statement to us that, but truth be told, if 10 drugs are randomly selected, at least 6 will be fake. NASA reported that in 2011, 64% of the anti-malarial drugs brought in from Asia had no active ingredients. This is a colossal damage and a recipe to chaos in our health system. It is also said, if the profession, if the, if the, it, sorry, pharmacy education, it is the duty of every professional to educate the society on social awareness of substandard and counterfeited drugs. We don't count on how many pharmacists have been backed on this social awareness. It is also said that if the regulatory body is strong, the profession is protected. When last did our regulatory bodies carry out operations? The regulators are under pressure to, to ignore false unethical practices, all in the name of encouraging production. There's also the poor oversight of contract manufacturers. I don't give out these contracts. Pharmacies, even if not direct, and this premise is not registered under pharmacies. Drugs have become mere commodities. So that's common as cola not. Confectionary, cigarettes, all to the chagrin of the society. This is a, this is a direct affront to our pharmacy regulators. And there's also the conservativeness of pharmacies. Pharmacies are always found on the conservative side of life. This is probably due to our inheritance of training that has deprived us from mingling with policymakers. And as Al Capone once said, you are either on the table or in the menu. 
Now, there's also low standards of management, poor ethical practices, corruption. All this contributes to the manufacturing, distribution, and trade of these medicines in a means to obtain profits. Hospitals, pharmacies, they procure some cheaper, some standard drugs rather than the expensive, genuine ones. And there's also the poor remuneration of pharmacies, which causes them to be vulnerable to compromise as good quality drugs come as higher prices. I will now tell you that there are over 5,000 licensed drug distributors in Nigeria, and it's almost comical that none has a standard quality control approach. I mean, who does that in a civilized society? I will end by saying this. It is only through a crack on the wall that a lizard enters the house. The proliferation of substandard and falsified drugs in Nigeria is built, is made possible because of the cracks on the wall of a pharmacist's house. Sadly, where there is a vacuum, anything goes. So I'll go back to the question I asked in the beginning. Is the society the problem of the pharmacist? With this point, I'm sure you are agree with me. The pharmacists are the problem. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Without that is that is balancing violence. <laughs> you balance violence with violence. <laughs> but, <laughs> Please, a round of applause for them both again. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next topic. Engineering in a fast-paced medical world. Bioengineering courses are a necessity, sorry, are a necessary addition in the pharmacy undergraduate curriculum. To support this motion is Yere Prevail. Greetings, greetings, my distinguished panel of judges, my accurate timekeeper, my fellow contestants, and my wonderful audience. I am Prevail Yari from the University of Portacot, and I want to do a presentation on engineering in a fast-paced medical world. And I want to support this statement. Bioengineering courses are a necessary addition in the pharmacy undergraduate curriculum. So this is my outline, introduction, justification, conclusion, and my references. So as a way of introduction, I want to say what bioengineering is, actually. Bioengineering is a diverse discipline, and it is quite broad, very broad. And it simply involves the application of engineering principles to understand, modify, and control living systems. Okay? And the term bioengineering mostly is used interchangeably with biomedical engineering. So what does bioengineering do? What is it about? It combines the design and problem-solving skills of engineering with medical and biological sciences to advance healthcare treatment. Now, the big question is, are bioengineering courses a necessary addition to pharmacy undergraduate program curriculum? And the answer is yes. And I would love to support and justify my answer with the following reasons. One, innovation in drug delivery. We are, we are currently in a fast-paced medical world, and there are so many innovations in drug delivery. We have um, things like nanotechnology, implants, and this has fast improved healthcare. So pharmacists that are equipped with bioengineering skills can, can thrive, and they can contribute to the development of these novel drug delivery um, technologies. So it's quite important that pharmacists should should know, have a knowledge of bioengineering courses and it should be included in the curriculum. Um, my next point is industry relevance. We all know the requirements of the industry. It's very, very, um, it's demanding. And pharmacists, undergraduate pharmacists who take um, undergraduate um, bioengineering courses in the undergraduate program, they can meet the demands of the industry. Because the industry, industry requires interdisciplinary um, skills and expertise. And as we all know, as pharmacists, we are expected to know a percentage of what the doctors know, of what the nurses know, of what the lawyers know, and, and what even the agriculturists know. So pharmacy is an interdisciplinary um, practice, a profession. So um, on the, the pharmacy undergraduate um, curriculum should be modified, and bioengineering courses should be included. 
third point, expanded career opportunities. Ph pharmacists, um, undergraduate pharmacists that have taken bioengineering courses have the opportunity to expand their career. There are different things, um, um, aspects that they can go into, like biotech, biotechnology, tissue engineering. It's vast. So we are not streamlined to the traditional roles of pharmacists as um, uh, in community pharmacy or as dispensers of drugs. So, fourth point, we have emerging technologies. This is a fast-paced medical world we are talking about. So, the pharmacist, pharmacist must be positioned, they must be positioned to take part and to evolve as the world is evolving. As we can see, some of these technologies, we have um, new technologies like 3D printing of pharmaceuticals, the organ on the chips. Currently, we have ATM dis medicine dispensers. That's um, all-time medicine dispensers. And it's in use in the uh, developed world. So, but we've not started using those in Nigeria. So you can see that healthcare is a pharmacist must strategic, strategically place themselves in the position, in the place where they can utilize and leverage these technologies that are out there. So we don't become so absolute. As the world is evolving, we should evolve as well. well that is it. So, and finally, we have diagnostic tools and imaging techniques. Bioengineering is so important in this because one of our duties as pharmacists, we offer point of care services, in vitro diagnostics. So, the application of bioengineering finds its use here in the development of in vitro diagnostic kits and it's utilized here. Pharmacists must have understanding of this because if they don't have understanding of this, I don't know how they can gain relevance in the health sector. Because we need to know this. Like I mentioned earlier, we have to know a percentage of everything. And as a way of concluding, I want to say, incorporating bioengineering courses into the pharmacy undergraduate program is essential for promoting, for preparing future pharmacists to navigate the complexities of modern healthcare. And I must, I must remind us that as pharmacists, we are lifelong learners. We must always adapt. We must evolve as the world is evolving. Thank you very much. Thank you. Round of applause for him again. So that was contestant um, contestant five. Okay. So to counter the motion, we have Benita Chinedu Dimka. Greetings, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and greetings, my esteemed panel of judges. My name is Benita Dinkpa and I'm here to make a presentation against the claim that bioengineering courses are a necessary addition into the undergraduate pharmacy curriculum. And during the period of this discourse, I want us to keep a particular phrase in mind that what is beneficial is not always necessary. Now, let's understand what bioengineering actually is. Bioengineering is simply, according to Kosky and According to Philip Koski and Joyce in 2013, it is simply the application of engineering principles, health sciences, and mathematics to solve health problems or problems relating to the biological systems. Meanwhile, the pharmacy undergraduate curriculum comprises of components such as pharmacognosy, pharmaceutical chemistry, pharmaceutical technology, pharmaceutical microbiology, and clinical pharmacy, all together added to make a pharmacist or uh, to enable a pharmacist to give effective, effective pharmaceutical care. So while we may look at different reasons why it should be integrated, we should also critically assess that addition using the following reasons. One, time and resource constraints in the curriculum. Most of us here are pharmacy students or our lecturers as our as a panel of judges, and you agree with me that the pharmacy curriculum is already extensive and broad as it is. Now, imagine adding bioengineering, a very fast evolving course and broad course into the curriculum. What is very cumbersome for, for students? Actually, students who do not see that this particular course or the concept of bioengineering is important to their career choice. Just like my, uh, my opponent rightly made, uh, made us understand in industrial relevance, the fact that bioengineering is more applied 
this cost is more applied in pharmaceutical industries than it is in community or hospital or hospital pharmacies. So now imagine a student that is not going into industrial pharmacy and now you're teaching that student about bioengineering. It will be better that the, the, the student takes the course in postgraduate level or as an elective course. Just like the same way we have masters in business administration. Although it is very important, pharmacies that see it as important to their career choices take it in postgraduate level. And then secondly, time and resource constraints. And secondly, reduce focus on core competencies. Core competencies as given in the as core competencies as given at with uh, according to Sakai et al. in 2020, such as professional knowledge, personal skills, communication skills, and um, supply of medications, are things that the current pharmacy undergraduate curriculum can help the pharmacies to develop. So why add another broad course that is more more uh, more cumbersome into the course when the current curriculum can actually help us to achieve these things? By adding a course such as bioengineering, we may to have more engineering pharmacies than pharmacies who are pharmacies. And this is definitely not what we want to achieve. And then finally, lack of equipment and support from government. According to United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization, we are made to understand that there is a threshold of 15 to 20% budget allocation to education that is required to be given to um, for a fund that is required for education. But sadly, following this, um, following this trend, we have seen that Nigeria has not been able to meet that benchmark. In fact, just recently, in 2022, only 5.39% of the budget was allocated to education. This goes ahead to tell us that by the time bioengineering is integrated into pharmacy, we will face problems of funding that will not be there to give adequate equipment or adequate expertise for the training. And when these equipments are not there and they are integrating it into, into, our, into our pharmacy curriculum, it poses more problems because at the end of the day, we'll be giving out half big pharmacies that are not really trained with, the, with um, good equipment. Finally, I want us to understand that why bioengineering courses has different benefits in the case of drug delivery devices or medical devices, it is very important for us to understand that in, in, it's very important for us to understand that there needs to be a balance between our pharmacy core competencies and also specialized training in bioengineering. Thank you. Thank you. That was contestant 24. Huh? Take it back, take it back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, um, apologies for that. Uh, we're fast moving towards the end of this uh, segment of the competition. Uh, we have just about two presentations to go. The first, the first presenter of the last topic. Sorry, let's, I think we need to align. Okay. Two topics. Sorry, we need to be on the same page.
All right. So the next um, topic states that patent and property medicine vendors as PPMVs, as they are currently operating, are meeting with the expectations of their establishment. That's the reason why they are established. And to take us through this, arguing for this position is Oluchi Mary Precious. Please, a round of applause for this board. Good day, dear esteemed judges, distinguished um, audience, and my fellow contestants. I am Moara Oluchi, a student of the University of Nigeria in Suka. And I'm here to poignantly support the motion which states that patents and proprietary medicine vendors, as they are currently operating, are meeting with the expectations of their establishments. Now, the AMA ETA declaration in Nigeria is still far-fetched because healthcare providers, much more than other people, are attracted to the good standard of living urbanization provides, leaving rural dwellers to their fate. But of course, anytime you talk about universal healthcare coverage, they take the front seat and quote journal articles. However, there are people who care enough to go through the humbling and rigorous PPMV trainings and even practice under humbling restrictions. And today, thanks to the Shalina healthcare team, we get to talk about these lifesavers. Now, who are these medicine vendors? According to Ola Depot et al., they can be defined as licensed individuals or outlets that are authorized to sell over-the-counter medications and provide basic healthcare services in communities. Now, where were they established? According to the Poisons and Pharmacies Act, CAP 535, LFN 2004, they were established to address the loop-sided distribution of the very few healthcare facilities available in both the private and public sectors available at that time. Now, how are these medicine vendors meeting the expectations of their establishments? Firstly, by breaching the gap. Now, the first time I visited my village, I was ushered into the realities of the preponderant Nigerian masses. Community pharmacies that pride as being the most available healthcare providers were nowhere to be found. Hospitals were a far luxury. Assuming there was, assuming there was no patent drugstore, couldn't I have died from the diarrhea that welcomed me into the village? Now, this shows that these medicines vendors have successfully identified a gap in healthcare access to remote and underserved areas and have successfully breached that gap. Secondly, they provide value and affordability. Now, these medicine vendors provide a very rapid approach to healthcare delivery by building connections, which makes communications easier with their patients. And also, they know the economic status of their patients and are able to reflect this knowledge in a pharmacoeconomic stance. Now, the quality of drugs and interventions that they provide is regulated by the PCN and the National Association of the Patent and Proprietary Medicine Dealers, NAPMED, which sees to it that its members provide quality, safe, and effective drugs, as shown in the first row of this picture. Now, the medicine vendors also organize health promotional activities in a friendly environment where they get to have an understanding of the needs, the expectations, the most important quality of life factors, and the out outlook on health of their patients, thereby making um, decisions or choices that appeal most to them. Now, we talk about empathy a little too much in the classroom, but you don't show it if you don't connect more with your patients. Now, this is what these medicine vendors have been able to do over time. Now, some extra values that they provide are sensitivity, trust, and recommendations. Now, because in most cases, they are members of the community they serve and have a deep understanding of the value system and their cultures, they've been able to build trust in themselves and their interventions over time. Now, this gives them the opportunity to make recommendations on the improvement and discontinuation of practices that are inimical to the health of their patients, thereby improving their health-related quality of life. Now, can we say that this mental vendor have um, met their expectations. Of course we can. Now, as I've earlier stated, in remote areas where there is no accessible, accessible, available or affordable healthcare service, they've been able to bridge that gap. Also, they've exceeded their expectations by organizing health promotional and educational activities and have also discontinued practices that malign the health of their patients and they've added value to their practice by connecting with the individual patients. Now, in conclusion, most of the problems that recall in research on the effectiveness and competence of these medicine vendors borders more on poor regulation. Now, it is worthy of note what is to know that the, through the PCN, the Federal Ministry of Health, 
oversees the licensure, the regulation, and the sanctioning of these patents and proprietary medicine vendors. And despite the fact that the NAPMED has been shown through research to provide a cohesive framework for the regulation of these medicine vendors, they are yet to be integrated into the healthcare delivery system of the nation. As such, PCN and other health regulatory bodies in Nigeria are to be blamed for such problems. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next we have um, Eugene Chisholm to speak against the position. A round of applause. For Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, panel of just judges, my esteemed colleagues, and everyone present. I am Eugene Chisom from the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Namde Azikwe University, Anambra State, and I'll be running a presentation on the topic Patent and Proprietary Medicine Vendors, PPMVs, as they are currently operating, are meeting with the expectations of their establishment. And I'll be making my presentation against this claim. Follow me. Okay, we must have seen places like this in our neighborhood in our communities, these are patent medicine stores being run by patent and proprietary medicine vendors. Now, permit me for the purpose of this presentation and for the want of time, I'll be using PPMVs as they stand for patent and proprietary medicine vendors. Thank you. So now, who are these people? According to PCN, patent and proprietary medicine vendors are people without formal training who sell in pharmacy, who sell orthodox pharmaceutical products on a retail basis for profit. Now, we should also know that from the initial plan, they are usually the first point of contact for individuals seeking treatment for common ailments in communities where access to formal health care is limited. That was actually why they were established, to bridge that gap. Now... How do they operate currently? These PPMVs, their establishments, they may be small or large scaled stores that offer convenience, affordability, and accessibility of essential medicines and may be found along the streets in communities and in marketplaces. We should also note that they are licensed to only sell over the counter drugs and not prescription medicines. Now, with their current mode of operation, PPMVs do not meet with the expectations of their establishment due to certain reasons. But before we delve, delve into it, we want to ask what is the expectation of their establishment? Now, because they do not have formal training given to them, I believe the, the expectation of their establishment revolve around profit making. So whether they provide services or not, they are, the whole, everything they do is just in a bid to make profit. Now, what are, why are, what are the factors that make us to believe that they are not meeting with the expectation of their establishment? One is polypharmacy. Now, polypharmacy is multiple drugs. We are pharmacy students, most of us should know. And then, many PMVs do not consider the underlying illnesses of a patient before selling medications. Now, these patients may be comorbid. They may have comorbid states. And when drugs are given to patients who are comorbid without medication review, multiple drugs, it can lead to polypharmacy and then drug therapy problems for the patient. We also have poor monitoring and regulation of practice. Permit me to reiterate what my fellow contestants from 
Abuad said, it is true the crack on the wall that the lizard gets into the house. Now, these um, PPMVs, they have an umbrella body, NAPMED, that's the Nigerian Association for Patent and Proprietary Medicine Dealers. And now these people are tasked with the responsibility of monitoring and regulating the practice of these PPMVs. But now they do not perform their functions optimally, and that is a crack on the wall. And it is true that crack that the lizard, which is the Patent and, patent and proprietary medicine vendors, when they do not offer, when they do not render quality service or observe good practices, and it, it is a detriment to the health of the consumers who would be taking those drugs. Now we have intellectual property. Since no formal training is given to these vendors, the much, the extent to which a vendor would know would depend on what was taught to him or her by the trainer and the extent of and the extent of the experience garnered during practice and this can lead to variation in practice from different patent and proprietary medicine vendors we also have the issue of poor storage of drugs now we should also note that drugs are drugs should be stored in a cool and dry environment most of our leaflet is a, an additional label we have on our drug and drug products stored in a cool dry cool and dry environment away from sunlight, moisture, all of that. But now, in PPMV establishments, we can barely find fans or air conditioning systems and the shelves are usually overstocked. This can call for drug deterioration. Okay. This is a picture of an overstocked patent medicine store. Then we also have the problem of differences in healthcare needs. Now, some patients have certain healthcare needs, probably allergy, tolerance to some drugs or comorbid state. And now we should require them to take certain drugs rather than the other. Some patent and medicine vendors may not be buoyant enough to stock up a variety of drugs to meet all the patient healthcare needs. Then we also have problems with supply chain disruptions. Many PPMVs do not have knowledge on supply chain, when to stock, when to reorder, cold chain, distribution and are usually faced with problems of stock out and can lead to needs for uncompromised quality of drugs. Thank you. These are my references. All right. So um We are moving to the last presentation. <laughs> so we're moving to the last presentation in this stage of the competition. Uh, our last two contestants who are here to do their presentations are contestant number one and contestant number 23. And they'll be coming up uh, in a jiffy. Uh, but while we wait for, for that to happen, um, I usually like to tell little stories. So I have another little story to tell. And about the experience of um, a pharmacist with a patient. Sorry, one moment. Okay, sorry. Um, I had a little distraction, so I won't get to tell my story after all. We're moving on to the last presentation for this stage of the competition. Uh, I want to assure you, I know that we, of course, we have our schedule and all that. I want to assure you that after this last presentation, everything else is going to move 
very fast. The presentations are just a part of the competition that actually is time engaging. So we're going to take the last topic. Technical. So the last topic for this stage of the competition states that a compulsory experiential learning period should be instituted before young pharmacies can set up their own pharmacy. Speaking for this motion is Arafat Osara Abubaka, contestant number 23. Uh, we we need Dr. Idoko. Please, we, we need your concentration, sir. The, the panelists, please, we need your concentration. <laughs> Professor Godaro, please, we need your concentration, sir. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. So, just the last two now. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Arafat Pusara Abubakar from University of Meduguri. I will be here to support the motion who says a compulsory experiential learning period should be instituted for young pharmacists before they can set up their own pharmacy. The regulation and expanded scope of practice of pharmacy combined with the advent of new drug technologies have created the opportunity for pharmacists to relinquish their traditional role in drug distribution system. This assertion is why we have experiential training. Point number one. Experiential training makes pharmacists to transit from the role of mere dispenser of drug to manager of medication therapy. For a pharmacist, it shouldn't be. No. You have to act as a manager of medication therapy. How is it done? First, creation of patient database through interviews, communications. This data is gotten through subjective data or objective data. Second, assessing of therapeutic problems. Then, after assessing, uh, assessing the therapeutic problems, then therapeutic goals. After that, documentation. Documentation of the patient data. Number two. Experiential training makes the pharmacist to acquire skills that, that makes him thrive in the future models of pharmacy. In the future models of pharmacy, we have two main components, which is, number one, affordability. Affordability means pharmacoeconomics, which has three components. Cost utility analysis, Cost minimization analysis, cost benefit analysis. Number two, to make up to the patient expectation. How do we that, do that? By competence. From the word of Apostle Selman, he said, competence. Yes, sir, competence. And the Selena Health here will agree with me from their three components affordability. Availability and quality, which summarizes my point. Number three, experiential training should begin early in training of pharmacists because it leads to overall curriculum development, skills, and practical experience, which is required when setting a pharmacy store. Those skills that pharmacist will have a wide variety of skills coming from patient counseling. We are the pharmacovigilance, 
we are there. This is state management. We are there. Patient monitoring. We are there. One minute, man. Point number five. I like this point. You know why? Because it captures that the pharmacist who undergoes experiential training will have the sole responsibility and accountability of drug therapy outcomes. I like it because it fulfills the definition of pharmaceutical care by strand, which captures three main components. For, uh, practice, responsibility, and accountability. In conclusion, the necessity for experiential training programs cannot be underestimated due to its multidimensional and multi-sectorial relevance in practice of pharmacy profession, not only in Nigeria, but the world at large. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. So we'll take the last presenter for the day. A round of applause for contestant number one. She's going to be standing against the motion. Good day, the lady, ladies and gentlemen, the esteemed judges. My name is Ada Tubonko, a representative of Cardinal State University. And today I'm standing in opposition to the motion a compulsory experiential learning period should be instituted before a young pharmacist set up their own pharmacy. First off, we start off with the introduction. Who is a young pharmacist? This is someone licensed by PCN who is who is below the age of that five years and not up to five years after graduation. Now, the following point of mine would be used to back up this claim. First off, to effectively own and manage a pharmacy, a pharmacist must possess essential skills that encompasses the scope, the responsibility, as well as community pharmacy management. I would like to reiterate that this pharmacy, in this context, pharmacy is talking about retail pharmacy or what we commonly call the community pharmacy. And now these crucial areas are extensively covered in the pharmacy university curriculum, which provides pharmacists with the necessary competency. That's in terms of experience and in terms of knowledge. Now, from the diagram, you can see the various aspects of community pharmacy, from medication, dispensing, down to health promotion, and as well as the different responsibility of these pharmacists, patient-centered care, medication management, and health advocacy. Now, just to mention but a few, this is how pharmacy education provides coverage for all these aspects. Now, I would like to dispute the fact that the uh, facts are one of my um, open and said. He said that pharmacies are mere dispensers and we move to, need to move into medication management. Now that is why the university curriculum has incorporated that. We are already in, we are already equipped in this aspect. We are not the curriculum does not just provide the theoretical knowledge, it also provides practical aspects which provide comprehensive knowledge and hands-on experiences. Now, these aspects include the sideware, the world rounds, internship, and including NYC. And when we have a from the, uh, program, you could also include the one-year clinical round. Now, this, in this aspect, pharmacists work under the direct supervision of an experienced pharmacist, and they have one-on-one -on -one contact with healthcare, healthcare uh, professionals and the patient. Now, this will equip and refine their skills skills in terms of this area, pharmaceutical care, logistic and supply chain, especially when you're working in the community pharmacy or as well as the hospital pharmacy where you are intended to restock your make inventory control and also as well as in financial management. Now, consequently, a BFAM degree graduate is considered proficient in this domain. So when we add an ex additional experiential learning period, it could be seen as being duplicative and redundant. Now, this will make pharmacists lose interest, and it will question the competency of this pharmacist who has undergone this pharmacy education training. 
Moreover, the Pharmacy Council of um, Nigeria mandates a minimum qualification for setting up a pharmacy. Now, this is the BPharm degree. Now, this requirement underscores the assertion that a pharmacist with a BPharm degree is adequately qualified with the necessary experience and knowledge to establish a pharmacy. Also, the PCM mandates a continuous developing program for all pharmacies to maintain their currency and also to and their competency. So, as even as much as we are prof professionals and um, we are uh, in dispensing our uh, professionalism, we are still mandated to undergo developing programs. So as when we add an experiential uh, learning period, it's more or less unnecessary because it's like we are repeating the same process again. Then lastly, in terms of entrepreneurship skills, we know that in entrepreneurship, it strives on innovation, bringing new ideas and ingenuity of individuals. Now this would drive positive change and advancement in the pharmacy patient care and pharmacy practice. Thus, when we institute a compulsory experiential learning period, it will stifle this entrepreneurship and then potentials for innovation will be impeded. Now, as well as development of novel approaches that is required to address healthcare challenges. It will also discourage young pharmacists and slow their pace of progress, especially those that are already, uh, already skilled entrepreneurs. We know that most people, they are actually trained as entrepreneurs even from their probably from their home or outside the curriculum. So in conclusion, the motion to institute a compulsory experiential learning period for young pharmacists before owning their own pharmacy imposes poses a lot of limitations and challenges that outweighs any potential, uh, potential benefits. It downplays young pharmacists' competency, it questions the adequacy of the pharmacy curriculum, it hinders entrepreneurship and it's a waste of time. Rather, uh, regulatory bodies should focus on, on the alternative pathways that will enhance the continuous growth of pharmacy, such as entrepreneurship training in pharmacy school. Thank you. Wow, a round of applause for all our contestants once again. You'll agree with me that uh, they've done justice to the topics that was presented to them. And now the um, board or the panel of uh, judges have the arduous task of uh, collating the results. Um, we will be, Femi, where is Femi? Yeah, so we're going to put the results together. Um, I should mention that the results of each stage is cumulative, right? You've had the MCQ. Now we finish the presentation. The next stage is the rapid fire. And what's going to happen is that the scores for presentations will be added to the previous scores for your MCQ and then to the scores of your rapid fire. And it will be on the basis of these three results that the top five contestants will be picked by the judges. And it's the top five contestants that will go for the final stage. And then we will declare who the winner for the grand finale is. So, we are moving to the next stage of the competition, which is the rapid fire. For me, this is about the most exciting, exciting part of the competition. Because this will not only test your wit, it will also test your, your reflexes. Right? So, there are sets of questions that will be presented to you. Only one of you has the opportunity to answer the question, and that will be the person to first press the buzzer. So the first person to press the buzzer will have the opportunity to answer the question and then score additional points to whatever you have scored for the MCQ and the presentation. However, if you press the buzzer and you get the question wrong, then your, it will be deducted from the score you already have. Points will be deducted from the, from the scores you already have. So you have to be extra sure that you are 100% certain of the answer before you press the buzzer. Do you understand what I just said? Yeah, so be sure you know the answer 
press the buzzer as quickly as possible, and then you give your answer within three seconds. Failure to produce the answer within three seconds, you forfeit that opportunity, and then someone else takes the opportunity. Are we on the same page? All right. So, uh, technical, are we ready? Okay. Okay, so before before now what we've done is we've used them um what's it called? Physical hardware buzzers. Right, that would be right in front of a contestant, and they would press on it. But we had um, we had challenges with that. We had to keep consulting um, VAR. For those of you that were here last year, <laughs> we had to keep consulting the panelists. But in order to forestall that, what we are doing today is we are putting it online. We are using a a software that allows only one person to press the buzzer at a time. So it's the fastest hand that will get picked. I know computers don't go wrong, right? So we're depending upon te technology today. So the software is going to recognize the first person to press the buzzer, and that will be the person who has the opportunity to answer yes. the question. Yes. Software is so good that even if two of you press at the same time, it will recognize the fastest. Might just be some um, centiseconds or milliseconds. Right. So, please, uh, while they are trying to settle, just go to your Google Play Store. Type multi buzzer. Google. Go to Google. What if you go to Google? Buzzer. Ah. What do you do to that now? Because someone. Oh, what? Or if you, what if them? Um, multi buzzer, yes. Multi M U L T I B U W Z E R. M U L multi buzzer. Where is it? Multi. Where is the multi there? Multi buzzer. Just this uh, connection. That's why I would have projected it. No results. Ah. Um, because you have to use it on the phone there. Multi buzzer. Eh? Google Play Store. Ah. Um, sorry. Only on the phone. Multi buzzer together. Multi multi buzzer together, please. One word. One word. Multi buzzer together. 
Nineteen is okay. Multi balls are together, just like this. I download it. Just click. You have to register individually. If I give you the link, then it's okay. you can use your browser. Put it on your browser. Uh -huh. Please use your browser and check for multi browser to give you the link. Uh -huh. Exactly. This is what it will take you to. Right. Now to join, you now use your seat number as uh, your seat number to join, right? But he will be the one to provide who will provide the listing for you, the password. Right. That's what they are trying to sell to you. Just go to your browser. Name, case of the name, use your seat number. Uh, 18, 20, like that. Just sit there. Oh, my name is Ruben Kodi. Okay, we should be back up in uh, in a sec. Instead of your name, sit number. Room code will provide. Just a little, a little technical glitch. Again, like I said before, you know that. You know, abroad, they don't have witches and wizards, so nothing interrupts the airwaves. But here, you might just be crossing somebody's uh, backyard with your electromagnetic wave, and they get annoyed that you are disturbing them. And they're in a jiffy. Okay. Okay, so you know I was about to tell you a story before, so I think this might be a good time. Uh so there's this story about this uh patient who went to and when she asked the pharmacist for cyanide, the pharmacist was wondering why she needed uh cyanide. She said that I needed to poison can you come here asking me to give you something to poison your husband? She said my Eventually shows him a picture, and the picture was a picture of her husband with the pharmacist's wife in an inappropriate position. And in response, the pharmacist says, oh, you didn't tell me you had a prescription. <laughs> so another story about the pharmacist and the pharmacy technician this time. Anytime a patient came, this was a committee pharmacy setting too, so the sales assistant more or less. You know, anytime a patient came, and most of the time, you know, patients, especially in Russia, they're very impatient. If you don't give them their drugs on time, they, they walk away, they get angry, infuriated. And the pharmacist warned him to say, look.
at once. And so the patient says, do you have water there? He takes the water. He takes the entire pack of laxative. And he's standing by. Uh, what's happening here? Why isn't he leaving and all that? It says, uh, well, he came for a cup medicine. I couldn't find it, so I gave him a uh, laxative. He said, how can you give him a laxative when he wants cup He said, uh, but God, the thing is solving his problem. He said, how is he solving his problem? Have you heard him cough since he took it? <laughs> he said, no. Of course, you know why he didn't cough. <laughs> So he was forced to hold his cough <laughs> because something else would have happened if he dared to cough at that point in time. I said, no, you are not going to become men of honor. And it's a great, you know, slogan. It's a great, you know, acronyms for us. Just like my brother, you know, we were classmates at Tife, the share, national chairman of ACPN. You know, just as he had admonished you, I want to admonish you that, you see, no matter what, Nigeria is still a very good place to practice. You know, I want to tell you this. Yes, nobody can stop anybody from jackpying. But, the, but what we've always been seeing is that as we were trying, to, some of us, are, are, some of, you know, professionals are trying to leave Nigerians. We found out that foreigners are trying to come to Nigeria. So, and in most cases, you know, they said we are not seeing what they are seeing. So, another thing that I want to leave with you is that from now on, you must start to determine and you must work towards it. Just like you have said that in the, la in the next three years, what do you want to become? You know, you must, in the next two, three years, decide where you want to practice and what you want to do. Are you going to focus on being hospital pharmacist and, you know, become an expert in hospital pharmacy practice? Or is it the community that you want to... So, you know, one of the things that usually happens to young people is that... You know, they must have taught us, you know, I, let me leave you with this story. Before I graduated, what the, you know, the opinion or the impression that I have is that, you know, they, it's like, I don't know how it got to us, but it's like, immediately you become a graduate pharmacist. The sky is the, is not even the limit that everything just comes to be. You, you know, we saw medrefs coming to us then, and they were coming to our classes with cars. So we thought immediately you become a graduate pharmacist. The nice thing is to start driving in cars and do all that. You know, that's a wrong impression. And maybe that's what drives so many of the young ones to unethical practices. Please, you know, we are not many, you know, compared to our cousins, the doctors. So it behoves on us to actually, you know, continue to practice ethically and continue to intervene even in medical, you know, uh, you know, uh, when there are medical crises. Because like I always tell people, actually the pharmacist, as you are debating today, should actually be the head of the, you know, medical or the health team. 
Thank you very much. Don't look down on yourself. You know, don't start your profession with inferiority complex. Because that's also one of the things that we have also found. Like some of you are displayed here. You know, you must come out as, you know, superior member of the health team. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, right away now, we are almost set. Right? We'll go to the rapid fire round three quickly. Right. You're all already in the multi buzzer room, right? Uh, you have your, you already imputed your uh, seat numbers. Your seat numbers, you've been imputed. All right. So, please, let me allow our technical director to just brief you on how to go. Please, Maxim. Please talk from where you are. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Oh, it's afternoon already. Sorry. Um, so if you were here last season, you will realize that uh, we use uh, manual buzzers. And there were some uh, difficulties that we experienced. So for that reason, we try as much as possible to step up. Um, so this year, we are doing something different from that. Um, so these are the guides to the online buzzers. To the right of your screen are the steps you have to follow. So first thing you have to do is, by the way, I hope everybody have a very strong internet on your phone, all the contestants. Go on, they are waiting for so the code. They if you are connected, please go to Google. Um, you type, you search for multi buzzer. After that, the very, it will open another screen for you. Which is this screen you are seeing? The room code is. Sorry. Stop the room code. Sorry. Oh. Yes, this is the room code. So please. So you can enter this as the room code. Okay. Enter the room code W P M A F M, capital. In capital, that's the room code. Is everyone there? Are we okay? Sorry? Are we on the same page, please? No. Enter the room code, enter. Put the room code and enter. Join. By Put the way, this code. is for contestants alone, no? Please, only Not contestants, audience. no, please. Audience, no, please. Because it will affect. Anyway, you, you are using your seat numbers. Right. Click on it, enter the, the room. Please go into the room, into the other room. I'm seeing number 1, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Who is Ezekiel, please? Number. I'm seeing a name. You need to change that. They don't use name. Use your seat number. Use your seat number. Who is Ezekiel? No, me. I just used to test. Ezekiel, where are you from? So I can speak your language. Are they also 24? Okay. It's not here. Okay, we'll do a roll call. I'll call the numbers. If you don't hear your number, then you are, you are out of it. So, number one. Number one. Number ten. Number 11, number 13, number 14, number 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, number 2, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eh? 12.
12 is there, 3 is there, 14 is there. Look down. 3, three down, is there, down. 14 is there. No, it's, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine, no issue. Ezekiel, who is Ezekiel? Where is Ezekiel here? Huh? Uh, prof. No. Prof. Don't need to log out. I would, I would, I would, Napa chairman, I will, I will report you to Professor Yewo. Uh, That's what uh, I'm saying. Who did not hear your, his or her number? 12. Huh? <laughs> Peter. Huh? Number 12, right? Yes. Huh? Martin. No, no issue. So, okay, thank you very much. Um, if you see that round blue circle, that's where you have to buzz. You are buzzing because you are sure you know the question. Please note that if you buzz and you did not get the question right, that's minus one point for you. After, after you buzz. So, to avoid uh, losing unnecessary marks. Please don't buzz if you don't know the answer to the question. Now, if you look at the screen carefully, you will realize that uh, there is a place um, where you have players buzzed. The fastest person to buzz is the person you are going to see there. Currently, you are seeing number 11 there. So, if you are the first person to buzz, that's where your number will, will appear, and uh, somebody will call you to answer the question. Thank you very much. Okay. So, Max, let's stimulate so they was. So, we're going to ask um, just a question so that you test run by buzzing. So, we will not display right now. We just want to stimulate so that you just buzz. Every one of you buzz and we'll have an idea of what will happen, right? So I would like everybody to, as in one by one, if I call your number, you boss, so that you know that um, you are actually the one that boss. Let's try everybody. Okay, number one. You can see that number one is there. Number two. Three. Four. Five, six. You're sleepy. Seven. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So this is a confirmation that everybody can buzz. Thank you very much. Continue buzzing. <laughs> Okay, we'll be at the answers. The answers are below. Okay. Let me do it. Yes, sir. Mm. No, because we post to see an answer. We post to see an answer. We flash the question. So, anybody that knows the question, we post. Uh, 
force no matter the ones that are in the top. It's force no matter the ones that are in the top. It's force no matter the ones that are in the top. It's force no matter the ones that are in the top. If you get it right, it's force. If you get it partially, it's force. Okay, contestants, eh? let me use the opportunity to sound a note of warning. You see, what we are trying to do basically is this. You've done the round one, you've amassed some marks through your MCQ. You've done the round two, you've done some marks also on your debate. You've been cumulatively done. No, sorry. Now, this is the third round and the final round before we take the top five amongst you to go for the very final round and for the grand prize. So you have an opportunity to up your marks and not otherwise. So if you know, you don't know the answer, don't boss. Because if you boss, it means no other person will have the opportunity to boss. You, you have only five seconds to respond. And it's every full answer that they give to you is two marks. If they I feel that you're almost near the answer, they will give you half a mark. That will be one mark. But should you boss and get it wrong, it's minus one mark. Should you boss and you don't answer within the five seconds, it is minus one mark. If you don't boss, your mark remains zero. You are stable. So it's a risk you want to take right now to up your game, right? And I just feel I should just know that, right? All right, thank you. So they will ask the next question. That will be the next question. The next question, next question. We will refresh. The technical man will refresh. The next question. Uh, no, the moment you call out, the moment you, it buzzes, and you check, okay, ah, number 10. So start counting. One, two, three, you should talk there. Because that's why, if you don't know, you don't press. Right. If you don't know, don't press. Did you mention three seconds to them? You did not. No. I, I, you know, see, let me come to the example, sir. Mm -hmm. I think now you might need your prompt. So you also say, maybe number one, maybe, maybe they are not known more. So you confirm, oh, number one, you answer the question. Okay, okay. But assume two seconds as gone, you mentioning number one. It's just one or two. So the person now has three seconds to answer. That after you mentioned after you mentioned number mention, one. Yeah, yes. call the number. Yeah, so just be fair. So I don't know if you make count five, five, five. Oh, okay. Yes. You know, for, just for to avoid ambiguity, I didn't see anything. So you will prompt who who answer like five. number one answer. At that point, what? That's the place of what three. Who was? Who was? The one that boss was, you only see it on top. Famayo, we will guide the judges on the numbers yes. you yes. see on the screen. No, 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 see, 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 when I would say number seven, number seven, one, two, three, that's all. Didn't have three seconds. Yeah, there is. That is Call the number. The person had five seconds. No, three, three. Two seconds. So for us to say number one, then three. The whole essence is don't buzz if you don't know. So, so, so you will deny all that. So, 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 after, the person, after, after that answer, question, the next question. Next question, we will refresh. It will be at your time. We will write. We have to await oh, we'll your instruction. That we have next, next question. question. Uh -huh. okay. So, Prof will say next question. We will refresh. So, for more other thing, when he has answered, we will wait for you to let us know whether you agree. We are giving you full marks. If you say full marks, he is the one taking the mark. He will give two marks. Okay. You may think the person is not full marks, he is half marks. Okay, but you think you're still wrong. No, no, no. So you have the answer sheet. So I'm reading it. I hope we are all set. Can we refresh the laptop? Yes. Okay. Yes. My Contestants, are you ready? Would there be, would there be need for... Uh, would, there be like, would, there, would, there, would, there, would there say like another person can buzz it? No, that question goes. Any question that is answered right or wrong is gone. It goes. Next question. Uh, but you would deny others. Right. So please, you only buzz when you know the question. If you buzz, you don't answer within three seconds, you get minus one. Right? And if you don't buzz, you know the question, you lose the opportunity. So but if you get the question right, two marks. If you get it partially at the discretion of a panelist, one mark. If you boss and you don't press, uh, you don't answer within three seconds after prompting by the, by the prof, 
Then uh, you you get minus one, minus one mark. I hope we are clear. Any other question? We will do some test run. Maxine, we will do some test run, right? It's okay now. Let's start. Let's we'll start off. So everyone is clear, right? Can we start off? Everyone is clear? Right? Okay. So, judges, are you ready? Judges, are you ready? Tell ready. me when you're ready. Ready. Contestants, are you ready? Questions coming up. Number seven. Number seven. Contestant number seven. Correct. Two marks. Please. Two marks. Please, audience, please. We, uh, we have to maintain absolute quiet. Don't talk, audience, please. Please. Audience, don't talk. I already had someone shout seven. Please, don't talk. Please. Water in oil emotion. Water in oil emotion. We said number seven, and we said she got it correct. Two marks. Please, can we, can we, can we be quiet? Yes, yes, correct, yes. So that correct answer gives the person two marks. I will be supporting you, ma'am. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Next question. Next, next, next question. Thirteen. Next. Next question. Correct. Paper chromatography. He said. Thirteen, no. please. Thirteen. So who said it then? Who said thirteen? Who said thirteen? No, Maxine. No, Maxine. Don't say it. No, no. The person somebody answered from here. You just boost. Sorry. Who said thirteen? Please, if you didn't boost uh, no, the that thing, is, don't answer. Or else we'll deduct your mark. No, ma, we'll jump this one. We'll jump it. No, no, we have to step over. No, no, um, this no, can no, be can. No, yes. No, please cancel this. Let's go on. Please, if you did not press the balls, don't answer. You got it. He answered. No, no, no. no. He didn't say. I think it was a female one. Hmm. Georges, how do you score? No, no, no. How do you score? Cancelled. 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 Judges, are you ready? Yes. Contestants, are you ready? It's the same question. New question. Please, if you pause without a question, 600 marks deducted. <laughs> and again, if you answer any question without buzzing, you have to wait for your number to be announced before you answer. Please. Judges, are you ready? Contestants, are you ready? Two. Is it two or six? No, what's that? What's that? It's two, seven. 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 One. Two. Seven. So seven. Next question. The third one, third, third slide. It's done moving, it's done moving. Wow. It's done moving. The third slide. It's done moving. The first slide. The first slide. No, the third one. Third one. Yeah, the that's it. The first slide. It's okay, it's okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. The first slide. Set the first slide. Rest around. So, what did you say? Georges, how do you score? Can you repeat it again? Can you repeat your answer? No, did you? No. 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 Say wrong. Wrong. Wrong answer. So that's minus one for number six. Next, for number, next, next, number seven. That's the pain scale. Mm -hmm. Next question. Are we ready? Yes. Chuba. Chuba. Just check. Next question. Judges, okay. are you ready? Yes, please. Contestants, are you ready? Seven. Number seven. Number seven? Are you sure it's seven? Huh? Wrong. 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 Minus one. Minus one. Seven. Hmm? Okay, we can tell them the answer. That's okay. Um, pharmacovigilance. So that sign depicts pharmacovigilance. 
right? Please always echo the answer. We can barely hear your answers. Please always echo the answer. As in, <laughs> speak louder. <laughs> Okay, you might even stand up and say the answer on the peak. But remember that you have only three seconds to say the answer after you've now announced the answer the question. Just speak louder. Okay. Speak louder. Judges, are you ready? Yes, please. Contestants, are you ready? Seven. 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 What did you say? Hmm. Um, what well, one caution, caution first radioactive, radioactive material? So we give him half, one. mark one, one mark for number seven. <laughs> Georges, are you ready? Yes, Georges, are you ready? Yes, please. Contestants, are you ready? Audience, please. Twelve. Twelve. Number twelve, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Have single punch tablet press. One. One mark. One mark. Single punch. Okay. One mark. One mark. One mark. One Good mark much. for number 12. Number 12. Judges? Yes, ready. Contestants? Number 12. Number 12. Number 12. Correct. 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 Two, Two marks for number 12. Two marks, number 12. Judges? Ready? Contestants? Ready. Hold on, hold on. It's not moving again. It's not changing. No, 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 no. Go and start us. You know. Start us. Refresh. No, I can use, I can use. Okay. Ready? Contestants? Number seven. Number seven. Mm. Correct. Correct. Bacteria. Correct. Two marks for number seven. Two marks. Two marks. Number seven. Georges, are you ready? Ready. Contestants, are you ready? Audience, please. Twenty-three. 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 Correct. 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 Two marks for twenty-three. Number twenty-three. Two marks. Judges, are you ready? Ready. Contestants, ready? Audience. This one is hard. Number seven. Number seven. This one is hard for them. No, no, no. Oh, wrong. Wrong. Wrong answer. Minus one. Minus one. Minus one, one number oh, seven. Minus one. Minus one, number seven. <laughs> Audience, please. Georges, are you ready? Oh, the answer electroconvulsive oh, therapy, therapy machine with corneal electrodes for including in seizures, in um, inducing seizures in laboratory animals. Electroshock Such a long. Hey, this one's a bit higher for this. It's, it's are you okay? Next, we are ready. Are you okay? Okay. Next. Next. Uh -huh. The <laughs> No question. It's still the same. Please reset the buzzer. Contestants? The picture. 15. 15? Time out. Time out. <laughs> Minus one. Minus one for number 15. Minus one. The answer is minimum, maximum inventory control. Systems. Systems. Sorry, let's make some slight adjustments. Georges, please permit all the contestants to come forward. They said they can't see very well. 
Um, I don't know if they can all line up and come but, close to the screen. Would you oh, they cannot see the spotters very well. They are saying they can't see. Is that, what, is that true? Difficult to boss. Some of them are saying. Somebody just complained there. there. See the one there. See the one there. He said he can't see. It's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. Sir? Hmm? If we can see it from here, how would they not see it? Oh, we can see it. Where are you looking at it? you know, you know. It's gloves, actually. It's, uh, I can see. No, no, don't press. If, it's if you know, you know. No, no. Is it the diagram or the right? <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't know, you know you don't know. Me, I know that okay. you, know you don't know. <laughs> Next, judges overruled. Judges, are you ready? Yes. Ready. Contestants, are you ready? Audience, please. Next one. Seven. Contestant seven. Yes, bimonial distribution, correct. Correct, number Two seven. Two marks. Two points, number seven. Judges, ready? Ready. Contestants, ready? Audience, please. Seven again. Number seven. Thank you. Same right. as maximum drop concentration. Correct. Two marks. Two marks for number seven. Two points, number seven. Audience, please. Audience, please. Audience, please. Judges, are you ready? Ready. Contestants, ready. Audience, please. Seven. Seven. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> Correct. Two point seven. <laughs> Audience, please. Audience, please. Judges, are you ready? Ready. Ready. Contestants, are you ready? Audience, please. No. No destruction. Correct. Correct. Two marks. Wow. Wow. Um, hypodermis or subcutaneous. It's all right. Two. Seven. Two marks. Audience, please. Judges? Ready. Contestants? Yeah. One. One from a scar supply chain without the management. One mark. One mark. Seven, one mark. It's not a management thing. It's the supply chain. Judges, ready? We're ready. O audience, please. Audience, please. Contestants, ready? Seventeen. Seventeen. Time out. Is he talking out of me? That's why we say degree Celsius. Pardon? Degree Celsius. 
Wrong. Normal. Please always echo your answers. Wrong. Please. The question was Sh um, normal. Scream your answer. Sorry. <laughs> normal. Scream your answer. Seven degrees centigrade or ninety-eight point six degrees Fahrenheit. The value. The value. The value. The value. Yes. The value. Yes. So, so number seventeen minus one. Minus George is correct. One. Yes. George, are you ready? Yes, please. Contestants, are you ready? Please remember to shout the answers. Fifteen. Fifteen. Time up. <laughs> Answer now. I said always scream here. Say it louder. Time up. I can hear you. Say it louder. Was he answering? He was answering, but he was yeah, let him answer. Let him. Okay, let him answer. What, what did he answer? Syrup. He should stand up. What did he say? Syrup. No. Minus one. Minus one. That cannot be a syrup. Father, I can give minus two as I'm sitting here. <laughs> George is amnesty. <laughs> Contestants, please remember to speak loud. Remember to speak loud. You just have three seconds. Three seconds to respond. Immediately your buzzer is identified. Speak loud. Judges, how do you score? Um, my, minus one. Minus one for yes. contestants. The, number 15. 15. The, the answer is one gram. For children. What was it? Go back. Can you please go back? Judges, are you ready? Yes. Contestants, are you ready? Okay, well, okay, okay, that's all right. Audience, please. Seventeen. Speak out. Speak out. Yes. Soxlet extractor. Correct. Apparatus. Yeah. Correct. 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 Two marks. Judges, ready? Ready. Fifteen. One, two, three. Scallop juice. No. No. What did you, What did he say? Scallop juice. Even with Mike, you're not speaking loud. <laughs> Minus one. Pharmaco economics. <laughs> so 15 minus one. Minus one. Minus one mark for 15. Minus one, 15. Dodges, are you ready? Yes. Oh, yes. Split screen. Technical split screen. Can we remove the video? It's a bit distracting. Yes. Judges, are you ready? Yes. Yes, please. Technical. Technical, my questions are not showing. Split screen, please. Better, better. 
Kaçın sen aç? Yok Mika o please. Okay, don't be annoyed. Bring back the video, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Judges, are you ready? Yes, please. Contestants, are you ready? Twelve. 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 Huh? Transmembrane protein. Um, no. no. The answer is receptor. Minus, Minus one. one. Minus one. Identify the blue colored structure. Judges, are you ready? Yes, we are. Contestants, are you ready? Audience, please. Audience, please. <laughs> It's um, one. It's a uh, no, no. It is microbial resistance, not antimicrobial resistance. Minus one. Microbial resistance. Against antimicrobial medicines. So number seven minus one. Minus one. It cannot be antimicrobial no. resistance. I don't know. I just have this. Yeah. It cannot be antimicrobial resistance. No, this thing you felt, I'm already. Yes. Audience. Audience. Audience, please. The answers came. Audience, please. The judges have spoken. Hmm? Judges. Ready. We're ready. Contestants, ready. Audience, please. This is a strong question. Seven. Correct. Two marks. Contestant, seven. Two marks. It's a top question. The chemistry. Or she may be intelligent, I don't know. Right? Oh, I don't think so. Audience, please. Able to read this term. Judges, are you ready? I'm ready. Contestants, are you ready? But you just give the answer. Audience, please. Audience, please. Contestants, are you ready? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Special counseling to ensure the adequate therapeutic outcome. Come again, please. Patient counseling to ensure therapeutic outcome. Manufacturing. Did you have to do with manufacturing? D is manufacturing. A is patient counseling to ensure therapeutic outcome. Uh -huh. The answer is D. Which is not. Direct. Which one is not directly related to pharmaceutical care? Process not D. Um, D. wrong D. answer. D. No, this is correct. correct. No, the time time is time frame. She the time she frame. didn't go straight to the answer. The answer. She, yeah. she didn't read it. She, she didn't read it well. Judges, how do you score twenty one? <laughs> minus one. She didn't read the question. Minus twenty one. Well. Uh, not minus 21. Minus 1. 21. <laughs> she didn't read the question. Well. Minus 1. The question says, 21. which one is not directly related to pharmaceutical no, care? care? And the answer was a D. And uh, you were on and on and on. And the time over. Yes, next question. Audience, please. Judges, are you ready? Yes, please. Audience. Seven. Seven. Correct. Correct. Two marks.
seven two max. This guy has it. Ready. Audience, please. Eleven. Eleven. Mm. No. Wrong answer. C. C. A, B, A, B, and C are oral liquid measuring devices, while C is injectable. Judges, how do you score? Minus one. Eleven minus one. Audience silence, please. Judges, are you ready? Ready. Contestants, are you ready? Seven. Seven. Correct. Okay. Correct. Reddish pink color structure style of that. Judges, are you ready? Two, Two marks, seven. Judges, are you ready? Yes. Contestants, are you ready? Audience, please. Audience, please. Judges, are you ready? Yes. Yes. Twelve. Twelve. Twelve, not eleven. Twelve. Twelve. Correct. Correct. Okay, you see the 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 you Audience, please. Number 12? Is that 12? 12. Um, now, um, identify following instruction from microbiology. Uh, the answer is gram positive versus gram negative bacteria. So, gram staining. Negative and. No, no, no. No, no. 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 To me, I was. Gram staining from microbiology. This is the The person is there. The versus is there. You mentioned the negative that you are positive. The versus is broken. It didn't mention them. It just said grand state. Grand. No, 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 yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no. You said grand state and grand state. You mentioned it. I had it. Then, then, then. Judges, how do you score? Initially, he said grand state. There is no positive that you mentioned. Deliberation going on. One, please. <laughs> okay. So, the right answer. Judges, score one. Um, The right answer, back to the question, gram positive versus gram negative bacteria but you just said gram staining and that's why two of them one mark one mark for number two thank you so much that ends that's the final round wow thank you All right, thank you, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. I'm, I'm sure we all enjoyed ourselves. Right. So why, why the compilation is being done? Why the compilation is being done? We'll, we'll just go to the last stage. Last stage, the top five. 
cumulative scores of the top five. Right. Cumulative scores of the top five will be called. And those five will go through revivers. Quickly, one question and a case study. You go through a case study, you talk to the panelists and they will score you. So it's all cumulative. So we'll get the cumulative scores and the top five will be called out. Thank you all. All right. So while that is being done, can I can I can I call on the national chairman of Ahapin, Association of Hospital and Proprietary uh, uh, <laughs> Association of Hospital and Administrative Pharmacies. Hospital and Administrative Pharmacies. Farm Bode Ogunjemiyo. Please let him speak to us briefly, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the panel of uh, judges, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear participants, uh, I must say I'm very glad to be here this evening. It's already evening. Uh, let me commend the effort of uh, Shalina Hetke for putting this type of program together. Honestly, we are very ha happy about this. Uh, this is the kind of program that should be uh, put together by various organizations to enable us get the best out of the uh, students from our various institutions. I must say that uh, the 24 contestants, to the 24 contestants rather, that you are lucky to be here today. I remember two years ago, 2022, when I was called to attend this type of program. Last year, I missed it by whisker because of another engagement. Um, one of the participants, after graduation, actually called me, and uh, by the grace of God, he had or he did his internship in my center. I want to promise that by the grace of God, by the time these ones eventually get out of the pharmacy school, I'm only promising one slot, too. I'm not promising 24 slots. At least a slot is guaranteed for one of them in my institution. Uh, let me not repeat what the other people have said. I only want to advise that uh, if you cannot be a mountain, you be a hill. If you cannot be an ocean, uh, you just be a river. But the most important thing for you is to be the best of whatever you are. And you are already doing the best, representing your various uh, faculties. Uh, uh, I want to appreciate Shalina once again for putting this together. Thank you very much. All right. Quickly, also the Napa chairman is with us. Just uh, some words of exhortation. The Napa chairman, Dr. Ezekiel Akikumi. Is my chairman still there? Right. Still there? You didn't press the thing now. <laughs> I, have, I have been made in active. In active. <laughs> You know, I was just trying to uh, defend my students to see if it will work. Then uh, I wanted to go out. I couldn't go out again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think all the lecturers that raise this good, excellent, intelligent people deserve a standing ovation. Please, can you please do that? Let us appreciate the one we have. It's not only in U.S. that we are good lecturers. Thank you. Thank you. You can sit down. Because the other, some people were saying that uh, pharmacy lecturers cannot undo their own students. They are giving their students to us. We are the one trained. They are sitting in their students. I said it can never be. We are up to the task. And this is an example of what we have been doing. Uh, I want to congratulate my, my deans and provost. Thank you very much for doing this wonderful work. Uh, my people, congratulations. You have done well. You have made us proud. Can you please clap for yourself? You have made us proud. 
Uh, last year, because in the past three years I've been with this program, one of the challenges I personally raised when I was given the opportunity to talk was that we wish all pharmacy schools to be included because last year it was just about five schools or so, seven schools. And I was surprised when the Paula okay. Onso told me that this year every pharmacy school is included. <laughs> and this is a plus for Salina. It shows when we, ha when we are talking of a responsive and responsible organization, Salina is one. <laughs> when we talk of intellectually facile company, we talk, we talk of socially integrated company, a company that is not only for the present, but for the future. I think Salina deserves and her college. And this is something that we want. They are proving, they are saying that we are Nigerians and we are excellent people. Uh, some of the people that have been to other places knows that there's nothing we are asking these people that is not a proof that they have been trained and they have been trained well. Thank you very much. I want to thank everyone that have been here, that is identifying with us, and that is associating this uh, program. I wish you well, and I hope Salina will continue to do this good work. God bless you. Thank you very much. Quickly, can I call on the representative of the Director of Moscow Services, Lagos State, Prami Earth Board, Farm Shakira Tadi Oshun, ably represented by Farm Agbeni Oluwafumilayo. I understand there's a message, please. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. All protocols observed. Um, before I talk about the message from my director, I want to really appreciate my auntie seated there, Professor Mrs. Femi Oyewo. Please clap for her. She has been like that for as far back as we were in school, and she was a lecturer at OAU. And I remember there was one thing she did for me that she may have forgotten. My final year, it was like, ah, I had an issue with pharmacology practicals. If you were in, if you were in OAU, you, you know what I mean by that. That was a demon, you know, if I can put it that way. No matter how much you prepare, if you are not composed, you may not go. And she was like, this girl, this girl is brilliant. Why is she always having, you know, a storm over pharmacology practical? And I wasn't to, you know, go to the final year then just because of that. I learned, somebody told me, one show for four, that she said, no, we are going to give her an oral exam. Let her prove herself. Let it not just be based on whether she passed pharmacology or not. We are going to give her an oral exam. Don't prepare her for this viva. Just get her on her wares and bring her here. And that was what they did for me. And I was there answering all the questions. And to the glory of God, I was able to make it because she said no. Please, can you clap for her? Thank you very much, ma. Thank you. So on behalf of the Director of Pharmaceutical Services, Lagos State Primary Healthcare Board, I want to appreciate everybody here. Yes, she's also the Vice Chairman for Lagos State uh, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. She's Vice to um, the Chairman, I think he's left now. I want to, we want to appreciate everybody, all pharmacists here for optimum services, cutting across, both at the um, hospital level, at the uh, production level, at the academics level, the community practice. We appreciate everybody for optimum performance. And for the students, we want to encourage you. Like everybody else has said, it's no time to japa at all. It is the time to start, you know, to bring out the vision and the dreams that we have had. I've been listening to all of you and it's been amazing. It's only that somebody has to come, I mean, some people have to collect the gifts. 
You're all amazing. Please clap for yourselves. You have done very well. And you have taken it back to my books that we need to brush up some of these things. So we want you to think of where somebody has discussed about a pharmacy practice, all the aspects of pharmacy practice. Instead of thinking of getting out of this country for good, why don't you think of where you can log in, you understand, and make an impact? Pharmacy is such a beautiful, awesome profession, and I feel bitter when I see the way things are. I don't want to talk too much. So we are looking forward to you guys coming to fulfill the dreams and the ambitions. Hmm? And um, number one pharmacist, because my birthday falls on the International Pharmacist Day. So it's another reason why I have that body. Please try, while you are still there, now begin to think of what you want to do. Think of where your strength is. Think of this, the weakness. Try to see how you overcome the weaknesses. Do you get it? Go back to your books and... Um, for primary healthcare, I will round off with this. Somebody, part of the topics you, you, you handled now was about PP, the PPMV. Hmm. See, primary healthcare is there to ensure that we have optimal pharmaceutical services, even at remote areas at places that are so remote that you cannot you know imagine maybe a teaching hospital being very very active we are there with there are 122 pharmacists in lagos state primary healthcare board there are over 300 pharmacy technicians and we have a comprehensive center in all the local government and lcds we have over 300 primary health centers so don't jackpot because you believe there are some remote places that you cannot work. we are there and god you know is there for everybody even at the secondary health facility
Hello. So wrapping up, we appreciate all these values in you, and we are saying you should go back and dust the books and be ready for that. I'm living now by um, letting the Shalina group know what they are bringing out to these children. Shalina has been there. We have really been, you know, inspired by all the products and activities. But what you are doing in the lives of these children is really commendable. And we pray that God will continue to give you the grace. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma. Thank you very much. Right, quickly, I, permit me to also quickly recognize Farm Mrs. Uh, Maju Igbe Adenike, representing the HOD General Sutu Randu, Suru Lere. That's Farm Ashi, or Asa, right? Farm Asa, from GH Randu. Please, you recognize. And also, please, I also recognize uh, my colleague and friend, the new CPN Lagos State Chairman, Farm Tolu Lokoya Jai, Shekina Pharmacy. Please, you are recognized. Please, can you can you stand up for recognition? Thank you. Is the new SCPN Lagos chairman, right? Okay. Please, without much ado, Professor Yewo, please may I quickly remind us and tell us that we have in our midst the Registry of Pharmaceutical Council of Nigeria, the PCN, the Registry of PCN. A big fish is in the house. Pharmacy Council. Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, sorry. Yeah, Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, PCA. <laughs> sorry. Daily my seat. You go wound. <laughs> All right, please. With a clap of Nick, I will welcome Pharmacist Ibrahim Babashehu Ahmed. He's the registrar of the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria. You're welcome, sir. Right. With him, along with him, it's the Zonal Director PCN, Lagos Zonal Office, Dr. Taiwo Filusi. You're welcome, too. Thank you very much. Right. So, without much ado, we just call on the top five now. Right. So, how do we do it? Okay, this case three. We have one and two. Okay. All right. So, now we're going over, calling out the top five. The top five will go through the last round. That's the Viva. We have a case study. To go through, eh? uh, Mr. Foley. Yes, yes. Are you ready? All right. So we'll be calling out the top five. If you choose, you know anyone who No. So if you go through and choose, that means that's the case you all are going to adopt. Yes. You know, so when they come. Okay, good afternoon now. So uh, as a reminder, I want to explain how we got the top five. So you remember the first uh, competition we had was MCQ. So everybody had individual scores. Then the next one was the big fight. We have seven judges there. So each of the judges scored each contestant. So what we did was to take the average score across the seven contestants to get the score for the big fight. And then the last one that we've done is the uh, rapid fire. Those are individual scores too. So we summed up the scores and then the top five based on the cumulative have been selected and that's what we'll be projecting now. Thank you. So, all right. Starting in no particular order. In no particular order, the top five. Please, can we showcase the first one? First number. In no particular order, top five contestants with clap of rain. Con contestant number one. Top five. Contestant number one is in the top five. Right. Now the next one. In top five. Contestant number six. In the top five. Right. Now the third one. Contestant number seven in the top five. Contestant number seven in the top five. Next. Contestant number 12 in the top five. Contestant number 12. And last but not the least in the top five. 
Contestant number 14. So th these are our top five. Contestant number one. Contestant number six. Contestant number seven. Contestant number 12. And contestant number 14. So these are our top five. So the top five will go through the Viva. The, the, the panelists, they will have to talk to the panelists, they will go through the Viva, and they will be adequately scored. So this will also add to whatever score they had earlier, and we'll come out with our top three. So quickly, without wasting much time. Right. Are we ready? Simplest question. Five, please, can you go with Fan Femi?
People, no allow sore throat and cough kill your voice and dabaru your day. Old. Finish them with chateau lozenges with the gidigba to pafuka cough and sore throat with better fresh breads. Chateau lozenges contain five natural active ingredients like ginger, turmeric, bileric, liquorice, and mint. Think natural, think chateau, natural sore throat reliever. If symptoms no grigo after three days, consult your doctor. Chateau lozenges. Chale, committing to work in Accra on a daily basis is no mean feat. I get to spend a bulk of time in traffic on a weekday and still get to join my dance team for, for a regular daily, daily dance, dance with her. Yes, yes. Dance, dance as aspect, aspect I love to keep my life. I need to be at the 100% all the time. So Hello. Ever Hello. The ba Hello. So we are, we are in the final round now. If you have observed, the top five contestants now are out of the all. So they are going to be called after one after the other based on the numerical numbers that they have. But you pick. So number one will always go before number two and the rest of them. So they will go there and they will review a case and questions will be thrown at them and they will be marked accordingly. After which they will come back and take their respective seats. They will score their marks and to be accumulated onto what they've had before now. So we we'll do that for the whole five. And from the total marks accrued, we will declare the top three. If there is a tie, there will be tiebreakers by the panel also. So we will start now. Thanks. The labeling. Look at the lower blood pressure, hypertension. Yeah. Okay. They even give you this thing. Knowing the person you are, they give you this thing. Okay, sorry, I understand that has been a ballot, a fresh ballot among the five final contestants. So, from the number one to number five now, fresh ballot, but their numbers still remain. So, that number one, come, Ayo, please. Thank you. This is very clear. This is very, very clear. Come in. Please, with a clap offering, the first contestant is coming. Please let us clap for the first contestant, for the viber. He's coming. So at this stage, one of the precautions we have taken is they are without their phones. So nobody will tell them anything. I know they have a lot of supporters here. So we are just making it to be a very fair and field playing ground, you know. Hello? 
She has severe pedal edema. And now edema is characterized, it's, edema occurs when there's retainment of fluid. And once fluid are retained in the body, sodium alongside is also retained. Now when we give this patient sodium chloride, it will automatically raise uh, the sodium level and it will not sort out the pedal edema as well. Rather, there should be measures to control the edema by using diuretics and then with, um, um, sorry, with regulation, like with monitoring, so that at least we, because the first goal now is to resolve her symptoms and prevent progress. So when we give her sodium chloride right now, we are actually worsening the case, because one of the, her conditions is congestive heart failure, and one method to um, treat congestive heart failure is blockade of the sodium channels. So should I start again? Okay, so I said earlier. Hello? Just go on. Go on. Okay, like I said earlier, she's having severe pedal edema, and then this is characterized by um, retention of fluid. So and we know that when fluid are retained, um, when fluid is accumulated, it's alongside with sodium. So when we are we're giving this patient sodium chloride, we are directly raising the concentration and then the edema and also retaining, um, also keeping more fluid. Rather, because um, the major goal for this is to treat the symptom, to relieve and prevent progression of congestive heart failure. So the patient should be given diuretics with monitoring as well as... Uh, other health, um, uh, other drugs such as uh, uh, vasodilators, and then to relieve, promote blood flow, and this can help in the 
shortness of breath. And then the shorter, shortness of breath too can be ca- characterized as a result of... I think that's... It. Yes, ma'am. It's actually hype, um, hypo from what is showing here. Celebrating the top winner. Yes. And gentlemen, we have in our midst the Director General of NAVDAC. So, you, you know, this is a grand day for us and uh, the NAFDAQ DG and the whole team is here. It's, it, this is the first time we are able to get the whole team over here and, I, and we are really excited about it. You know, Madam Mojisola Adeye, she has, been, she has been one of the key drivers in this country in getting the quality systems in pharmaceutical implemented. We had a lot of challenges in this industry and we see that after she taking over, a lot of measures has been put in place to ensure the quality of the pharmaceutical products in this country has improved a, a much better. Not just that, even the facilities that is available in the country, she ensures that the standard is brought up. It's under her leadership, Nigeria has even qualified for the WHO level accreditation. And today Nigeria is proud because it's only two countries in the whole of Africa which could, which could be in the category. So with that... And uh, I don't... She, d- she didn't have time. I have to literally beg her to come and address all of us. So I'm not going to talk more about that. I, I request Madam to come and give a few words to our youngsters and encourage them. Wow. <laughs> let me, let me, I, I need to see the 24. I need, I need to see the 24. No, that light is too much. Top five are already out there. Where? Yeah, they are all seated here. The last stage. Where the is the last? Top the top, where oh, are the top five? Yeah. Can the 24? No, no, no. First of all, the 24. 
for you to get to this place, Baby, can we, can we bring I take them? my heart up for you. Can you bring the top five? 24. No, 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 no. Okay. 24. Please rise up. The five of them. The 24. Okay. Which pharmacy square are you from? Huh? Building? Bank University. Bank University. Wonderful. Okay. The last, yeah. The first one. The first one. Cardinal State University. Wonderful. Usman and Fodio. Wonderful. Usman and Fodio. University of Benin. Wow. University of Portacot. Good. Wow. University of Ibadan. Uh huh. Yes. Enugu State University. Huh? Enugu State University. Enugu State. Wow. Afe Babalola University. Good. I'm bored. Madonna University. Wonderful. You must be very proud of yourself. Very, very proud. Okay? Obafemi Olo University. Good. OAU. Yes. <laughs> University of Uyo. Uyo? Delta State University. Huh? Delta State. Delta State. Amadu Bello University. Amadu Bello. Wow. Ibinedo University of Ibinedo. Go oh, Wonderful. University of Ilori. Ilori. Namde Azikwe University. Oh, yeah. Namde Azikwe. University of Meduguri. Meduguri. Niger Delta University. Good. So uh, there are five now that are top. The top five are here. Now, give uh, please uh, introduce yourself. My name is um, Ekwazo Chukudubai Michael from University of Jos. Jos. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. I'm Oluchi Moara from the University of Nigeria. University of Nigeria, yay! Ihe <laughs> Jichich is about Vivian. Ihe huh? Jichich is about Vivian. Chukemeka Odumego, Chuk University. Wonderful, wonderful. My name is Okeke Princess Kamsi from the University of Lagos. University of Lagos. <laughs> My name is Edith Bongkukun from Kaduna State University. Kaduna State University. Look, I'm so proud of all of you. Wow. This is, this is really amazing. Uh, because you are representing your schools. You are the best in the, in, the, in the competition. So you must be very, very proud. Those that didn't make the top five, you are the best. It's just that there has to be top five. So please uh, give a round of applause. You see, when, when uh, there's a company like Shalina that also has corporate social responsibility, then it goes round. The impact of what they are doing goes round. So you must be very, very proud of yourself. Congratulations, uh, the top five. Congratulations, the top 24. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma. Really appreciate it. Congratulations, panelists. <laughs> you, you. You, you are the one doing the hard job. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you,
Okay. Uh, Chief, please. Chief, please, you can uh, listen. Please. Chief, can you just escort to register? Yeah. All right. So, please. Please. No noise, please. We are continuing. The last stage. Let's quickly round up and choose our top three. Please, the last stage, please. Question B. Yes. Does the serum creatinine level indicate normal renal function for this patient? Okay. In this case, yes, it does. It does. Because the main function of serum creatinine is to assess renal function. Although the patient is administered digoxin, and one way to monitor digoxin also is at Part of the renal clearance, so serum creatinine is okay. in the case now. Thank you very much. A round of applause for yourself, since nobody is clapping for us. <laughs> Thank you. Pharmacy is full on show. Who is next, Pharmacy Dayo? Who is the second person coming in? And they should come and say, give her her lunch. Shalina, please, um, there are some, some of our contestants are fasting. I would appreciate if they can pack their food. They, they are doing that? Packed food. Do you have a packed food now? She doesn't have it. I know. Yes. And they should even have been packing all their whatever that we had. Small chops and all those stuff. Should have packed them. Let 
She'll teach if she'll teach if be giving sodium chloride to return the value to normal. No, ma'am. As the first question. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Sure. Why? Okay, because um, from the look of things, she's suffering from pedal edema, and we know that um, sodium chloride will um, cause for fluid accumulations in that uh, lower extremities. So it's not advisable to give her um, sodium chloride to return, return, the, um, return the level of sodium back to normal. And uh, what type of um, hypo um, neutrinia do we have in, in this place, in this one, in this See? case? What type of hypo do we have? Um, it's showcasing here, yes. What type? I'm not sure. Okay, since um, hyponatremia has to do with high level of sodium chloride, so in this case, she's not having... The level of sodium is not in hyper. Since it's below, it's below the level of um, the acceptable... Um, hyponatremia. Hypo, yes, ma'am. What type do we have? Hypo, not hyper. I'm not sure. No. You're not sure? Okay. Well, it may be more than two. What type do we have? So, okay, the next question. Um, does the serum creatinine um, level, does it indicate normal renal function for this patient? Okay, the, the level of creatinine is on the borderline. 
and um, we know that the drug in which she's taking is very potent and it may affect kidney function. So there's need to either reduce the dose or there's the potential need to actually... You haven't answered the question or you are trying to answer the question, okay? Okay. Whichever one. Okay, the question says, does the serum creatinine level indicate normal renal function for the patient? So, in this case, it's on the borderline, so there's questionable, it's questionable for the functions of the kidney, since it's almost at the extreme. And in... Okay, um, that's how far you can go. On the borderline, plus or minus, can either be this or that one. Is that what you're telling us now? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I say it's on the borderline, so it's 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 very slim. We can also the kidney can it shows that it can also be failing if it goes beyond this one point two milligram per deciliter. Mm. Okay then. Any other thing? Can he go? Can he go? Yes, he can go. Thank you. Number twelve. Twelve yes, from University of Jos. Hello, please, if you continue in that attitude, we can disqualify this candidate. Is that right? Please. We are not in a, a pants meeting.
Check, check the mic, please. Uh, question the first one. Should TT be given sodium chloride to return the value to normal? Um, okay, so from the... From the... Sorry. Okay. From the values I'm giving here, I don't think, I don't believe that sodium chloride should be given to TT because the blood derived nitrogen of this patient is 30 milligram per deal. And that's already an indicative of kidney, of reduced kidney function. And administering sodium chloride is going to further, is going to further, and the, and the patient already has pedal edema. So that means that there's accumulation of water, accumulation of fluid in the person's body. And anywhere water follows, sodium, sodium follows. So I do not think sodium chloride should be given to return the value to normal. And then for the B question, does this serum... Um, before you go to B, um, and the hyponatremia, yes. uh, what type is it? What type of hy hyponatremia? Um, natremia does um, the patient have? Severe hyponatremia. Severe, thank you. Next question. Okay, does the serum creatinine level indicate normal renal function for this patient? No. This patient is on digoxin, and digoxin is known to be nephrotoxic. It's known to be nephrotoxic. And one of the parameters that are being assessed when someone is on digoxin is the serum creatinine level. It shows the first sign of one of the first signs of toxicity. So in this case, it does not indicate normal renal function and the patient should undergo um, therapeutic drug monitoring so they can assess for that, there should be further tests to assess the, it's, it's, it's the beginning of, of, um, of the side, of the adverse drug reactions because of the increase in serum creatinine. The serum cancer level is high. Five and a half. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Five and a half
next candidate. Should TT be given sodium chloride to return the value to normal? No, she shouldn't be giving sodium chloride because she has pedal edema. And because of the pedal edema, giving her more sodium will help with, will help with um, reabsorption of water into the body and increase the edema she's already experiencing. So titi sh and titi should not be given sodium chloride. Oh, okay, what type of hyponatremia does she have? What type of sorry? Hyponatremia. Does titi have? What type of hyponatremia? Sorry, I didn't exactly get the question. What type of hyponatremia? Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. A drug induced. Next drug. question. Okay. Next question. Does the serum creatine level indicate normal renal function no, for this patient? No, it doesn't. Yes, ma'am. Because she's taking, um, Titi's taking digoxin, which has um, effects 
on her renal function. So her renal uh, serum creatinine uh, level is low it's because of the digoxin she's taking. Sorry? You said the dioxin has effect on the renal system. What type of effects does it have? Thank you very much. What number are you in? 14. 14. 14. 14. Okay. Hello. So what I was calling is Okay. Next person.
But it's not my laptop at all. That's why each time I come my laptop. Hello, Nigerian Kaja. Take a mic question. The first question, should TC be given sodium chloride to return the value to normal? Okay, no, TC shouldn't be given sodium chloride to return the value to normal. Now, I say this because she has um, orthopnea and severe pedal edema, which um, I believe is due to retention of water or fluid in her body. And then giving the sodium chloride will tend to cause further retention of water or fluid in the body. So I believe she should be given um, diuretics, like probably a thiazide diuretic, to reduce this pedal edema that she's currently undergoing facing. Okay. Um, hyponatremia. Hyponatremia. What type of um, hyponatremia does um, TT have? Yeah, thank you. Next question. Does the serum creatinine level indicate normal renal function for this patient? Yes, it does. It's within the normal range of serum creatinine. Okay, thank you very much. A round of applause for our contestants. Is that all you can do? You have had lunch, oh. We haven't had lunch. <laughs> thank you very much. What's her number? Six. Six, thank you. Very much. All right. Sincere appreciation to the panelists. So while they are putting together the last course, please, uh, can, can I... Can I can we be privileged? The registrar, sir. Just one or two words of exhortation from you, sir. Please, can we join our hands and welcome the registrar? Please. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. I want to, first of all, appreciate the panelists. Under the chairmanship of uh, Professor Yeo, okay, okay. I'm very distinguished Professor Deems here uh, on the panel. Uh, on behalf of uh, the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, I want to congratulate all of you here. Congratulating you for making it to this point and also congratulating you for the fact that you have a very good future ahead of you. Because I'm sure that this endeavor will prepare you for a greater opportunities in the future. I, by the time you leave here, I want you to take all that you have learned, including the effort that you have put in place to have come to this level, not to slow down, but continue to work hard. Are you with me? Are you with me? Continue to work hard and continue to also encourage your other colleagues that didn't make it up here. On this note, I wish you the very best and wish you a very successful stay in the uh, pharmacy school. And I'm sure sooner or later we'll come over to induct you. And as we induct you, we'll continue to also pray that you succeed in your practice. Thank you and congratulations. All right. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Um, Fabi Maker, 
Chief. Where is Chief? Oh. It, um, sorry, the, the two scores have been t- uh, totaled. Right. So, uh, Dr. Filusi, we don't mind if you also say one or two words, sir. <laughs> we appreciate you. Sorry, please, let's welcome Dr. Filusi. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I want to... Hello, so, Shalina. Um, Dr. Felicity just said good evening to us and go. You are breaking protocol. You cannot speak after the registrar. Thank you very much. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I speak after the registrar. That's his boss. No, registrar. Registrar, uh, yeah, he can't. He's the boss now. He can't speak. Okay, what do you want him to speak after the registrar has spoken? The protocol. Uh, uh, you should have called him before the registrar. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, all right, thank you. Thank you. We, we keep learning. I just learned something too. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, uh, please, let's, please, let's welcome our CCO, right, Mr. The Chief Host of today, right, CCO West Africa, Mr. Arun Raj. Hi, good evening all. Sorry, when the DG was here, I had to jump into the podium because she said she's only available for five minutes. Now, you know, it's very difficult to get everybody together and uh, I didn't want to, you know, take time in making introduction and everything. So that's why I straight went in to introduce her and then we tried to close. So, like I always said, I've been the chief host here for the last three years, right? And it's been a great journey. This is the fifth year Shalina is doing this, uh, this, this event over here. I'm sure you would have seen our introduction. We have been in Africa for 40 years. We have been in Nigeria for 25 years. Many of our products, thank you, thank you so much. Many of the products that we have today, you all know them as household products because we make it with the quality that is required and at the price that Africa can afford. That's what we do. Now, apart from the business that we do, we think that it is good for us also to contribute back to the society. So we do a lot of other activities. I'm sure uh, Folly would have uh, given you an introduction on all the activities that we are doing, but this is one of the actual investment we believe we are doing to the country. Because youngsters like you, when you come forward, when you finish your, uh, you know, your final years and when you come outside, you will see a lot of opportunity outside, right? You may, you may think that, do I want to go into a pharmaceutical business? Do I want to go to a pharmaceutical company to be doing a marketing job? You know, many of the MDs in this country, I think including the MTN is pharmacy, right? For a pharmacist. That means a pharmacist cannot be only associated with pharmacy. They can be in different areas. So if you have to do very well in your life, you have to actual, actually excel in everything else. That's why we try to put you through this process where you have been given rapid fire, you have been given presentation, you have been asked to talk, you have been given questions, interviews, so that you prepare yourself. So if 24 of you are sitting here, it's because you are the best 24 in this country. Right? Clap for yourself. At the end of the day, we know not everybody becomes a winner. But it doesn't mean that the others are not good. You all are good. That's why you are here right so some days are for some people but you all are you all have to be encouraging yourself that every day there's going to be a challenge and how are you going to fight with that how are you going to make yourself successful is what you have to look at as a company we are doing our job to support you to come forward please take it up from here and rise up all right thank you very much thank you very much sir. thank you very much why is he waiting for the collation please permit me to call Professor Oyishi, the Dean of UNN. Please, you're welcome, sir, to also say one or two things. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Let me stand on the existing protocol. I am proud of Shalina. And I'm also proud of the event that uh, has taken place today. 
we are happy as a university that we've been part of it for several years. And um, today I was speaking to my friend and I said, how we wish several pharmaceutical companies is doing what Shalina is doing. We'll have more interaction among our students and we have much more of a lot of things that our students will need. I won't tell you everything that has happened between me and Shalina if I tell you, say, how did it happen? But a lot happened and a lot has happened. I'm proud of every one of you. I listen to you debate. And uh, the top, some of the topics are very difficult. Very, very difficult. And look at me, I'm a professor. And I was asking myself, if they give me this topic, will I be able to grapple with it? So, but I saw each of you making very big efforts to say something right. Meaning that in all situations and in any situation, you can stand out for yourself. They're asking you to say that marijuana should be legalized. And you came out here and made very strong arguments. It's so interesting. And I want to repeat one thing, which is how we wish that several other companies that are in Nigeria will begin to emulate Shalina. Now, secondly, I also need to say, we've moved from three to seven to 24. That is 357. That is a milestone. That's a very powerful milestone. And... Um, we are looking forward to something better than this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Right. We, we most appreciate Weson Yishi. He personally funded his travel down to be with us today. Because he has identified with us. He personally funded his trip. So we appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much. Sorry. I think we are almost through. So please, can, can I give the, a chance as well to... Okay, where is it? Okay, please let me welcome pharmacist Theophilos Adimoa. T. That's our head of head of regulatory. Shalina, head of regulatory. Please, Chief, some words of exhortation. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, let me. Let me fly on the protocol that has been established. But I must mention and recognize my registrar so that I don't be I don't get the license. The registrar of PCN, I recognize you, sir. Alaji, welcome. The panelists, the panel of judges, I appreciate you. The various pharmacies from various institutions, you're welcome. It is good to speak just after my classmates who is uh, the Dean of uh, Pharmacy Faculty UNN, Professor Ishii. So I can make mistakes. That's what he guarantees. And I'm proud to say it. At least I have my two classmates here. One is a professor, one is a doctor, and is in charge of PCN Lagos Zone. So I will commit no blunder. I am protected. Am I? Yes, I am. So um, let me speak to... to contestants and all other pharmacy students, YPGs that are here. I will start by saying, when we conceived and gave birth to CITA, we didn't know that it will blossom to this stage. Even though, um, as a child, when you give birth to a child, you want the child to grow. So CITA has grown up to season five. Let me now congratulate fully, that's what we call him, who has been in charge of organizing this fully and your team, please, my hands off for you. And to the Shayana family where I belong to, you are doing well, we can do better. I'm sure we will. At the end of this, we'll go back and um, take lessons from here for another improvement. But to the young ph upcoming pharmacists, you are not pharmacists yet, um, I want to encourage you, you are you belong to a profession that is everybody's target. Hello? Yeah, everybody out there would want to be a pharmacist. And so they will envy you. They will come challenging you. They will come poking their fingers into your eyes. But I want to encourage you. This is part of it. 
by the time you learn and become better in public speeches and public debates, you will be a better person. You can present yourself. But basically that you must know it. So take your knowledge and then take a note for an answer. Be of integrity is the watchword. Be the pharmacist is known for integrity. Are you aware that that's the best profession globally? Pharmacy is. The best profession globally, the most disciplined profession is the, the pharmacy profession. So I want to encourage us as you go back, take your academics seriously. The other part of you is building your integrity, building your dis discipline yourself, and come to the world, be fearless. But when you don't know, please be quick to accept that there's a superior argument somewhere. Having said that, I want to encourage all of us and want to say again that the various institutions here represented, when we come knocking again next year, we want to be very well received as you always do because CITA will continue. CITA has come to stay. Congratulations to every one of you who has suspected whether you are going to lose or you are going to win. Congratulations. And thank you once again for coming. Thank you, Ayo. Okay. In the spirit of still waiting for the coalition, may I call on the Lagos State SCPN Chairman, Pharmacist Tolu Ajayi, to also give us one or two words, please. Please join me as we welcome Pharmacist Tolu Ajayi. Thank you. SCPN Chairman Lagos. Thank you very much. Good evening, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the panel of judges. Thank you so very much for grooming and um, investing in our upcoming generation. To our contestants, I'll say very big congratulations to you that you made it this far. It can only get better. I want to encourage that um, in life, you are the one that can determine how far you go. Some will say the sky is the limit, but the sky is truly where you start, where you start from. The, the sky is wide and um, big enough for every bird to fly. So you determine how wide you want to spread your, your wings and how far you want to go. And how do you achieve that? By ensuring that you keep preparing. Ensure you keep preparing. Companies of all you don't rest on your oars. You don't ever tell yourself, now I have arrived, now I am there. What we call excellence is continuous improvement. You're not competing or contesting with anyone. You're only competing with yourself. So you see what you have done today, and you tell yourself, by tomorrow I'm going to be a better version. Opportunities will always come your way, and when opportunity meets with your preparation, you can be rest assured that you are going to perform, you are going to deliver. So always continue to prepare. Don't rest on your horse. We're waiting to receive you out here. Like I've told a few of your colleagues out there, we're waiting to receive you in the profession. And like I usually tell people, if some of us can succeed, then anybody can succeed. So like someone encouraged us earlier on, make sure you believe in yourself. Don't ever look down on yourself. Believe you can grow and get to any height that you want to get to. That you're a black man, that you're a Nigerian, does not place any limit on you. Wherever it is you find yourself, you can shine. You can, you know, you can be the best version that you can be. So I want to congratulate us once again for making it to, you know, this level with Shalina um, contest. And um, to Shalina Healthcare, I want to say big congratulations. It can only get better. Not so many companies are doing this. I'm, I'm, I mean, we're very proud of you. We, we celebrate you every time we mention Shakina, I mean, um, Shalina. And then um, we, we are sure that next year will be better than this. It will keep getting better. Congratulations.
So this is the final. Create your own website with ease using scorecard.
very much. Thank you very much. So, we were about to announce our winners. It's been a long day. Please, I will need absolute quiet. Need your concentration so that we can quickly uh, get done with this. Please, we'll be calling the top three. Right? Top three, the, 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 the third place winners. Uh, those that will be presenting uh, the gifts to the winners. For third place, please, we would call on pharmacist Awo Pega, uh, Dr. Filusi Taiwo. Right. Please, for the third place, for the second place, please, sit down. I'll, I'll call on you later. Man. I just wanted to know, for second place, we we'll require the presence of pharmacist Tolu Ajayi, Professor Onyishi, and uh, Dr. Akikumi Ezekiel to make the second, uh, to support uh, each other, to present the second uh, place winner. For the first place winner, we we'll, uh, graciously call on our registrar and uh, Professor Oyewo, our MD, and our CCO, Mr. Arun, to make the presentation to the first place winner. So, please, without uh, wasting much time, we got... Okay. I, um, before we call out the top three finalists and the eventual winner of CITA Season 5, um, I'll just like to reiterate that the first prize for this contest is one million naira, so the winner is going home with a whooping sum of one million naira. A round of applause for Shalina Healthcare. The second position will be going home with 500,000 naira. Yeah, and third position will be going home with the sum of 300,000 naira. So, starting from third position, Vamayo. So, once again, please, the top five. Can you stand up, please, for recognition, for further applause, the top five. Please, let us appreciate the top five. Right. Much as we appreciate all of you, the, top, the 24 finalists, because uh, it took a lot to qualify from your different uh, schools, right? So come here, you are all winners. But as much as possible, you all you all aware that we only have to celebrate one or two or three persons. But we appreciate every one of you. Good try, good efforts. You are all winners. See yourselves as winners, right? So please, we thank the top five. And uh, as we said uh, the other time, please, I will call on uh, to present, to make the presentation. May I call on pharmacist uh, Awokbega, please, and Dr. Filusi Taiwo, please, to help present third place winner. Thank you. So, Ch Chuba. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the esteemed panelists, fellow colleagues, the hour has come. The hour, hour of liberation is here. Right. For the third place winner, please join me. Please join me as we call on and welcome with a round of applause for our pharmacist in Embryo, Chizoba Vivian Yeti Uche. Thank you. So she's going home with a prize of 300,000. Please, 
Please, can I call on uh, to help make this presentation? Pharmacist Tolu Ajayi, Professor Onyishi, and Dr. Akekumi Ezekiel to help make this presentation. As we welcome uh, the second place winner for today, please let's appreciate Equizo Michael Chukudwebeni going on with a cash prize of 500,000. 500,000. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Congratulations. If you need, if you need an escort, if you need an escort, I have one here. Yeah. Allah is here to together. All right. Sorry. Thank you very much. I'm privileged to announce the best pharmacy brain in Nigeria as of today. Either you like it or yes. The next pharmacy brain in Nigeria. Is a male and is a male and uh, is here today with the trousers. Is in trousers. Please join me, ladies and gentlemen, to call on those to make the presentation. With due respect, sir, may I call on the Registrar Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, the CCO of Shalina, the MD of Shalina, and Professor Mrs. Oyewo. Please, if you clap faster, Professor Yewo will come faster. If you clap Ada, Professor Yewo will come faster. If you clap Ada, Professor Yewo will come faster. <laughs> Thank you. Uh. Please, it's a privilege to call the best pharmacy brain in Nigeria out of 3,000 that participated in the zonal qualifiers. This guy, this girl, remains today the best pharmacy brain in Nigeria. Please jam your hands as I call on the delectable, the beautiful, the handsome, handsome princess. Handsome. Oh, 
Hadi Gardio Stand up Stand up Stand up Stand up Stand up If you shout stand up stand up stand up for the champions for the champions stand up for the champions for the champions stand up stand up stand up for the champions for the champions
to pick myself back up And when I fall down I have to pick myself back up And when I fall down I have to pick myself back up And when I fall down I have to pick myself back up Alumni, 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 you need like alumni. Please, students, thank you. Thank you, students. Thank you, thank you, students. You need like alumni now. Thank you, students. Please go, 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 go. Alumni, you need like alumni. You need like alumni. Come 
messing with a man on when I land I land softly on the sofa floor so far so good go need by Joe The rumor was hiding in your businesses' data. Companies of all sizes use BigQuery to uncover new insights from their data, like cost savings, operational efficiency. Join the boss. Go back to your hotel. Any other information? Send it. Query is Google Cloud serverless. Save trick back.
to carry my love away to a place she loves. I'm a me, man, man. <laughs> and I want to carry my love away to a place she loves. Kill up, come, you can't pass him, I don't pass him with 